questions. As you guys, if anyone's new here, this is all about you. So feel free to get your questions queued up, things, challenges you're having in your lawn, goals you have, uh, and just anything just related to lawn care. That's what we're all about, about uh, taking those questions and, and trying to help you improve uh, your lawn. So let's see who we have in the house tonight. We have uh, Grace. Grace is in the house stopping in to say hi. She says, hey, Ron, hi, Ron. Hope you're having an amazing Friday. I'm doing all right. I'm, if you can probably hear it in my voice a little bit, I've got, I'm getting over a little bit of a cold. So if I cough a little bit or I'm drinking lemonade a little bit more, hopefully you guys will forgive me. I'm also loaded up on all my cough drops. So I should, we're going to make it, man. You know, confidence is high. We're going to be able to get through this. And, uh, but yeah, Friday was good. A lot of rain. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing all right. Got, got out to mow today. Uh, let's see who else we have in the house here. Ruben's in the house. Papa Mo's low. Uh, Ruben saying, "Hey Ron, appreciate all the videos on your granular fertilizers. You're very welcome, sir." Yeah, I'm really excited about that. And the the fact that you know um, uh, you Lebanon turf fertilizers that were normally pretty hard to come by or not not necessarily not easily accessible for most people, uh, those are now available on the golf course lawn store. Humic Max, you know, sixteen zero eight, which is a, I think a good formulation for uh, for monthly spoon feeding. You can get it here at uh, the golf course lawn store. So yeah, thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed that. And uh, like you, I'm pretty excited that everyone has access to it now too. So that's pretty sweet. Papa Mo Lowe's is in the house. Uh, JG, always with a cool emoji. She says, happy Friday, y'all. Time for lawn church. She even has a clock in her emoji that looks like it says it's at seven o'clock. So that's pretty cool. I, I appreciate the attention to detail, uh, JG. That's really, that's uh, really, really cool. Uh, let's see what else we have here. So JG has a First question, she says, hey, Ron, how much rain did you get? So in Georgia, at first, I thought it was going to be pretty light, right? So it wasn't, it was supposed to get like some rain, but around two in the morning, man, the skies just opened up and it sounded like, it sounded like buckets of water were being thrown uh, down on the lawn. It was, it came down really, really heavy. Like the la the only time I've, I've heard rain that heavy, the last time I heard rain that heavy was last year when um, the remnants of Hurricane Sally were going through here. That's how heavy it was. And then um, as far as the amount, I think we got around a little over three inches, 3.1 inches of rain, uh, which is quite a bit. But then when I went out in the morning, if you guys follow my YouTube stories, if you, I mean, yeah, that you have to get on, on mobile. So you have to be on mobile to be able to see those. But when I got up this morning, I went out and shot a, a quick panning shot of the lawn. And if you guys saw that, the lawn drained really nicely. So, I mean, I had some zebra stripes, some clippings that I had to deal with. I was not excited about that. But, uh, but the lawn drained great and the lawn uh, dried out enough that um, once I got done with my meetings for the day, I was able to get out there and mow. You know, it was, it, was, it was a little bit soggy this morning, but it dried out really nicely to where I was able to go out and mow it. So I was really excited about that. It's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. So yeah, we got a lot of rain. Unfortunately, in south of here, there were some tornadoes and people got their, um, you know, lost their homes and whatnot. So that's that's never cool. Uh, but in this area, it just it was just limited to tons and tons of rain. So you know, that, that's you know, you got you have to look at your count your blessings when you can, right? All right. So Mark Epson in the house is going on. Hey, what's going on, Mark? Kevin Sheehan. Let's see who else we have here. Um, Maurice is in the house. He's saying, let's see, let's find your question here, Maurice. You're saying, uh, Hey Ron, thanks for your help last week. You're very welcome, sir. He says, I got the headway G down on Tuesday. Looking forward to my grass bouncing back. What fertilizer uh, that is heavy in phosphorus should I put down? I need to look at your soil test results, Maurice. I think you sent me those, but if not, if you didn't send them to me, um, send them here, Ron at golfcourselawn.com. Shoot me an email with those and let me look at it. And then we will figure out like what's a good for, for you. If you send it tonight, I will get you an answer tonight. But, um, I think you sent me soil test results. So I'm going to just dig through my emails if I can find them. But if, if not, send that to me and I'll get you, uh, get you all hooked up. So, um, so yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad that headway is, um, you got that down. Hopefully that should do a lot to, to help, to help the, the fungus issue you're talking about in your lawn. All right, so let's see what else we have here. So Todd is Todd uh, Warren's next in the house. He said, um, "Holy rain in Buffalo, New York. Uh, it's supposed to be cold again, but I am so itching to get out to use my new swordman. Well, get out there and use it, man. I mean, if it's not, I mean, assuming it's not, the ground's not still frozen and there's actually grass to cut. Get out there and mow. I mean, it's um, you know, that's 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 kind of like the theme to today's live stream is like the importance of mowing, right? Like uh, like I I shot that video today and, and got it out for you guys to look at. Um, you know, mainly because I really wanted it to to really emphasize the importance of that. Like once you once you get enough sunlight, once you get the soil in order, like mowing really becomes the big thing that makes your lawn look awesome. So, you know, that I, it's, it's cool that uh, that you're getting a swordman and I hope you get it soon. And, and as soon as you get it, man, just get out there and, uh, and, and break it in. Here's the thing, you want to get out there and check your height of cut, Todd, make sure that, you know, everything's working the way you want it. So that when the grass is fully green, you're good to go. You don't want the first time to be, you know, when you're ready to go and, you, and you're, not, you're not sure how the machine's set up and everything. I, I would get it out, start it up, you know, maybe make a few passes just to see. Can't hurt anything, right? Can't hurt anything. All right, so Nestor Reyes is in the house. What's going on? What's going on, sir? 
What's going on with you, LG? We've got uh, you know YouTube live stream royalty between LG and JG. You talk about two people that always support like YouTube live streamers. There's, there's hardly ever a live stream that I'm on that where those two are not there. So um, them and Grace are always on uh, on the live streams. So that's pretty cool. All right. Uh, you see, um, so Mark says he, he did, but um, Arizona is different. It may hit 90 degrees next week. Man, that's gotta be it's gotta be wild. So you guys probably never. You always never stop mowing, I imagine. It's probably um, mowing year round in uh, in Arizona or close to that. And yeah, Nestor's saying the same thing. He has he is a uh, you know hasn't stopped mowing all, all year round. Very very cool. Well, I I, I while I do enjoy mowing, um, it, I do like the month you know the well, the three months or so that you have of, of very light mowing. So I still mow my lawn over over the winter months, um, but it's just not where you have to get out there and mow and have to get it done to make sure you maintain you know that height of cut nicely. So over the winter months, I just got out there and. You know, once a week, once every you know ten days, just knock the knock the little high the little high points down, just kind of make the lawn look cool. So, uh, so yeah. But I, I I get it. I kind of enjoy having a little bit of a break. Um, and Kevin saying Sheehan is saying, hey, watching the golf course lawn academy while waiting for Mr. Uh, Ronder up here. I appreciate that, sir. So yeah, what Kevin's talking about is the course of real. All you guys that used to um, come to the live stream and go to golfcourselawn.com where you would sign up to be notified of the course. The course is now live now. And if if you guys were on that mailing list, check your email. Um, and there's something in there for you guys that will make it a little more lucrative for you guys to join the course. So I'm glad that you are enjoying it, Kevin. Hopefully you're getting some value out of it. Be sure to let me know any feedback that you have as for how things can be made better. And I, I appreciate the support, sir. Uh, let's see. Moro's in the house. What's going on, Moro? He got his R15 in. That's pretty sweet. Cool, cool. I got mine sitting right here. I got to wait another month, month and change, six weeks or so before I can consider doing anything with it. But I'm glad you got yours. All right, so John D has a question. He says, Arden 15 or Yukon overseed for desert environment? That's a good question, um, John D. I'm not sure about that. Um, I don't, I'm not sure. I mean, Arden 15 has lower, uh, does, one of the things that it does have is, is better drought tolerance than a lot of your um, your common Bermudas or your, or your Tifway 419s, but I don't know if Yukon is better. Um, so when you say desert environment, I guess we're talking about because of dry conditions or like, or super hot conditions. I mean, we're still early enough in the live stream that you can chime in and give me a little more context on it. Um, but the short answer is I'm not sure. Between those two, you're probably going to get a good result with either of them, to be honest. Uh, but I'm not sure if Yukon is better suited for desert, more arid environments than Arden 15 uh, is. So hopefully give me a little more context as we as we go through here, and I'll be able to uh, to chime in a little bit more. Let's see. Uh, next question up is Stephen Velasquez. What's going on, Stephen? He says, hey, Ron, it looks like Stephen's playing volleyball in your, uh, in your thumbnail there. That's cool, man. He's getting it done. He says, hey, Ron, I noticed I have a ton of torpedo grass, which I thought was Bermuda. Have you ever had to deal with it? Should I even worry about it since it looks so similar to my Bermuda? How would you, he didn't finish it up. Um, how would you, I guess, try to probably try to treat it as I guess you're trying to say. Um, I've not had to deal with um, Bermuda grass, uh, Stephen. Um, with that one, I think that's one of those ones that's pretty that's pretty difficult to kill. Like the, the, little, bit of, the little bit that I've heard about um, torpedo grass that you almost have to use uh, like glyphosate on it, kind of like the same way you would treat um, uh, like Dallas grass. If you take like a little bit of glyphosate, and w wipe it on a sponge, and wipe that on the on the on the leaves to try and kill it off, to try and knock it back. Um, but it's one of those ones that's really really hard to kill, from what I understand. I don't know if there's a I don't know if there's a herbicide that's selective that will kill uh, the torpedo grass and not kill Bermuda. Not that I'm aware of. Maybe someone in the live stream will be able to ch chime in and, and, and give some more context, but. If it looks similar, I mean, eh, I mean, you can leave it. But I mean, the thing is, if it's if it's really aggressive and it spreads a lot, like how Bermuda does, you might want to, um, you know, I, I'd probably try to get rid of it if it were me. Because as you, I, I'm not sure what, like, you even talked to me about mowing or what you're doing as far as that goes. But, you know, if you're starting to cut your lawn and mow, uh, lower, I imagine torpedo grass doesn't, even if it may look similar, it doesn't look this exactly the same as Bermuda. And you'll probably be able to tell, like, the texture differences as you begin, like, improving your Bermuda lawn. So for me, I would try to get rid of it if there's a way to do that without um, harming the Bermuda. So cool. Very, very, very good question. All right. Let's see uh, what else do we have. Of course, we got this live stream here. Uh, let's see. Philip um, Jetamero says, hey, what's, hey, Ron, how are you guys doing? I'm doing well, sir. I think you're new. I'm not, I don't remember seeing that name before. So I think you're new to the live stream or you're the first time like chiming in. So uh, welcome if it's the first time. And uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for chiming. I'm doing pretty well. Like I said, I was finding a little bit of a cold, but uh, it is, it's slowly going away. So we'll see how it, how it pops in. Uh, let's see what questions we have here. Supi has a question. He says, good evening, everyone. It says, lawn is greening up a bit in NC with these warm temps. I have a bunch of little mounds now that I, that I scalped. Um, I'm told they're earthworms. Any experience with that? Um, not really, uh, Supi. I've not really had, um, uh, experience with the little mounds popping up after I, after I scalped my lawn. 
But if they're earthworms, just I mean, I would leave them alone. I mean, they're, those are those are like good um, those are good guys to have in your in your soil, right? So I wouldn't I wouldn't like um, trying to go out and find something to kill them. Um, I imagine that as as the grass is growing in more, like the mounds, will, if you, as the grass starts growing in more, and as you start mowing more, the mounds are probably going to become less of a thing. Um, so I probably wouldn't worry about it if, if it were me. I wouldn't worry about it. All right, so let's see uh, what else do we have here. So Lee Farmer is saying, yeah, another huge storm here in Chattanooga. Yeah, um, you guys probably you guys probably got some of what um, we had because Chattanooga is not that far from from here. It's probably I don't know two and a half two hours two and a half hours something like that. So yeah, I mean whatever weather we had, you guys probably got uh, two. I know there was some more severe weather to the west of um, where I am in Georgia. So I imagine Chattanooga also being more west than I am probably got some more got some more severe storms too. And JG, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. He says, don't forget to hit that like button. Anyone chiming in? I know we're just getting started with the show, but if you don't mind, you know, uh, touching that, li that like button ever so gently, it's free for you guys to do. Allows me to take a sip of my lemonade while we, while we do that. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. See who else we have here. So Cheryl's in the house is saying, hey, what's up going on, Cheryl? Thanks for chiming in. I'm glad that you are out more. So a uh, question for you guys, uh, how, how many of you guys are already, um, are regularly mowing your lawns as yet. I guess I know that my lawn is greening up probably a little bit more, a little bit quicker than, than most. But um, the thing is, once you start seeing that green haze, it's time to really get out there and start mowing. I'm not saying you have to mow like every every other day or, you know, going crazy. But the more you the more you mow your grass, the more you open that canopy up, the more heat, the more light you're allowing to get down there. You're going to you're going to actually you're actually helping the green up to happen. You know what I mean? So so definitely, I mean, it's, if you are, I know Cheryl is starting to get going with her mowing. So definitely, uh, you know, if you guys have not done that yet, uh, get down with it. So, you know, it's, it's uh, good for the lawn. Good for the lawn. Good to get out there. Good exercise. And uh, it's fun stuff. Uh, let's see. So Chris, Chris Balducci, best name ever. It's his best last name ever. He says, hey, Ron, sorry, I've been missing all the last few weeks. Son playing football Friday nights. Uh, lights is in effect. I'm back now or for now. Looking forward to spending this evening with you guys. Cool, man. Well, that's a good reason. That's a good reason to miss, man. Hanging out and supporting your son playing football. That's always uh, that's always cool. So I am I'm glad that you're uh, that, you know at least you're able to do that and that you're hanging out with us tonight. So if you're able to hang out, I appreciate it. And if you have to run next week, you know so be it. All right, Kevin saying he didn't get any rain at all on the north or north uh, North Carolina coast. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure your time's coming, Ke uh, Kevin. So let's see the next question here. So Sosa sixty three says, when is the best time to start applying Carbon Pro G? I threw some, I threw down a uh, oh, yard mastery. Yeah, I did some yard mastery, no stress blend about a week ago and starting to see some green up. Thanks. Cool. Um, yeah, you, so you can, there's really no wrong time to apply carbon pro G. Um, so, so, so I've been applying it on my lawn and, you know, every month, at least once a month since, uh, I don't know, June, July of last year. So there's really no bad time or no wrong time to do it. Um, you know, the, you, I mean, soon, I'd say the soon, sooner is better, right? Like, like some of the, some of the, uh, some of the benefits of carbon pro G, um, like, like the, the pH optimization aspect of it, like that takes three to four weeks to, to work. So the sooner you get that down, uh, the better, right? I mean, the, um, the compost you're going to see benefits from, um, right away, the, um, the microbial packages in it, you're going to see benefits from assuming soil temps are where they need to be. So yeah, I mean, you're not gonna, you know, I, I would get it down sooner. So the best time to apply it was yesterday. I, I'd say that. And especially if you've got rain coming. Uh, get it down, man. So get it down, let it get it watered in and and uh, and working. So um, so yeah, yeah. It's cool that you you're trying out that yard mastery, uh, no stress blend. I think that's the um, what what's what's the formulation? Of that? I, know, I know it's got like mostly potassium, I think, right? Which is which is great for waking up your lawn, uh, from springtime. Like it was really cool to see. I'm not sure if you guys watched that video that I did. Um, the title, like the thumbnail, says like didn't expect that, where I showed like how like a little bit of potassium on one of the um, the plots that Real Rollers had. It's a, their their Tiff Tough Bermuda that was overseeded with rye. Like how just like 7% potassium, like how it made a pretty big difference compared to the other side of the plot, which is the exact same grass, but just how much, it, how, how aggressively it greened up. And I was there last Friday for a short time. And even if you look at it now, even though Lee and the guys have put down fertilizer, um, you know, to try and amend like the, some of the deficiencies, the side that started with the, the, the potassium is still ahead of the other side. So it's, it's cool to see like how, you know, that little bit of head start really made a difference. And well, I, I'm sure as time goes by and as, as temps pick up, like it's going to even out, but it really shows there is something to, um, to giving your, your lawn a little, a little bit of kick of potassium to, to, to start the season off. So I think you're doing the right thing, Carbon Pro G and with that, um, that yard, uh, that yard mastery blend. 
Uh, let's see. Aldo Beltran says, do you uh, do fresh lemonade or country time? No, I don't, I don't do I, not either, um, Aldo. I do, um, uh, this is like Publix lemonade. So it's like Publix lemonade and water. I like, I dilute it half and half. So it like, like straight lemonade is too sweet. Like the only lemonade that I drink straight is like Chick-fil-A lemonade because it's like, it's really good. Like that's really, really good lemonade. But like most store lemonade, I'd like, I'll do like half water, half lemonade just to dilute it. So it's not quite so sweet. But, uh, but yeah, that is what I am drinking. The G's, what's going on, man? Thanks for checking in. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. So Todd has a question. He says, I just put down my pre-emergent and rain washed it in. Can't wait to cut. Should I cut it one or two notches lower on my first cut? It depends, Todd. Um, are you trying to scalp? I mean, are you are you trying to lower your high to cut or try, to trying to bring it down to like, you know, do like a, like a mild high to cut reset to get going for the season? Um you know, if you if you haven't scalped yet and your lawn is green is greening up, like it's showing it's showing that it's coming out of dormancy. Um, yeah, you can go down a couple, you can go down a notch or two. Like me, I'm already I've already got my my height of cut set where I, I'm probably going to leave it all season. I'm set to a to a bench height of like half an inch, so which means on the lawn is probably cutting just slightly under half inch, um, and that's what I'm going to run all season. So, uh, you know, now's the time if you are if you're thinking about going a little bit lower, like go ahead and 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 bring your height of cut down just below that, so that what grows back will be green, and then just do your best to maintain that uh, throughout the season. It just depends on um, you know your mowing frequency, how often you're able to mow it, that you're going to be able to you're going to be able to do that. But yeah, there's no there's no really wrong answer uh, to what you, what you're saying. I, the one thing I will say is. Um, you know, if you're, if you are scalping, um, taking it down two notches at once might be a lot, maybe more, more work than you're thinking, right? Cause if you go, if you take it down two notches, that's a lot of material to be removing out of the grass. So you never know, you might take it down one notch this week, take that material out, get it done. And then next week or the next time you mow, take it down another notch instead of doing it all at once. So you're not like hating life quite so much as you're trying to remove all this, uh, all this grass all at once, but there's really no wrong answer, man. I mean, as long as you're not scalping, yeah, feel free to, to take it down uh, a little bit lower. All right. So Robert Wallace chimes in and says, Hey, Ron, thanks for the feedback with the soil test lime is down. Awesome, sir. Good job. I'm glad to hear that that, uh, that works. So there, yeah, Robert's talking about, he sent me his soil test results and uh, we came up with a plan of what to put down. He probably went up to site one and got some, uh, some lime and threw that down. And um, I, I'm not sure, I forget where you are, uh, Robert. I'm, I'm sure if you're in Georgia, but if you got it down before all that rain yesterday, that was good because it definitely got watered in uh, really well. So that's, uh, that's, that's really cool. Very nice. Okay, so Papa is Lowe's chiming in. He says, I couldn't wait any longer. Threw down Milo on Monday. How long do I need to wait to throw down a flagship 2406? Uh, it's up to you, man. Um, you know, it depends on how heavy you put the Milo down. Let me see, 2406. So let's see, if we did, if you did that at a, at a relatively light rate, let's see, if you did, yeah, even, even then, um, even at like three pounds, that's still like 0.72, man. That's still quite a bit of nitrogen. Um, I would wait, I would wait a bit, Papa Mo's low. If you just put down the Milo, the Milo is, um, I think you're in Alabama. So your, your soil temps are probably in the fifties now to where the Milo is starting to work, but it's really, really slow release. And I think the flagship is also slow release. So, I mean, you can, you can, you can put it down. I would probably wait though. I would give it, you know, a good two, three weeks. I'd wait till, let's see, we're in the last week of, uh, March, let's say mid April. If you want to do like a three pounds per thousand, uh, application of flagship. That's, that's what I would, I would do. So you're not trying to push too much growth too soon. Um, and yeah, that, that's probably what I would go with. I'm glad you got your, your, you scratched your itch. You got the Milo put down. It's always, Milo's a great product, man. I mean, it's, it's, a uh, you know, I, I broke up with Milo mainly largely because one, I, I want to really like Lebanon turf fertilizers. I, I mean, that's the big thing. I, the only thing I really used Milo for last season was to wake up the lawn as like, it was like my starter fertilizer for the season. Um, but for just my lawn, it's just expensive to apply because it's like, it's gotten so popular. Everyone, their grandmother's buying it. It's like seventeen dollars a bag around here, so I just really can't afford to apply it to the lawn uh, like I used to in the past. But yeah, I'm glad you got it down, Papa Mo's low, and I uh, I get it, I get it. Uh, let's see what else. Let's see what else. What else? What else we have here? All right, uh, Craig. Craig Dills has a question here. He says. Hey, Ron Henry, this is Craig Dills. <laughs> this is, I'm also working with Bermuda, also in the Metro Atlanta area. Welcome, go dogs. Uh, assuming your dogs are a Falcons fan, I guess. I mean, either either way, it's, it, they're both tough teams to love at times, right? But um, anyway, back to your question. He says, uh, too early to throw down triple 12, trying to get some uh, Foss down to assist with the green up. Uh, no, not really, man. Um, you know, you figure tri triple 12 at three pounds per thousand, that's not that much nitrogen. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely, I would, I would absolutely do that. I mean, if, especially since you're, in Atlanta, you're the same climate as me. You should be greening up. The big thing, Craig, Craig, I'd say is if you've not started cutting your lawn yet, I would get on that. I would, I would start bringing that high to cut down 
uh, just to chart, you know, we're, I looked at the forecast and we were supposed to get um, some fairly consistent heat in the forecast. I'm looking here. Let's see, our 10 days got us doing, like tomorrow's supposed to be 77 degrees, 77, 72, 76. Um, we get one day where it gets down in the 50s, but for the most part, our our, our trend is warming up, you know? So yeah, I, it's, it's a great time to um, to put down a triple 12 to kind of start the season off. I do it at like three pounds per thousand, nice light rate, and uh, just start mowing. You know, once you put the fertilizer down, all that's left then to do is um is mo definitely so great great question always fun to hear from someone else that is in uh, also in georgia all right so next next point here we have is from two shots of vacation. I, I always wonder what you about your name every time i see that in the live stream is it two shots of vacation or um i don't know what the va- the, the uh v- vacay is for but i don't know we'll see he says what's going on ron uh tons of uh questions for you today can i share my soul test with you yes you can sir if you like uh send it here Send it to ron at golfcourselon.com. Send me your soul test um, and I'll look over it and I'll look and come up with a plan of action. If you can, also two shots of AK. Also, let me know what's going on in your lawn. If there's anything weird happening that you just also want to talk about um, so we can come up with a plan of action to help to help improve things. But yeah, just send me an email uh, to here and I will look over it and we'll come up with a, uh, with a plan. Very cool. Always, always happy to, uh, to help out. Travis Winston again with the Golf Course Lawn Squad. What's going on, Travis? Thanks for coming and hanging out, man. Pumping the, pumping the troops up. It's always awesome. All right. Uh, let's see what, we, what else we have here. So Mora was a point of concern. He says, Ron, I think my FERT and Carbon Pro-G got washed away due to the heavy rain. Should, I, should we reapply the 18, 24, 12? I don't think it, it, it's, I doubt that it got washed away as much as you might think, Moro. Um, uh, I mean, if you want, send me pictures of your lawn, but it's, it's like, I'll, I'll put it you this way. I'll put it you this way. Uh, last week, in anticipation of all this rain coming, um, I put down six bags of Carbon Pro G in the back lawn and two pop, two bags of Carbon Pro G in the front and soil areas. I went down really heavy, right? And you know my front lawn has got like a slope on it. And then with all the rain, like I when I went and looked um, today when I was cutting, like none of it washed into the sidewalks or washed off the lawn or anything like that. Like I mean, there's a little bit, a little bit of a pot, a little bit, a tiny bit like that's near the edge, like where I uh, where I edged the lawn, like that little border. You can see a little bit of a tiny bit of buildup there. But um, as I was mowing today, there was still plenty. I could actually look and I was mowing. You actually could see it actually sunk, sinking into into the soil, into the into the into the turf. So um, I don't think that you lost as much as you think. I mean, if you if you if you like definitely saw like a bunch of it, like not on the lawn anymore. Like it's maybe out in the street or sidewalk, something like that. Then yeah, we could, we could consider it. Um, I would say if you want to put down more carbon pro G by all means, feel free. I would not put down more 18, 24, 12, because I, I, if memory serves, like you applied that a while ago. Um, it's been several weeks, so you're, you're probably fine. I wouldn't want you to put, do that again because I, I, I don't think as much of it, um, probably washed away as your, um, as you're thinking, because again, I I just went super heavy with an application of Carbon Pro on my front and rear lawn, and if and there's any spot that's gonna wash it, that's gonna wash the stuff out, it would be the front lawn. And I was literally out there today, and you know there wasn't there wasn't any any noticeable amount of, of product loss or anything. So I think I think you're gonna be fine. I think you're gonna be fine. If you want to send me pictures, um, send them to me. You know my email, Ron at golfcourselawn.com. We can look at it and figure out something out. But I don't want you. To, I mean, that's that's what you have. The eighteen twenty four twelve. So it's a pretty potent fertilizer, and I don't want us to you know put down another application of that unless you know there's really good reason to do it. I think I think you're probably I think you're probably okay. But feel free to email me if you uh, if you want, sir. All right, uh, Daryl Tunsall's in the house. What's going on, sir? What's going on? Appreciate it. And um, to Jesus says, "Hey, Ron, checking in with all this rain. Team Zebra Stripes. We are we are Team Zebra Stripes. You guys probably saw." Um, uh, I do the, I do like to do the YouTube stories. That, that's like one of the best features of YouTube. They added to uh, to mobile, being able to get out there and kind of just like a quick like pan, like fifteen second clip showing what's going on in the lawn. Uh, so I, if you guys are not following that, um, like watch those. I mean, a lot of like just a little when I'm out mowing, I'll just I'll fire up the the phone and just like show me making a pass or show how the lawn's coming along. It's a really cool way to see like what I'm doing in the lawn um, in a less formal way than videos. Because videos I got to get out and shoot them, get all queued up, get audio all done, and then edit them and put them on, online. Whereas with the, the stories, you'll see a lot of things you won't necessarily see otherwise. So uh, definitely check that out. And yeah, man, we are Team Jeebus Stripes. I had a bunch. I got them taken care of. So the lawn was mowed. It's actually looking a lot better now. So I'm feeling, feeling better about it. We have a super chat from Maurice. Let's see here. Super chat received. Maurice uh, says, I appreciate you, sir. I will send the soil test results tonight. I appreciate that, Maurice. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks so much for the support. Um, S Bender said, uh, says, uh, where's, I said, where's Ron? Is it just me? I don't have a feed. I think it's just you, uh, Cheryl. I think so. I hope so. 
If not, um, you know, it's gonna be a really short live stream tonight. But yeah, no, I, I think it's just you. If you don't mind, like reset it. Um, I'm looking here on another screen and I am streaming on YouTube from what I can tell. So maybe just try restarting your browser and see if um, if I come back in. Um, yeah, I hope so. But if not, let me, if, if anyone that's in the stream, if I'm good, just say like, yeah, just say like, yes, or put like type one. If you're seeing me and you're hearing me, okay, just to make sure. All right, uh, next question we got here is Helmet Ruckus with the Porsche. I always, I'm always jealous every time I see your uh, your thumbnail, sir. Love Porsches, awesome cars. It says, uh, hey Ron, thanks for all you do. You're very welcome, I appreciate you watching. It says, uh, at least you're not riding the Sun Joe's Scarifier money train as a lot of uh, guys in the line community. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's it's just, I've not, I mean, there's, I mean, they, 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 they serve a purpose. I mean, the one thing with Sun Joe, you gotta hand it to them is that they make a good, they make a, a um, an inexpensive product that seems to work well. I've never used their Scarifier or any of their mowers, but like from looking at the videos and the results people get with them seems to be pretty good, right? So um, I can't really speak to them, but I mean, it's, it seems to, they seem to work pretty well. I will tell you that the, um, the Swordman does pretty well. It does a really good job scarifying it. That was, that was actually more fun. That was actually more fun than I thought it would be, believe it or not. Like, like scalping your lawn is not fun. Aerating your lawn, not fun. Neither of those are, 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 are really fun things. But scarifying, there's something weirdly gratifying about whenever you're like running that thing over the lawn and it's like a, it's almost like a vacuum cleaner. You're like little clippings and little like, you know, twigs and little debris gets pulled up. I don't know, it's kind of cool. I mean, it's, um, and because my lawn wasn't too bad, I only pulled out like six bags or so of material to where I wasn't like hating life. Uh, you know, it was, it was a fun time, but I appreciate you watching, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. All right, Jeremy, big bro, uh, Ron, let's go. Yeah, man, you're here. Hopefully you're getting, doing well in your, uh, your infosec journey. And also, I think you're also said you're doing jujitsu, right? You're doing, you're the jujitsu guy. Hopefully you let me know how you did in the tournament and stuff, man. It's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. All right. Uh, let's see. Jim Cronan. Hello from South Dakota. I imagine in South Dakota, Jim, it's got to still be pretty, fairly cold out there. I mean, I know you're the South of the Dakotas, but it's still, you know, it's pretty, I'm sure it's pretty, pretty, pretty cold up there. You never really hear a whole lot about South Dakota other than like cold weather and, uh, and whatnot. So yeah, cool. Thanks for chiming in, man. I appreciate it. All right. Um, and Mr. Putt saying, I work three to 11. Uh, this is turning into my favorite part of my Friday shift. That's cool. I, I appreciate that, uh, Mr. Putt. So you have a job that allows you to tune in and, and hang out with us on, on YouTube. I, uh, I appreciate that you do. I mean, you have free time at work, obviously, and you're using it to watch the live stream. So I, uh, I definitely appreciate that. It's pretty cool. And we have a super sticker. Super chat received. Uh, I need to you know, I need to do one for super sticker. I've got one for super chat, but I don't have one for super sticker. So I need to do like super sticker received. Um, but thank you so much, Mark F. Uh, this is a pair of character holding his belly laughing out loud. I appreciate it. And uh, we have uh, Ron Tiffany from Minnesota. Minnesota. I can't I can't I can't say it. It's interesting to um, like people from Minnesota have an interesting dialect. I, I always like to hear the way they talk. It's almost like. Um, they, uh, they have like a, it's almost like you guys are singing with your, the way you guys, at least to me, to my ear, it sounds like, like you, almost like you're singing a lot of times in the, in the way your accent is. So, uh, very cool. Um, Ron, thanks for chiming in. A, fe a fellow Ron, you know, we got to hang together. Uh, thanks for hanging out in the live stream. All right. Uh, Papa Mo's Lowe says, um, can you email me your old lawn plan using Milo and Lebanon Furt? I can, um, Papa Mo's Lowe. And actually, if you want to find that, I think that's still on the store. Um, let me see. I think it is still here. Let me look and see. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So, um, so here, so here you go, Papa Mosel. Let me see if I can, um, switch over to this and, uh, not make a mess. There we go. Boom. Yep. So if you go to golf, if you go to the golf course lawn store, so just go to golf course lawn dot store and go to the blog. So I'm clicking on right here and then scroll down like in the middle part, there's like an, this is like the basic calendar. This is the, the calendar that I have that just, um, uh, if you know, you're just trying to do something really basic when to apply your pre-emergent when you're trying and the rich you can use for max or if you have ProScape or something else, you could use that instead. Um, it's got a very basic calendar on here. And then towards the bottom, there is a more full featured calendar that is, again, this is still not like this along the same lines of what's in the course. Of course, I have something that's a little bit more, that's more detailed than this. But if you want something that's more detailed showing something that's more along the lines of what I do, um, on that blog post in the golf course lawn store, just click on blog and scroll near the bottom and there, and you'll have it all here, like what the different products are, application rates, that kind of thing. So um, hopefully that helps uh, Papa Moslo. And um, you know, with, with either one of those, you got the basic one and you got the more the more hardcore like spoon feeding one. Although that one doesn't really cover spoon feeding. That Again, that's in the course. In the course, I have a calendar that you get as part of it that breaks down like how to apply Turfplex, how to apply the Humic Max, like and um, the times to do it, all that stuff. So it's a really nice uh, layout that will help you guys. You know, you basically you follow this, do everything that's in there and you get the result as long as you mow. You gotta mow. Can't just spray this stuff on the lawn and wait. You also have to get out there and mow too. So, but um, 
But if you don't mind Papa Mo's low, um, yeah, just shoot me. I'll tell you what, I, I will, I'll email you something later that might be helpful if this doesn't work. If, if this, if what I just sent, showed you on the live stream isn't good enough, uh, drop me an email and we'll be able to, I'll, and let me know what your specific questions are and we'll be able, I'll put something together for you to help you out just to, uh, to, to make sure that you're, you're good to go, sir. So uh, always, always happy to help. All right, DJ Kid says, uh, yo, Ron, what's going on? Hello, my brother, appreciate it. What's going on? Thanks, uh, Dimitri's in the house. And uh, let's see, um, question here from Craig Dills. Um, he says, Ron, do you pay much attention to cycling groups of pre-emergent? No, not really, um, Craig. Um, in the spring, it's pretty much prodiamine, and in the fall, it's either um, dimension slash dithiopair or spectacle flow. Um, and that's, that's pretty much been the recipe for the last five, six years. I mean, not, not this year, obviously, because this year I didn't put down spring pre-emergent. Um, but prior to this year, that's what it's always been. Um, and that that might come back to bite me eventually, um, you know, if there's every kind of, any kind of resistance. Um, what, I'm, what I'm interested in seeing, Craig, because this year I'm not applying any pre-emergent. Like you figure for the last, you know, five, six years, the lawn has had pre-emergent every year in the spring and the fall. So I'm interested in seeing with there being no pre-emergent going in the lawn this spring, they didn't get anything, what weeds, what kind of weeds look like, um, you know, weed pressure looks like as, as temps come up. If I'm going to get crabgrass, like what's, what I'm going to be dealing with in the lawn. Um, but no, to answer your question, no, not really. I don't do much, I don't do much with, with cycling um, different types of pre-emergent. There's, there's typically three, there's a total of three. So, pre, so prodiamine pretty much always in the spring and then dithiopair or uh, spectacle flow, the, the, the Amaz, whatever the, the eye one is that's in the spectacle flow, like that one um, is typically in the fall. So um, so no. And, and I've ha not really had any issues with it per se, um, but again, that might become a thing eventually. All right, great question though. All right, Laundry's in the house saying, evening, what's going on? Yeah, what's going on, Laundry's? I appreciate it. Uh, let's see, so uh, Thimitri, he says, oh, it's either Thimitri or Thimitril. I think it's probably Thimitril. He says, how did you like that Swarm, Swarm and Dethatch? I plan to get this cartridge as well. I, I thought it was really good, man. It worked really well. So it took me a little while to get um, the height set where I needed it. Like when I was at Real Rollers, uh, Lee set it up for me. He did like a, he, he took it down to um, what he thought would be a good starter setting. And because I'm already at half inch, um, I had to take it down quite a bit lower. I didn't actually look in, I should have taken a picture of what was actually on uh, the side of the mower to let you guys know what it was. But uh, but it works great, man. Yeah, once once I got it down low enough to where it was actually um, it was like scraping and doing a good job without going too deep, or just like pretty much tilling up the soil. I didn't want it to get too much into the soil. Um, it did, did a great job. Yeah, I can't I can't um, complain. All. Again, like like using that is another compelling reason for a swordman in my book. Like if you are on the fence between like an alette or a swordman, like. Uh, you know, the, those mowers that have the interchangeable cartridge systems, whereas, you know, I, I used to think, well, man, eh, like, why would you ever really need that? You know, I mean, just a mower is fine, but I, I get it. I get it now, now that I've had to, the opportunity to actually use one on my lawn. Um, if I had one, it was something I would probably do, I don't know, a couple times a season, you know, maybe start of the season, mid season, and then, um, you know, probably closer to the end. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's cool. Did a good job. Did a good job. I think, I think you're gonna, you're gonna like it. I'd like to try out the, um, the verticutting cutting one. So maybe, maybe Lee, if you're watching, maybe we can, you can we can see about working something out. I can see how the verti the verticut one goes whenever I decide to to, uh, to seed. So uh, you know, putting it, just putting it out there, just putting feelers out there, man. I'm not, you know, I'm just 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 checking, just checking, because the the uh, the scare fire works really well. Let's see how the uh, the verticut works. But yeah, you're gonna like it, uh, Dimitri. Uh, good good choice. You uh, it's, it's it's if I had a swordman, I would own one of those. Uh, very cool. So Osas Konar is in the house. What's going on, man? Appreciate it. Let's go. Thanks for coming in and hanging out. And uh, laundry needs to say, spring just exploded in New Jersey late this week. Daffodils in bloom and flowering trees about to burst into flower. Yeah, dude, it's crazy how quickly things started ramping up. Like even Alex's tree, I don't know what it's what it's actually called, but he has a tree that's got these, um, and you guys are probably gonna tell me, but it's a, it's got these small white flowers on it. Um, they're pretty common. Is it cherry blossoms? Maybe cherry blossoms? They're pretty common here in Georgia. Um, and it's, it's, it's really starting to pick up, man. In the last like week, last 10 days, everything or a lot of the trees are really starting to wake up and starting to green up more like the trees that a lot of the birds fly on like in the back lawn you guys can't see them a lot of times in the videos but those are starting to thicken up and my lawn's obviously growing in really well so i think across the country we're getting a um you know we're getting a warming trend and hopefully it, it, it holds out and we uh we keep uh we keep this up all right uh cheryl good good glad to know you got it fixed she says you got the live feed now i, I saw some blades of that pesky saint aug weed in my lawn today Ugh, i'm so bummed here's the thing Cheryl. it's always going to be a thing it's it's you know the the one thing about the one thing I'll say is this right here's here is the beauty and the horror of lawn care, the beauty is is that you're never going to ever get the lawn 
perfect, 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 right? There's always going to be something to fix. And that's that can be kind of a horror in your case because you really hate St. Augustine. Um, but just enjoy that. Like, that's just part of it, right? You just got to figure out, now, well, how am I going to do this? How am I going to take care of the St. Aug and not harm my zoysia? And just just deal with it, you know? So it's, it's all it's all part of it. Like, I got some parts of my lawn where there's there's shade, shaded areas that are just always a pain, like those where those shrubs are. Um, and it's just, it's just part of it, you know? So just enjoy the parts of your lawn that look really, really nice and the parts that aren't as, uh, aren't as good. Just, you know, just keep working on them. Just keep working on them. They'll, they'll improve over time. And if you just keep cutting your lawn and just keep cultivating that zoysia, it will, uh, it will do a good job. Although St. Saint, Saint Aug is a pretty pesky one. It's, it's, um, you know, it will, it will fight back pretty hard as far as, uh, trying to spread. All right. All right, so skilled musicians in the house. What's going on, sir? He says, hey, Ron, I applied pre-emergent before the rain. Good job. That was, it, you definitely got it watered in. He's just wondering if I should reapply for fear of it being washed away. My front lawn has a pretty good slope. Nah, you're, I think you're probably fine, sir. It's, um, I know we got a lot of heavy rain, but uh, if you, I'm not sure if you applied um, a liquid or granular pre-emergent. If it was a granular, they're gonna, the pearls are going to be yellow. So here's what you can do. Like the the area of your lawn, let's say your lawn slopes away, like at the bottom of like where the like the runoff would normally be, just go look in that area. And if there's a lot of yellow, like if you see like a like a like a sea of yellow there, then you probably had some washout. What I think you're gonna find is there's probably not gonna be that much. Um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't wash. It's not wash. It's not gonna wash out as 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 badly or as, as much as you might might think. Um, you know, so yeah, I, I think you're probably okay. I'm I'm trying to remember if you did a granular or liquid pre-emergent, but um, but yeah, I think you're I think you're fine. I think you're fine. Um, but yeah, take a look at what I was saying. Just look, look and see if you've seen uh, any streaks of yellow in like the street or where the water runs off on your lawn. And if not, you're probably still good to go. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it too much. All right, let's see what else do we have here. Uh, Australia's in the house again. I gotta, you know, I gotta, I gotta clap it up for you. I gotta give it to you. Cause you're from overseas, you know, you, you're hanging out like from on the other, we're like here and you're on the other side of the planet, you know, down South where it's probably, you guys are going into winter now, I guess, right? Like it's going, to, as I watch, um, what's his name? The guy that works, like yeah, works on a golf course. I think it's Lawn, is it Lawn Tips or Lawn Tool? What's his name? Lawn Tips, I think. Um, I think he's in Australia and I think they're saying they're going, they're going into like your winter now. He says, uh, hey, Rob from Australia. Um, I, how do I stop or reduce the ripples waves when I cut my Bermuda? Cutting currently at half an inch. When you say ripples waves, what do you mean, Rob? Is it, is it, um, are you, you're saying cutting it half an inch, I'm guessing with a, using a real mower. The only time I've had ripples or waves, like what you're talking about, if you're using a um, a push reel mower, I'm not sure what you're using. If you can, like chime in below, like what kind of mower you're using. When I used to use my Scots, and if I got going a little bit too fast, like with those, with those push reel mowers, there's like a happy spot, right? Like if you go too slow, they don't cut too well. If you go too fast, they get like, a, they, they, send to, they start to like bounce a little bit, not like come off the turf, but they bounce a little bit and you get like this, what you call rippling or waving, or I call it like laddering cut type cut in the turf. So I'm not sure what you um, what you have. If, you, if you're dealing with a powered reel mower and you're getting that, uh, you probably need to get it sharpened because that shouldn't be happening with a powered reel mower. With a, with a push reel mower, I've seen that happen and it's normally because um, I was going a little bit too fast or I was going over uneven turf and the mower is coming off the ground as I'm pushing it, if that makes sense. So um, chime in below, let me know which one you're dealing with and we'll see if I can get you a better answer. But I think that's what it is. If it's a powered reel mower, might be due for a sharpen. If it's a push reel mower, may have to work on your technique of slowing down a little bit to to where it doesn't leave the turf as you're um as you're cutting it. All right, let's see what else we have here. So Andrew Chase is chiming in. He says, "Aloha." I guess you're in Hawaii. Aloha, sir. He says, "A while back, you gave me some advice on aerating and top dressing. The grass is 70 percent recovered and filling in nice. Thanks for your advice. You are so welcome, sir. Always love to hear that. I always like to hear that whenever I um, give someone some advice about." a topic that it is useful, helps solve the problem that you're having. So uh, that's that's pretty cool, Andrew. Thanks so much uh, for letting me know that. I appreciate it. Uh, very cool. Very, very cool. And uh, Dimitri's saying QT, Quick Trip Lemonade is the, is the best. Mm, yep. Mm-hmm. I'll drink to that. Oh, my God, Quick QT Club Cup. It's not Quick QT Lemonade, but it's still tasty. All right, so Mark is saying, yeah, in Phoenix, he mows every other day at 3 AC. You gotta do that, man. Once you, I always say that with real mowing, you know, at, at half an inch, like I should say this, three quarters of an inch is about the reasonable limit for real mowing to not like mess up your life, right? Once you get, once you start going below like half an inch or get to half an inch or lower, that's where you're like every other day. It's like you, you're you like, you're planning a lot of things around mowing because that's what it takes to keep it looking nice. But uh, I'm, sure it still looks, I'm sure it looks pretty awesome, Mark, with you mowing it every other day. That's pretty cool. Grace saying she did her first mow today. That's awesome. That's awesome. Very, very good. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's a big thing, guys. I mean, that part of what I was trying to um, 
to put out in that video or help you guys to, to appreciate that you know you know there's, there's a lot there's tons of different options for fertilizer tons of options for like um improving the soil and like I, I the things that i offer that in the golf course lawn store and also that i talk about and sometimes in the live stream like those things definitely are great products and they definitely will will, will improve the quality of your soil and which will translate into a better looking lawn but like you can't discount mowing. That's why I want, that's why like on, on the, the thumbnail for this, I put like mow, mow, mow. Like that's the, that's the thing. Like, you know, once you've, once you've gotten all the products that you think, you're doing your soil testing, you know, you're doing everything you need to do to make sure you're building the best soil you can as long, along with, um, along with making sure you get enough sunlight. It's just mowing, you know, that in the more you do it, the better it's going to look. That's, that's the, uh, that's the formula. If you want to know the secret to getting an amazing lawn, mow it a lot. Mow it, mow your lawn frequently with the right equipment at the right height and you're going to get looking, good looking lawn. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Joseph Roberts says, "Hey Ron, sorry I'm late. I was helping a ma uh, helping a uh, a neighbor spray broadleaf. That's good. That's a good reason to help. You helping your neighbor out. There's nothing wrong with that, uh, Joseph. That's very cool. Very cool. And then uh, uh, Chris says, uh, you know, I'm not uh, not mowing yet, but I'm starting to green up. Definitely going to try a pre scalp this weekend. Yeah. I mean, I I am really happy I did that, um, Chris. At first, I thought, eh, is it too early? I mean, I, I I literally did mine in like late." Like the last couple of days of January, I took like I took it down from three quarters of an inch to just over half an inch, mainly because I just didn't want to deal with all the headache of having to, um, you know, d to to do like basically spend a weekend out like picking up grass clippings, right? Uh, and it worked out pretty well. The grass did really really well, even though I got we got some temps that were got down into the twenties after doing that. Didn't seem to harm the the Bermuda. It seemed to just to do just fine. So I'm, I'm glad um, that that it worked out well. And there that just shows there is something to do to be said for a pre scalp, especially now. Like right now, the, the, you know we're we're getting close to warming up. So uh, feel free to uh, to definitely do that, sir. Feel free. All right, let's see what else we have here. Uh, Jim Cronin says I haven't put down pre emergent. We have we have still time still in the low 40s in South Dakota. Well, here's the thing, um, Jim. I mean, it's still in the low 40s. It's still it's still pretty cold. But like, once you're getting consistently in the 40s, um, do, you know, you might want to consider doing it. Because remember, it's not like 50 to 55 degrees is not when you should apply pre-emergent. Like, you want to get it down prior to that, prior to soil temps being in that range. So you know, once you're getting into the 40s consistently, maybe high 40s consistently, that's when you might want to consider doing it. I mean, in other words, pre-emergent is one of those things where doing it a little bit early isn't bad doing it late. I mean, it's not really bad either, but you're, just, you're, gonna, you're not going to get as good of an effect out of it. You're not going to get the, um, the weed suppression. You know what I mean? So that's the, um, that's the, that's the thing. So, uh, so yeah. Okay. Brooklyn boy has a question about Milo. He says, can I apply Milo every other month? Uh, yeah, yeah, you absolutely could. You can apply it every, um, every other month, every six weeks. It just, it just depends. Um, um, Brooklyn boy, if you're going with, a, if you're going with a relatively light rate, you could apply it monthly if you wanted to. You know, so yeah, I mean, absolutely. Milo can be applied every, every, it can be applied monthly. If you're going light on the rate, it can be applied um, every six weeks or it can be applied in your case every, uh, every two months. It just depends on what you, what you uh, are going for. What, what you'll find is if you, if you're looking for more consistency, like doing the every, like the once a month application is probably going to do better. Um, you're probably gonna get a better, like, or just when I say it's, you get a more consistent color doing it that way versus like throwing down Milo, even though it's slow release, it still like ramps up and releases and then it begins to fall off. So if you want it to be like more consistent, um, maybe going at a lower rate, but doing it more frequently is going to get you a, a, uh, a better, you know, more consistent color and grow. So it's something to, can, to consider. I realize it takes more time and more work to do that, but um, something worth, um, worth considering. All right. Uh, let's see. James Dean saying he just got an Earthway spreader, 80 pound hopper. Nice. Very cool, sir. That's a good one. Congrats. I, like, I love my Earthway. I know a lot of people, there's lots of great um, spreaders out there, but I think for the for value for money, the Earthway um, uh, works pretty well. Uh, let's see here. Um, did, did Brian has a question about applying too much iron. He says, hey, Ron, is applying too much iron problematic? Um, I know uh, Yard Mastery Double Dark is high in iron to get that deep green. If I use that as my primary source of N, is that problematic with all the iron? Uh, no, as long as you're applying it at at the rate. I think the, um, the rate that... Um, Alan has for a lot of it, for most of the products, I think it's the same. I think it's like three pounds per thousand is what he recommends. If you apply it at that rate, you're going to get a really good result. And yeah, yes, I mean, applying too much iron, like I actually did a test of that last year where I put down, what I do? I did, I put down a, a ton of malorganite and then I put down um, a the fertilizer I was using at the time called Brent Supreme, Supreme Green, which has... I want to say it's like 5% iron, I think, if memory serves me. So all in, I was putting down like almost like 8 or 9% iron in the lawn in a short period of time. And what happened is the lawn got really, really, really green, and then it turned dark, almost like um, 
like a purplish color and it la that lasted for about a week and then it went back to normal. So, I mean, like like anything, um, if you go too much of any any nutrient, it's going to be, it can become toxic and be bad for the lawn. So I, I wouldn't go, um, I wouldn't do what I did in that test just to see what would happen. But as far as your question around applying the double dark, um, if you're, as long as you're applying it at the rate, like the specified rate, you shouldn't have a problem at all. It shouldn't be, shouldn't be an issue at all because again, the rate that that Yardmaster uses on their products is, is, is pretty, I will not say necessarily conservative, but it's a good safe rate, right? And I think I, without looking at the bag, I've had to guess it's probably gonna be three pounds per thousand, um, which is gonna be fine. It's gonna be plenty of nitrogen and plenty of iron to keep the lawn looking nice. So yeah, you're not gonna, not gonna have a problem there um, at all, Brian. So, uh, but great questions. It's good that you're at least consider, you're considering that and it's, um, you're, you're keeping up with it. All right, let's see what other questions here. We got another question about Carbon Pro G and washout. He says, I put some Carbon Pro G and some Furt uh, yesterday before the rain. Do you think it all got washed out? No, I do not think it all got washed out. Uh, oh, so it's corner. I did not think so. Here, here's why. Here's why I say that, right? Like if anybody's lawn is going to get washed out, it's going to be mine. Like you think about it. Like last week, um, first of all, I'm cutting my lawn at, you know, half inch or the actual height of cut is probably just under half an inch for, to start, right? And then last week, I scarify the lawn. So the lawn is not even as thick as it was last week where um, you know it might hold on to stuff. It's actually thinned out a bit. So as far as like the grass to be able, grass ability to be able to hold on to, you know, the 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 prill from the Carbon Pro G or in your case also fertilizer, like my lawn is it was definitely compromised. And yet with all the rain we got, I didn't see any major washout. Like I like um, you know, the the front um hill, like the front slope of the front lawn. Literally today when I was mowing, I went and I looked just to see if there's, I, I would see like a, a streak or anything like anything like that of where some of it washed out and it, it all looked good. I didn't see any in the street, anything like that. I mean, so, um, so no, I think you're, I think you're fine. Um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it at all. I think you're absolutely fine. Osas. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't worry about it. And if you're worried, you can always go put down more carbon project, yeah, but I would not put down more fertilizer. Uh, but just to, you know, to answer, to, to, I would say, don't worry about it. You are, you are fine. You did not, everything did not get washed out. You're, uh, you're fine. All right. Uh, Super TA says, what's going on, man? His man, just put your stream on. Been getting in the yard since 10.30 a.m. Listening while working it. That's awesome, man. Since 10.30 a.m. You, you, so you gotta let us know, man. So you've been on since 10.30 a.m. What have you been doing in the lawn since 10.30? I think you're, I think Super TA, aren't you in, I think you're in California, right? Um, so still, at any rate, it's, uh, it's whatever, it's 3, 3.46 in California right now, thereabouts. So, you know, what, what were you doing? You gotta, you gotta fill us in. Like, what was a project that, that you're working in the lawn pretty much all day, sir? You gotta let us know. All right, let's see what else we have um, going on here. Uh, let's see, then Nick Nick Pav says, looking to do Bermuda uh, front lawn uh, next year from seed in Southern Colorado transition zone. Thoughts on Yukon versus Arden 15 for winter kill and early uh, green up. I can't comment on, on Yukon, Nick. Uh, definitely not in, um, and I can't comment really on Arden in Colorado. I can tell you that Arden 15 in Georgia, like it, it definitely, like the advertising they give, they say about it going to, going dormant later and coming out of dormancy sooner is definitely true. Like the, what they say on the brochure, the product actually does it. Because if you, and if you want to see that, um, uh, there's a series that I, that I did. If you uh, get on like YouTube, do like Ron Henry YouTube, and look up um, Tiffway 419 versus Arden 15. If you just do that, Tiffway 419 versus Arden 15, Ron Henry, like you'll get like a 10 part series where every week I filmed, I filmed um, like the dormancy rates of how Tiffway falls off compared to Arden. And the cool thing with Arden, um, and again, I don't know how Yukon compares, but like Tiffway is really cool in the sense that it's it's like it's like green, 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 and then it just literally falls off really hard. So it, it, it it's not it's not a gradual. It stays it holds on to green as long as it can, and literally just it, it falls off a cliff r relatively quickly. Whereas Arden 15, it's more it, it's 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 a lot softer curve. Like it, it literally it literally transitions from being really like vibrant and green to dormant. Um, a lot softer. And my, my and the thing is, my Arden 15 never really fully went dormant. There were days when there was like in the 20s here in Georgia, and I went outside and looked at it, there was still some like a little bit of green in the lawns. So, so it's a really, really, as far as it's it's cold tolerance um, and its ability to just to do well in cold, cooler weather, it's definitely a thing. So um, I don't know about UConn. I've never tried that one to be able to say for sure if it would perform equally as well, uh, Nick. But it's... Um, you know, I I think I think you I think you I know Arden 15 you definitely would be happy with UConn I don't know for sure but um I, the, what the brochure says about Arden is absolutely true I'm definitely a believer in the grass as far as it you know doing very well um in, with cooler climates so uh, hopefully that helps unfortunately I've never used UConn so I can't give you a better answer but if you're, if you're on the fence with Arden 15 and it will work in Colorado um you're probably gonna get a pretty good result with it so hopefully uh, that helps all right. 
See what the questions we got here. Lisa Cage, give me throwing out a super sticker. Super chat received. She's cheerfully blowing a party horn. I appreciate that, Lisa. Thank you so much. That's an interesting way to spell Lisa. I've never seen it spelled that way before. So, but uh, thank you so much for the support. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, let's see what other questions we have here. So Vitaly, um, you, uh, your Chenko, he says, my father-in-law put down some sod last October, 2020. Is it okay to air right now? It depends on um, Vitaly. I would probably wait a little bit longer. Um, if you put down sod in October, it's, um, if it's fully rooted in and you're not seeing like where it doesn't look like sod anymore. It looks like it's a, an even lawn. Um, you can definitely aerate this season, but just to give it just a little, not to stress it out just yet. Um, I would give it, I would give it a little more time. I would give it like till, you know, late April, early May and do it then. I'm pretty sure I, I am not, I'm not aerating my lawn yet. It, I mean, Alex has been, uh, you know, he's been hitting me up. He's been saying, Hey man, we want to air at the lawn. We gotta, we gotta get that done. And I'm saying, well, you know, I might just, I might not just wait. I might just hold, wait out until we, uh, till we top dress. He's like, yeah, no, I need to get mine done before then. So, uh, we gotta do it next month. So I'll probably be aerating here. I don't know, probably before by mid April, as I've had to guess, depending on when Alex can talk me into it. Um, but in your case, um, Vitaly, like wait, wait until the lawn is growing well, especially since it's new sod. Let's wait till late April, early May. You got plenty of time. Um, let, let's get some heat in the grass and, lick, and let, let it start growing and root a little bit stronger. And then when you aerate it, you're not going to have um, any issues. You're probably not going to have any issues if you did it now, but there's just not, there's not really any negative to waiting, which is why I would just say, just let's give it a little bit more time. But yeah, you can absolutely aerate this year if you want. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's, I think you're gonna get your result with it. And my, my lawn has been aerated every year since I've lived here. Even the first year when it, when the sod was installed in December, I believe they installed it like in December and it was aerated the following spring that, so it was aerated in like April, May. That's exactly what I'm telling you to do is exactly what I did with my lawn the very first time. So do that and you'll get a good result. All right, sir. So, uh, Daryl Tunsall was saying, Hey Ron, the golf course, uh, is awesome. Everyone should sign up. Great info, great content. Very good job. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. It's, it was fun to make because, you know, the thing is there's a lot, there's a, there's some bleed over, right? Because like, so some of the, um, a lot of the topics that are in the golf course salon Academy in the course that you guys can, if you're interested in it, you can see here, golf course salon.com, um, are topics that would not really do well on YouTube, like there's some, there's like, there's a, there's a chapter on an entire like segment on soil pH, right? Entire segment, uh, chapter on like micro and macronutrients and how pH affects like availability and those kinds of things. Things that are kind of propeller heady that most people on YouTube aren't going to really care about. Like really all they want to know is, hey, what first do I need to throw down and fix my grass so I can get green grass? But for people that are really trying to understand the why behind um, a lot of the products they put on the lawn, that's what the Academy's for. So um, I put a lot of work into it. Um, I'm glad I've gotten some really, really good feedback. I also gotten some feedback, some things that I can, I can improve and make better, which is I'm definitely going to be doing for the um, other upcoming content that's going to go into it. Like the, the top dressing module is going to come this year once I top dress salon um, and, you know, a couple other modules that are being um, built out. So I'm glad that you're getting some value out of it, Daryl. I, I got enough of it done that I thought that, you know, when people sign up, they're going to be able to enjoy it and get some, uh, some good results with it. So that makes me feel good that you are Enjoying it, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It's always stressful when you create something and you let your baby off into the world and 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 see how it how it's gonna do. So thank you for that. I appreciate the uh, the feedback. All right, B Gaines in the house says, "What's going on? Good afternoon, Bermuda Grass fanatics. You know what's cool is that like it's it's actually still daylight outside right now, and I'm on the live stream because when I first started doing these in um was it fall of last year? Uh, it's it was like getting dark, right? So is it's it's interesting now that it's daylight and we're you know we're like an hour in and and it's still daylight out, which is kind of. Kind of cool. I guess it's something you can say for that that terrible daylight savings time, right? So, uh, so yeah. All right. So Todd has a question about how to cut. He says, "I currently cut at 0.75. Maybe I should cut to at, at half an inch." Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe Todd. Um, I will tell you. I mean, look at my lawn. That's cut at a. Um, that's being cut at, at. You will just call it half an inch. It's really just just under half an inch. But if you like the way my lawn looks, um, that's what half an inch can look like. It looks really, really good. Um, but just realize the the more, the more, the lower your height of cut, the more mowing you're committing to. Like the way, like, and this is like an excerpt from the course. The one thing I was talking about in the course on mowing, right? Like how you choose your height of cut, like choose carefully, right? So if you're cutting at one inch, right? And we're, and we're looking at that rule of like, I'm not violating the rule of not taking off more than a third of the length of the grass at any given time. If you're maintaining a height of cut of one inch, that means the grass can grow a third of an inch or 0.33 of an inch before we cut it. And we're not violating that rule. We're not stressing the turf. Nothing bad is happening, right? Now, if you lower that to half that, to half an inch, now you're at, um, what is that? 0.16, 0.17 of an inch. 
um, that that's got to come off um, before you that before you can you're, you're taking too much off the off the lawn. So what that means is that given the same conditions, like same heat, same temperature, same soil, like the grass is going to grow like a seventeenth of an inch faster than it's going to grow a third of an inch, right? So you're going to be mowing more. So the thing the thing I'd say is 0.75 is I always say that's like that is like the sweet spot. That is a great height of cut. Um, that looks really good and doesn't require like like an obscene level of commitment. Like once you go to half an inch, really, you, once you're in the mowing season, like the growing season, like starting in like mid-April and onward, you're really talking about mowing every other day. Like every, I, I mean, if you get fortunate, um, every, you know, you can space it out to, you know, to every two days maybe. Um, but really, if you want to keep it looking nice, you're talking about every other day of mowing. And, and you know, PGR can help can help with that some, but still, you're just going to be mowing a whole lot more. But it, it does look better. I will, I will, I'll tell you that much. It definitely, like, you know, an inch looks good. You know, three quarters of an inch looks better. Half an inch looks really, really good. And it looks, I mean, my lawn looks, I really love the way it's looking, but it's, um, you're signing up for a commitment whenever you do that. So it's up to you. It's up to you. I, I think if you want to go for it, you can always try it, um, Todd. And if it's too much, just let it grow just go, let it grow back a little bit more, you know? I mean, it's worth giving a shot. But just realize you're signing up for a lot more mowing if you decide to go down to half an inch. All right. Uh, Lisa Cage says she put she mowed yesterday and put down triple 13 at three pounds. You go. Nice. Good job, uh, Lisa. That's a nice light rate. And you're mowing. That's the important thing. And uh, I'm sure you're going to get a good result. Just keep up with that mowing. You should be doing really well. All right. So David Stoltz. And I'm guessing that David is, uh, he's probably an Alabama fan looking by, looking at his thumbnail, right? No, I'm just, I'm just messing with you, David. I can I see your, uh, go dogs, right? Okay. So he says, Hey Ron, love the channel. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you for watching. He says, I have a very shady backyard. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm, 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 I can tell you right now, I can already feel I'm about to give some bad news. We're going to read on. He says, my Bermuda doesn't do well. Any other options that will work better, uh, here in North Atlanta, um, would heat resistant, cool season turf work. Um, so Bermuda is not going to do well with shade. Like if you, if you've not watched my video that I, I put out today, so if you, if you get a chance, go look at it. Um, like in that video, I do a, I just show a couple of sections of my lawn, some problem spots in my lawn where it's just getting a little bit of shade from like shrubs, not even like a tree, just a little bit of shade from shrubs. And I, I show like how much that little bit of shade makes a difference with Bermuda, like how much it, it, it and how quickly it's greening up. Um, so if you've got a really, really shaded area, um, you know, I think some of the fescues can do well. Someone asked me that question. I was starting to do some research into it. I think like the fine fescue can do all right as a cool season grass. Like it'll tolerate a little bit more shade than some of the other ones. But the, here's the thing, um, David, you're kind of trading one problem for another though, right? Because like fescue being a cool season grass, while it will do better in shade, you are like when summer heat arrives in Georgia, and let's face it, we get some heat here in Georgia, um, you're going to be putting a lot of water on it. Like there's a couple of churches around here um, that have fescue. Um, they, they put fescue in I guess it's like the way it looks. And they put um, an ungodly amount of water on their lawns. They're all, they're always they're always watering. I mean, from like when May rolls around until like into like September, like irrigation is running a ton. So you have to kind of pick your poison. Um, there's, I mean, that look into like a fine fescue. That might be might be an option. Um, Bermuda is not going to work. Like, I mean, the the thing I'm going to tell you is do whatever you can to reduce shade. So if the shade is not from your house, if it's from trees, like try maybe, you know, raising the canopy, you know, cutting the trees back. Some anything you can do to get more direct sunlight on the lawn is going to help. Even with the fine fescue, it's going to help. Um, but outside of that, I don't, I don't have any other real advice for you that like, that's the one thing you can't really cheat when it comes to getting really good grass. Like the, the sun is really literally the engine that powers, like, like powers all the growth. And if you, and you've got to get as much of that on the sun, on the, on the grass as you as you can to get a good result. So sorry, I don't have a better answer. Look into fine fescue, but just realize that you are going. To, you're trading one problem for another. That you are going to be um, uh, watering a lot. So just make sure you have like irrigation to be able to to do that. And uh, and, and let me know. Hopefully, hopefully that helps. But uh, again, sorry, I don't have a better answer for you. And go dogs. All right, uh, let's see what else we have uh, here. Uh, John D says, desert environment, uh, Palm Springs, California, it's usually 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Good grief, man. In the summer and about 40 to 45 degrees as a low in the winter. Uh, I have overseeded with rye. You got rye to grow? I'm sure rye's probably hating life right now. That's gotta be super hot uh, for rye. He says, uh, I'm starting to think I maybe shouldn't have, uh, maybe I shouldn't have if I have Arden 15. Um, I have not overseeded, I've never overseeded my lawn with rye. See, I've seen some people do it. Like I, if you look at like um, Real Rollers Turf Park, like I was out there Friday. I should take a picture of it for you guys. Uh, maybe I'll see it. I'll get out there and get a picture and, and show you what it looks like. Like rye overseeded looks really pretty. 
But I, you know, the thing I'm afraid of is like whenever I have to like get rid of it, like when I have to spray it out, like I don't, man, I, I'd be afraid of like, you know, putting herbicides on my lawn while the Bermuda's trying to also grow. And now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to maybe stunning or hurting the Bermuda. I just don't want to, I, I just, I'm afraid, I'm afraid of that. So I know people do it and they get a good result with it every year. Um, but I just have not gone that route because mainly I know it's going to mean spraying a bunch of herbicides on my, on my lawn in the spring. I just don't want to, I really don't want to do that. So that's, that's why I haven't done it, but it does. Having said that, it looks cool. It does look, it does look really cool. The color is really, really cool. Um, like right about now. So, um, so yeah. Um, let's see what other questions we have here. Uh, da, 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 da. let's see. Um, Gary's in mass. He says, is there a problem with aerating and using RGS before temps reach mid fifties? Um, I don't think so. I mean, so RGS, I think you're talking about the, uh, root, the, the, isn't that the, um, the green County product? Um, I don't think so, man. There shouldn't be, a, there shouldn't be an issue um, with either one of them. Again, I, I have, te I've tested it. I've done, I've aerated my lawn, um, prior to now, like I've done, air, I've like not last year, but the year before last year, I literally aerated my lawn at the beginning of March just to see, like I did testing and say, you know what, what, you know, everyone says not to aerate in March. What happens if you actually do it? So I did that and there was no real issue with the lawn other than I just had holes in my lawn for a lot longer than I would have had I waited till later in the season. Um, but if you're, I mean, in mass, um, I don't, you said you wait, wait till temperature the mid fifties. I mean, wait a little bit longer, man. I mean, as far as spring, the RGS, if the, if the grass is starting to grow, it's probably, it's probably fine. Um, as far as aerating, I would probably wait, um, a little bit longer because like in Georgia, like we're like, we're ahead of you guys as far as like growth, right? Cause of the, like, we're just, it's, it's warmer temperatures down here and people around here aren't aerating as yet. Like I scarified my lawn, but even I haven't aerated yet, yet this season. I probably will in a couple of weeks. So I would give it a little bit more time, Gary. Um, the RGS, I don't think you're going to hurt anything. If you just want to get out there and, you know, scratch an inch, get out in the lawn and spray something. It's not going to hurt anything, um, but aerating, I, I would probably wait a little bit longer before I did that if, if I were you. All right. Uh, yeah, cool. And Lisa's confirming. She says, yeah, I can still see Carbon Pro G pellets in my lawn. Good, Lisa. Yeah, so you are, I think you're in Georgia, So um, and you got the same rain that I got, and you still have it. So that's the same thing I saw. I just literally, I saw that it, it, it washed in, like it's really more like integrated into um, into the turf than it was before, more into the soil um, prior to that. So so yeah, at least that, that confirms it. Someone else is saying they didn't have a big problem with washout um, based on, um, based on all the heavy rain, uh, we got, uh, let's see, let's see what else, what else do we have here? Um, let's see. So Lucas has a good question here. He says, is it, hi, is there any sense to use NPK? In other words, is there any sense to fertilize your lawn when temperature lower than 50 degrees? That's a great question, Lucas. So really, um, yes or no. So if you, um, if you're, if you're dealing with a granular, if you're dealing with a granular, um, like those fertilizers are not going to work typically as well until salt, until soil temps get into the fifties or higher, because they, they're a lot of them are largely relying on microbial activity to convert, um, the, the nitrogen into a form that's available for uptake, right? So it's a long, long, long short of it is until you get in the fifties, like your granular fertilizer isn't doing as much for you, um, as it does whenever the temperature, temperatures get higher. That said, if you're spraying, like if you're doing, if you're um, going the fall year route, so if you're like spraying your fertilizer, like when I, when I started this season, I got, um, I started it out with this, with Turfplex, which is a liquid fertilizer. And I did this um, at, a, at a relatively low rate, um, right at 0.1 pounds of nitrogen. So relatively light, a very, very light um, amount of nitrogen. And because that's taken up by the leaves, it's taken up like foliarly, like that is something that the, the grass can benefit from as it's greening up, as it's beginning to green up and, and the temps aren't necessarily where they need to be for like a, for a granular fertilizer to work as well as it will say a month from now. So there is, there can be a sense to it. Yeah. Um, but you, you make a good point. Like if it's really cool, you're not going to get as, you're not going to get as good result out of it, out of granulars anyway, as you will as temps get higher. But that's, that's a good question. Great, great, uh, great observation there, sir. All right. Um, let's see. What other questions do we have here? Uh, Joshua um, has a question about um, just applying humic acid lower pH. I'm not sure about that one, um, Joshua. I've never heard of like um, humic acid having um, making a material difference on on as far as soil pH goes. I know that Carbon Pro um, G, like um, the the charged biochar in it, um, acts as a pH optimizer, meaning that it try that that product tries to pull pH to the mid sixes. So if your P, if your soil is alkaline, meaning you get like more high pH, it's going to try and pull it down. And if it's low, if more acidic, it's going to try and bring it up. It's, it's trying to, it's, it tries to achieve equilibrium in the mid sixes. And there's, if you actually go look at, um, it's not on Miramichi Green's website, but if you go to like um, uh, the, uh, like the paper, like on Lesko's site, you'll see where they, um, they, they, they show some research by the University of North Carolina 
Um, and on that one, they, they show that like how they, how applying carbon pro G made like a, a, a pretty substantial change in pH in a relatively short period of time. Now that was, a, that obviously it's a test plot, you know, a, that's a, that's in a lab, but, um, that shows that that product does have some merits as far as being able to, to move pH around humic acid in itself that I can't, I can't say for sure, sir. All right. Let's see what other uh, questions uh, we have going on here. All right, so uh, yeah, so uh, Chu Justice of AK says, email sent to you, sir. Um, I sent you some details. Uh, uh, oh, Vaca is, oh, cow. Yeah, so Vaca, Vaca, okay. So two shots of Vaca, okay. Uh, uh, Sp Vaca is Spanish for cow, LOL. I attached my name in the email, so you'll just, you'll, you can see it. Just call me Jordan. Okay, cool. Well, th thanks for letting me know. Uh, cool. And I, uh, yeah, I, I know, I know Baca, it's, it's pronounced like, like B and V pronounced, but yeah, I didn't think that I know that you were Spanish. I didn't, I didn't make that connection, but, uh, yeah, I'll look through the email once I get off the live stream and I will, uh, I'll get you an answer, sir. All right. Let's see what other questions we have here. B Gaines says, thanks for the lead on, um, let's see, get it up here. He says, thanks for the lead on, on locating the country club 22016. That will be my fertilizer of choice this summer along with the 1608. Awesome. Very cool, sir. Yeah. Um, yeah, the 2016, you can get that locally. So uh, I think I, I spoke to you either on email or chat. I remember your question. So yeah, hopefully I'm glad that you're able to find that and that it worked out, uh, that it will work out well for you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Bill Parks says, who has the best line on YouTube? I don't know, sir. You, you, I'll, I'll, I'm not touching that one. You can, uh, you can, you guys can argue and fight over that. I guess it depends on what you can turn, what you consider to be best. I mean, best cool season lawn, best warm season lawn, best Bermuda lawn, best, you know, uh, Zoysia lawn, which, what are you, what are you talking about? Um, you know, I think, I think there's a lot of really, really good lawns on YouTube. And so, yeah, I don't, I can't, I can't say that necessarily who has, uh, who has the best or, or not the best one. All right. Let's see the next question we have here. Um, but uh, Dimitri says, um, hi, Ron, I miscalculated my pounds per thousand square feet before all the rains last night. I actually put out 1.8 pounds of phosphorus per thousand square feet. When bag rate is 0.8, so you put it down at, uh, over twice rate. Uh, did I just kill my lawn? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, just don't, let's just not add any more. Let's just not do any more, uh, you know, not, no more fertilizer with it. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see. You said you did it last night. Um, we'll see, uh, Dimitri. I don't think you killed your lawn. Um, so just, uh, I just wouldn't put any more out because obviously we went, we went a little heavy on that, uh, on that, on that application. Yeah, you're, you're probably going to be okay, man. It, the, it, you know, and anything that you did to the lawn is probably going to be temporary. I mean, you said heavy rain. So based on that, I'm assuming you're in Georgia and, it, and you probably have Bermuda. So it's, it's going to, the lawn's probably going to be just fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You'll, uh, you'll, your, your, your lawn will bounce back at just fine, but just no more phosphorus. And at least you learn from it, right? I mean, you, everyone makes mistakes with that kind of thing. So don't feel bad. Just you, next time, you know, just, you know, double, triple check your math and when in doubt, go lighter, always go lighter. You can always put more fertilizer on. It's always, it's kind of hard to take it out. Uh, once, once it's already down. So uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Though. You're probably going to be fine. All right. Let's see what other questions here. Um, let's see what other questions we have. Um, so super chat from school musician. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you so much. Super chat received. You said, I appreciate all the, all that you are giving out. You've really been helpful in my understanding of lawn care and starting my own fix my only lawn journey. I'll keep you posted with the soil test results. Awesome, sir. That is, that is awesome. I really, really appreciate, I uh, really appreciate the kind words and uh, definitely look, keep you posted, man. I think we've cars, I know we've corresponded over email. So if you have any questions, uh, you know, once you get your soil test results back, um, or as you, you know, spray out the, you know, the, the issues in your lawn or deal with the things we were talking about, uh, let me know. I uh, definitely want to make sure that you, um, that you, that you're successful in what you're trying to do with your lawn. So awesome. Thank you so much for the, for the support. Oh, and one thing you remember to do skill musician is take pictures, take pictures of your lawn as it is right now. So in the, in the state that you just can't stand to look at it, take pictures now so that in a month from now, two months from now, you'll be able to see where the lawn is really gone. Because the thing is, when you're looking at it all the time, you don't really notice it. Um, but when you when you look at like the before and after pictures, that's when you really see. So make sure you take pictures pretty regularly so you can see how your lawn is progressing. Thanks so much, sir. I really appreciate the uh, the support. Um, you see South Dakota, great governor. Yeah, it's uh, Christy, is it, is it, isn't Christy Noem? Is she North Dakota or South Dakota? I think she's South Dakota. Uh, Christy Noem, yeah, I like, yeah, I like her. She's, uh, she's, she's fun. She definitely speaks her mind. Um, Let's see. Uh, Tony Hakeem says he's at work too. LOL. So you guys are, are at work and tuning in the live stream. That's pretty cool. 
Uh, Lisa asked me a question. She says, Ron, are you going to mow today or wait or wait tomorrow or wait, are you wait till Sunday? I actually mowed today, Lisa. It, dry, it dried out enough that I was able to get my mow done today. If you want to see, check uh, the YouTube stories. Like go into the YouTube app and you'll be able to see on there like some footage of me um, of me mowing and like uh, uh, how the lawn uh, turned out. So yeah, yeah, I actually mowed already and I will probably mow again on Sunday, assuming we don't get like crazy rain again. I think it's supposed to, mow, I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow and Sunday. So depending on how the weather works, I'll, uh, that'll determine whether I get to mow this weekend or not. But at least I got my mowing today. The lawn is looking good. I'm feeling better about myself. I am, I'm cleansed. I got rid of all the zebra stripes. The lawn's looking better. So I'm happy. Um, but yeah, uh, I did get my mowing today. Uh, Matthew and GA, Gainesville in the house. What's going on, Matthew? Cool, man. My neighbor, you're, you're, near, you're nearby. That's really, really cool. Super chat from Papa Lowe's Low. I appreciate it, sir. Super chat received. You said, thanks for the info on the plan. I glanced at it and thought it was updated with the new products you're using. I'll look again. Yes, take a look on Papa Moslo and if it's not what you need, send me an email and I'll get you taken care of. I'll definitely uh, do my best to help you out, sir. Um, but it should be, I think it's gonna be what you're looking for, but if it's not, let me know and I'll, I'll help you out. Um, let's see, so uh, VR saying, hey, what's going on, sir? What's up, how's it going? And then Mora has a question about rule of thumb on dethatching. He says, Ron, what's a good, a good rule of thumb as to when to dethatch your lawn? What should we look for? Um, you know, I'm probably not the best person to ask uh, more because the, here's the thing. Literally, in the six years that I've lived here, like the lawn's only been dethatched one time and you guys saw it. It was like last weekend. It's been, it's been verticut once, but I've never really dethatched it until last time. And when I did it, like six, you know, six bags of um, clippings came out. So um, I don't know. I mean, I, I'd say like now is probably okay. Once the lawn is greening up pro is, is probably a good time to do it. I, I would probably um, plan your dethatching around the same time as you do your scalping. Um, if you want to wait a little bit longer so the lawn recovers faster, you could do that too. I don't. I don't think there's really. Um, I don't think there's really a negative um, on that, Moro. I mean, it's um, you know, I, I did mine now and it worked out fine. Uh, if you wanted to wait till later in the season to do it, that would be uh, that would be perfectly fine too. I don't think there's really a negative or like a a, cer a certain rule of thumb. Kind of like with aerating, what I would say is whenever the lawn is actively growing, like if, in other words, if you want to dethatch the lawn and have it bounce back as quickly as possible, if you're in Georgia, which I think you are, wait till like you know mid April, um, mid to late April when you know we the grass is growing really aggressively to do it then, because then you know it's gonna you're gonna be able to pull the material out and you're gonna um, you know it'll, it'll come back really quickly. So yeah, hopefully hopefully that helps. All right, let's see what other questions we have. Uh, lawn to learn, it says, hashtag stripe action. Yeah, man, stripe action, yeah, baby. Gotta love it. He says, hey, Ron, what is your favorite yard work other than mowing real low? Ugh. Other than mowing, um, probably edging. Um, yeah, I like, I like, I don't mind edging the lawn like that. I don't I actually don't like edging the lawn as much, but I, I think of everything else. So like, let's think about it. Like there's mowing the lawn, there is, um, there's edging, there's trimming shrubs, which I hate doing. There's working in the beds. I also don't like doing that. Um, so it's almost like edging has to win by attrition, right? Like that, I think, I think I like using the stick edger more so than the string trimmer. So I'm going to say, uh, edging and then blowing off the lawn because also one thing too, right? It's like, once you, ed once you go through, you do a nice job mowing the lawn, it's looking really, really nice. And then you go out and you put a nice edge on it. It just it, it just sets it off, right? It's almost I always like in the video I did last year on edging. It's almost like a guy with like a a, a really good suit and he has a nice tie and it kind of sets it off or has nice shoes that go with the suit. It just kind of completes the package. Edging is that for your lawn, right? Like you can, you can make a you can mow a lawn and it can be looking really really nice. And if it's not edged, I mean it looks okay, but eh, you know it, it doesn't really doesn't have that, that domination that really crisp. Um, manicured look until you put a good edge on it. So I'm gonna say edging is probably the thing I, I enjoy doing. I don't do it every time I mow, but that would probably be the thing that follows mowing by a long shot. All right. All right, uh, Donnell Burrell says, uh, he says, hey, great day, Ron. A golf course lawn squad representing something, man. He says, do I need another soil test kit to use for the golf course lawn carbon kit or should I just go for it? Um, you don't need it. So when you're talking about soil test, you're talking about the one um, here from my soil. Um, and as far as that, you can, if you want to know where you pick that up, um, Donnell, um, here at the Golf Course Lawn Store. Um, no, not really. I mean, if you if you did a soil test this spring, um, then you should be good to go. We should we should be able to use what's in that, um, the data, the results you get back from that to be able to formulate a plan for, you know, what, what we're going to apply to your lawn. Um, if you haven't done one as yet, I'd recommend, I'd recommend getting one. I mean, get the one I like the one from my soil because the results, one, you get, they're easy to use, the results come back quickly, um, and it allows you to easily establish trend data that you can look at over time. Like I've shown you guys on my, um, on, I think on the live stream before, how like, I've got like data from like up to last year and really be able to see how different, how different nutrient levels and pH have changed over the course of the year. And it's fun, it's fun information to have for formulating a plan. So um, 
you don't need a soil test for the carbon kit, but you do. You should have one so you know what is going on with your soil, so that we can make sure we're putting the right uh, combination of fertilizers on the uh, on in your turf to, to make sure you're getting the right results. So, um, so hopefully that hopefully that helps, Donnell. If it doesn't, um, shoot me an email. We'll we'll figure it out. But uh, but yeah, and, you know, if you don't have a soil test, you haven't done one yet. Get one done. Um, earlier is better. Um, but if you've already gotten one, then we should be you should be fine. All right. Let's see what other uh, questions we have. Okay, so all you guys are chiming in. Well, I'm way behind. Uh, Bradford pear tree, that's what it is. So the one was the white leaves. I called it cherry blossoms, not cherry blossoms. It's a Bradford pear. So all, all you, uh, all the, uh, the Georgia people saying, how can you be in Georgia? You don't know what a Bradford pear is. Everyone knows what a Bradford pear is. Guys, I don't hardly have any trees in my lawn. Like, you know, so I'm, I am not the tree person. I'm not the person to ask. Every now and then I get like a question from someone on YouTube saying, hey, I, your neighbor has a really cool um, tree in their, in their lawn. Like, what kind of tree is that? I'm like, I don't know. One that's going to probably kill their grass one day. Mm hmm. You know, I'm not, I don't know trees that well. So something I got to work on. So I, I should know at least the ones, the trees that are native to Georgia. All right. Uh, let's see what other questions we have here. Uh, Lance Lawrence says, St. Augustine is not crabgrass. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's a, that is an, an Alan Hainism. That is definitely uh, something he always says. All right. Uh, let's say, let's see what other questions we have. Um, Kevin D. Jones says, Ron, thanks for your soul test advice over the winter. My yard, my yard is dark green already. We'll dominate thy neighbor. I am very happy to hear that, Kevin. I'm glad that, um, one, that you get a soul test. That's really, that's the important thing. And that, the, um, you know, once I gave you the some suggestions, you did those and that you're getting a good result from it. Because so it's, it's really not that hard, guys. Like, I mean, you know, a lot of people would like, you to, would like to have you think that soul testing is like this really um, crazy voodoo science and that, you know, you have to be an expert to be able to understand it and make, make sense of it. And the, the, the reason why I like um, the my soul test kits is because it's easy. Like, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, you, you get the results back. It's really easy to interpret. Um, in most cases, you don't have to email me or anybody. You can just like look at the data, all the charts really easy to go through. And then based on that, you can determine what you're going to apply to your soil. And I think a lot of times they, I'm going to offer suggestions of saying, yeah, use this product at this rate and you're, uh, and you're good to go. So I like, I like easy and, um, something that allows me to get, create data that I can track for long periods of time. So, uh, so yeah, I'm glad that you're getting a good result, Kevin. I am happy to, uh, to hear that. Uh, let's see what else. And let me know if I can help with anything else, sir. Let's see. So Winchester in the house, he says, in the house, I just my second mode today at one and a quarter inches with a Honda, not using the outlet just yet. Okay. Mm. I take some lemonade. I felt like I was about to cough there. So I want to take some lemonade, trying to cough on the mic on you guys. Um, that's cool. That's cool. I'm um, Winchard. If you still got some time, you know, you know, use the, uh, the Honda to get the, the how to cut down because with the, with the outlet, you're going to want to go lower than that more than likely. So yeah, use the Honda at an inch and a quarter. No reason to, uh, to not to break up the outlet just yet to be cutting at high heights of cut, right? Or relatively high heights of cut for a real mower. I should say that like one and a quarter inch is not really high, but for a real mower, that is high. All right. Um, let's see what other questions, uh, we have here. Let's see what other questions we got. Da, 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 da. Um, this is, uh, it's, uh, Timothy Wolf says, do you have a solar light of choice to light up trees? Uh, no, I don't, uh, Timothy, because I don't really have, um, that many trees in my lawn. So I don't put a whole lot into that. Any thought into that? Um, I could do some research for you then find out. Um, I, I can, yeah, I can, I can do some research and, and see, and see, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that one. I know, well, actually one of my neighbors, actually, uh, a, a buddy of mine, Brett just bought some solar lights, uh, for his outdoors that he really likes. So I'll ask him what's if I see him tomorrow at karate, I'll ask him, um, what he use and I'll, uh, I'll let you know. I, I don't think, I'm not sure I have your email, Timothy. I'll look and see if I do have it. I'll email you. But if not, send me an email here. Just say, Hey, the lights guy, the lights question, Ron at golfforcelon.com. And I will, uh, I'll reply with, um, what he told me he ended up using. All right. Let's see the other questions we have. Da, 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 da. Uh, Brent, uh, says, Brent T says, uh, he says, Ron, I have a slope like your front yard and I keep having a moss issue. I can't seem to correct any tips or ideas. Interesting, Brett. So a couple of things I, I would do. Um, if you've not done a soil test as yet, get one done. So um, get the one I'm going to suggest you get is this one, the one from my soil. Um, because if your soil, if your pH is low, meaning your soil is, is acidic, that is um, the, the, that's the type of soil that, that moss tends to like. Um, you can get, and you can get that here at the golf course lawn store. Um, other things to look into are if the area is heavily shaded or if there are issues with drainage. So like if, if waters, if you have parts of the lawn where water's not running off and it's like, it's allowing, it's allowing to pool there. Um, and it's also a shaded area. Like those, all, like those things can all contribute to moss. Um, but soil pH can also be a big contributor to it. So I would, you know, if, if you're telling me that, um, nope, Ron check and no, no shaded areas and, um, no, there's no tr issue with drainage. I would then say let's um, let's take a look at your soil pH and take a and and figure out what's going on there to see if there's anything we need to do to uh, to correct that. 
Um, but yeah, yeah, because I mean, I could tell you that you go out and get like um, Moss X or some other some other product to kill it, but it's probably just going to come back, right? Like you want to figure out why it's happening and correct that so that it's not like you're not always applying, um, you know, you're always applying, uh, you know, herbicides and those kinds of things to your lawn. So hope, hopefully that helps. I'm sorry I don't have a better answer for you, but we can get to the bottom of it. All right, let's see what other questions do we have here. Uh, da, 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 da. Jordan Narlock says, can you put down too much biospectrum um, on a single dose? Will it hurt the lawn? Um, that's a good question. I, I don't believe so. Um, here's the thing, the pills, I'm not sure if you have the carbon kit, Jordan, like the pills in here that the um, that that have the biospectrum in them, like these guys, like one of these is set to, to treat up to like uh, 5,000 square feet to, 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 to put enough microbials in for that. Um, you can you can go a lot heavier than that. Because remember, these, these pills were originally designed um, by Miramichi Green for, they were targeting tree farms. So if, um, if a place where they wanted to increase microbial activity um, without having to spray it, they would take one of these pills and literally just, just, just throw them at the bottoms of the bases of some of the trees they're trying to grow. And as they got wet and broke down and it went into the soil, you just increase the microbial activity. So literally, um, in some cases, these things were being dropped in like, you know, a space this big, you know, and, and, and there's not really any negative to it. So probably the only negative is that you just, you would just end up wasting it. There's not, there's, there's only so much that you really need. Um, like this big bag back here, if I can reach it, this bag of biospectrum, yeah, this guy, um, this is 17 ounces and this should treat five acres. So well over 200,000 square feet is what this, um, this will treat. So there's, there's no negative to putting it down heavy other than your, I hate to say you're wasting it, but there's just but there's like a point of diminishing returns, right? There's just not any reason to really to really do it. So, if you have the soil test kit, if you sorry, if you have the carbon kit, and your lawn is less than five thousand square feet, because the way we do it is, um, each one of these pills, like this is the vial that comes in the, in the test kit. I'm sorry, in the carbon kit. Um, if you have less than five thousand square feet, Jordan, just simply mix the contents of one of the one pill and just apply that to whatever the size of your lawn is. Okay, so yeah, you're not gonna not gonna hurt anything. Not there's not gonna be any damage, no issues there whatsoever. So. Uh, uh, don't worry about it. Go ahead and just mix it up and go to town. So uh, hopefully, hopefully that helps. Something I probably should have mentioned in the video that I fi when I filmed. I thought about that, you know, like two days after I published. I said ah, I probably should have mentioned this, but it was already getting kind of long, and I don't like to make videos any longer than they need to be. So, uh, but I, uh, but yeah, I probably should put a note in the description of that video saying, yeah, there's no issue if you put it, go put it down a little bit heavier. Uh, but great question. So I'm sure other, pe other people have asked me that. So it's, it's a great question that you, you brought up, Jordan. Thanks for asking it. All right, uh, let's see. John R says, "Hey Ron, I'm curious. Before going R15, do you ever think of going to uh, Blue Muda for green up for earlier green ups um, over a Bermuda cultivar? No, not really. Um, I just I like I mean I like the the, the, the performance I'm getting out of R15. Like before R15, I was using Princess 77, and that one worked well. Like that cultivar worked well. It, it definitely greened up sooner and went dormant later than Tifway 419. But R15 is another level. It's definitely a, it's better. Like whatever, whatever, like the, the you know, the scientists or whatever, whatever you call the people that engineer seeds uh, were doing, like they, they, uh, they hit a home run on R15. It's a really, really, I'm very, very impressed with it. Um, you know, especially like I'm impressed with the germination I got last year, given the fact that I also put pre-emergent down on my lawn in the spring and I still got really good germination with it, right? Um, so this year I'm hoping that, you know, this should be the last one I have to overseed because I haven't put any pre-emergent down. I should get, you know, I'm gonna do a really good prep job and I should get a really good result um, with it. So I, I didn't consider Blue Muta. Um, and now that I've got RN15, I don't really see a real reason to to do it. I mean, it's just, you know, it's a it, it performs really, really well. Great color, um, great cold weather performance. And it's not, you know, it's just one grass type to deal with. So cool. Great question. Great question. Now, let's see. Super chat from Cheryl here. I got to take care of that. Super chat received. Just uh, thank from Cheryl. So thanks for imparting your knowledge upon us. I appreciate it. Cheryl, thank you for listening. You know, thanks for, for hanging out in the live stream. And I'm glad that you are, um, your lawn's starting to do better. And it's only going to get only better this, this season, you know, because you're paying attention to it. I'm sure it's going to do uh, just well. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the generosity and uh, the ongoing support. All right. So a question here from Drone Madness. Something about a swordman. He says, Hello, I have a Swordman Electra 55. I have that same issue with the ladder cutting effect. Are you saying that's because it's not heavy enough um, uh, to keep it so it doesn't bounce? Um, so it, it, I mean, it could be, I'd, ha I'd have to see it. If you can, Drone Madness or the other person that was saying, I forget your name now, but if you can, send me a picture of it. Let me see what you're talking about because I definitely know what like this laddering or the bouncing thing you're talking about looks like when I, um, when I uh, was cutting with a push reel mower 
And it also happens with, it happens with my power drill mowers too. Like when my, when my true cut is dull, like after scalping, um, it does the same thing. Like if I, um, it, it just, it creates some, um, the best way to describe it is like, you'll have like a cut section along and then like a little high spot and then a cut section along a little high spot. It'll cut you. So, and it's in a really tight space and it tends to happen whenever the, the, the reel um, is getting dull. Um, so if you are certain, if you're certain that your swordman is sharp, right? Cause that's the thing I'd say. I mean, the only time I've ever experienced that with a powered reel mower is when the reel is needs to be freshened up. So it shouldn't be happening. It shouldn't be happening if your reel is sharp. Mm. And I'm able to not get it to happen even with a manual push reel mower if I'm if I'm if I'm careful about the speed that I'm moving when I'm mowing when I'm, I'm mowing because the swordman is definitely a I mean in the Electra it's way heavier than a than a push reel mower. It's probably I don't know it's quite as heavy as like a as a true cut but it's still gonna be pretty heavy. So I, I, I'm gonna say if you're getting an issue with cutting, like cut cut quality, I would uh, I would check to see, make sure your mower's cutting paper. Like, you know, get a piece of paper, you know, whatever, a piece of um, printer paper, fold it in half and, and check, you move across the bed knife and see if it's cutting paper. If it's not doing that, uh, it's probably time to freshen it up, you know, and that that should help fix the issue. It's not, I, I doubt with a power reel mower that it's a weight issue as much it is, as it is a um, uh, the tool being sharp enough, if that makes sense. So hopefully that helps, great question. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, let's see. So, uh, Joshua Chasen says, uh, my soil pH came back, uh, 4.9. Wow. In Florida. I just added a couple bags of Jonathan Green's magic cow to help raise it last month. Do you think humic acid will have any negative effects in raising my soil pH? Do you have any lime products you prefer over others? My calcium was low along with my magnesium. Great question. Okay. So Jonathan, in your case, right? So low pH, um, calcium is low and magnesium is also low. That is a, per that is like, like the stars have aligned for you, sir. Literally what you need to be using is dolomitic lime. So if you have a site one near you or like, uh, I don't know, any, any places that sells dolomitic lime, I know I would say site one because that's just close to me and I, and I always go in there and I, you know, they're, they're, they're closer for me that I can get pretty much anything I need there. So if you got a site one nearby, go in there and get you, get some, some dolomitic lime. I would apply it at, um, I mean, four nine, that's really low, man. Um, you know, we don't want to go too crazy, but let's apply it like 20 pounds per thousand, which is on the bag that the site one tells it's going to be called a pro pro prills, <laughs> hard to say pro prills is going to, it's going to be a blue bag with a golfer on the front of it. Um, uh, and that is our dolomitic line that, that will address, um, calcium and low magnesium. Um, so apply that like 20 pounds per thousand. You can go a little heavier if you want. Um, and that's going to help bring your, that, that'll help bring your pH up. Again, changing pH, um, Joshua is a long-term thing. It's not like you can apply this and then like, you know, next week you're going to see a huge jump in pH, but, um, you're going to be one of these people that, you know, you're probably going to put some down now and, you know, maybe throughout the year you might do it again. You might do it again, maybe midsummer and then in the fall again, if you want, you know, you, but it's, it's going to be a process to bring it up. But based on what you're telling me, uh, dolomitic lime, there's two calcitic and there's dolomitic. You want the D one dolomitic lime. Um, that's the one that you're going to want to use for you, for your soil, um, to really help bring things up in addition to what you've already put down with those, um, the magic cow products. Again, um, you're going to want to go pretty heavy, at least 20 pounds, uh, per thousand square feet. And you, you typically can pick that up at site one for under 10 bucks a bag. So it's not terribly expensive. Um, so you can, you can go heavy on it. So, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps, sir. And if you, and if you want, if you want, um, like so, me to dig into a little bit more, send me an email here, uh, Ron at golf course lawn with your soil test results. And I'll look, take a look at them and we can figure out, figure it out. But just basically what you're telling me, uh, dolomitic lime is going to be the, uh, the answer for what, for what you got going on. All right. Um, Charles Place said, I drank the Kool-Aid and bought some Carbon Pro G. Question about watering it in and also on liquid fertilizer on the same day. Thanks. Okay. So um, you don't have to water it in, um, Charles. It's I, I, I typically don't. I, I typically will just put it down whenever there's rain in the forecast um, and there's not rain. I just put it down if it's a time for me to do it and just wait for it to rain. Um, so yeah, so you don't necessarily have to water it in, um, putting it down, putting liquid fertilizer on the same day. No problem with that at all. So if it were me, what I'd probably do is I would do the probably the Carbon Pro G first, and then I would follow up with your liquid fertilizer application. Um, the two are not linked, right? Like, like Carbon Pro G is not a fertilizer. So you can literally apply it, you know, again, if your budget uh, allowed for it, you know, as much as you want, you can apply it, you know, you know, every month, every couple of weeks, if you wanted to, um, no issue there. Uh, and then, and liquid fertilizer, I would do that afterwards only because you're concerned about watering it. And you figure you're going to be putting a little bit of water on the lawn when you're putting the liquid fertilizer down, right? So it's gonna, it's, it's, it'll help. It's not gonna hurt anything. Either way will not work, but the, um, yeah, there's not gonna be, 
um, and any problem with that. And, and you don't necessarily have to go out of your way to water Carbon Pro G in unless you really, really want to. I would just wait for it to rain personally. That's, that, that is what I do. But, uh, but great question. All right. Uh, Josh Rigdon says he got his soil test results in mid-February. Good job, sir. Very good job. Um, and then Lincoln Project says, hey, is slit, is slit seeding better than aeration? I would think so, um, Lincoln. So here's the thing. I've never slit seeded. Like what you guys are seeing with my seeding um, or the results I've gotten with seeding my lawn with RN15 has just been just aerating. All I've ever done is just aerated my lawn and like, like you know, opened up, opened the, the, the soil up and then just put down, you know, put the seed down with a sand and I mix it with a little bit of play sand just to thicken it up. I may or may not do that this year because you don't really have to do that. Um, and I've gotten a decent result, but slit seeding is probably better because you are, um, you're, you're cutting a, sl a light, a mild channel and you're literally dropping the seed in right below it. So as far as the consistency goes, slit seeding, you're probably going to get a better result is what I would imagine. I've just, I've never done it. So I can't say how much better it would be, but I imagine that slit seeding is, is definitely better than aeration because it's, it's a process that's actually designed for seeding, you know, whatever you're having to be planning. So I think it'd be better. So if you have access to one, uh, you know, go ahead and do that, you know, definitely. All right, um, da, 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 da. and then um, so Josh said he had his soil testers in, in February, and he says how much NPK will go down by if I've not applied anything. Okay, so Josh, if you don't mind, um, send me the send me your results if you've gotten them back already. Send, email them here, Ron at golfcourselawn.com. If you email me tonight, I will answer your question tonight because you asked in the live stream, so I'll I'll, uh, I'll make time and I'll I'll get that done for you. Um, because without actually seeing it, I can't, I can't really answer the question. I mean, I could just say, mm, Malorganite or something. I could throw something out there, but I want to give you like an actual proper answer to your question. So, um, send me the results if you don't mind and I'll look through it and I will get you, uh, an answer. All right. So Andrew Chase is chiming in. He says, people want, if you want a, a low cut lawn that they don't want to mow so much, look into zoysia. My specific zoysia is a Z3 zoysia. I'm at five eighths and I only need to mow once per week with proper feeding and irrigation. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So it, it, you are right, Andrew. Zoysia is a slower um, mowing grass, uh, slower mowing, <laughs> a slower growing grass. It is, that is it. Uh, the one thing I've seen, and I'm trying to remember which one of the plots it is, because um, um, uh, Real Rollers has two. They have the Zeon, no, they have the El Toro. They have, the, yeah, it's the Zeon. They have the El Toro, they have the Zeon, and they have the, the Tiff Tough. The Zeon gets really, really thick. So I think the one thing with, with Zoysia is that you can get, um, like as far as like getting thatch, like that's that can become more of a thing with Zoysia. Um, because at least on Real Rollers Turf Park, it is like their, their Zeon is really, really thick. Like they're going to have to do something with that. I think it's a verticut it or dethatch or do something with it because it's 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 like super dense, super, super, super thick, um, which is going to affect how the kind of the quality of cut they get out of it, right? Uh, but that's cool, yeah. But I know that's definitely a thing, um, Andrew, as far as zoysia being slower growing. Um, you know, fun story. A, a buddy of mine has like a zoysia lawn and he let us come play volleyball on it one time and literally it took over a year to recover. I don't think it's, it still hasn't probably fully, fully recovered from it. So zoysia is really good if you don't want to mow a whole lot and you want a really nice shortcut, um, uh, warm season grass. Um, but it is, um, you know, as far as like being a grass you can beat on and like, you know, play football on and do a lot of things on it, you want to be a little more careful with it. All right, guys. Well, if you guys are enjoying the live stream, I'll take another sip of my lemonade so I don't cough in the, in the microphone. If you guys would not mind hitting the like button ever so gently, it's free for you guys and sends good vibes to the YouTube algorithm, lets us know we're having a great time and costs you absolutely nothing. And I'd really appreciate it while I'm taking a sip of my lemonade. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. All right. Next question here. Uh, Will has a question about scalping. He says, if I can get through all this, he says, hey, Ron. Hey, Will. I scalped last week at half an inch. All right, I like it. I, I planned on cutting at three quarters of an inch this season, but I cut today at five eighths an inch and like that height. Is scalping at half inch enough to, for a five eighths inch season cut? Yeah, it's slow enough, man. I mean, you're, you're below it. You're below it. I mean, you could have went down to you could have went down to just to just half an inch or to five eighths and just done that. So yeah, you're as long as you get below the height of cut that you want to maintain, you're good to go. So uh, it's funny, huh? you, get, you got it down to half an inch, you're like, you know, this five eighths is looking kind of nice. I don't know if I want to go all the way up to three quarters. I'm gonna, I might just leave it here. So uh, yeah, I get it, Will. So uh, I, you know, that, that's the thing with, with going low. Once you go lower and the grass looks really tight, it's, it's tough to, uh, to let it go taller, but just realize, you know, you're, you're biting off a lot. You're biting off more mowing, you know, at for three, for a five eighths than you are 0.75. You wouldn't think so, but it is quite, it's actually, you know, on average, one more mow per week just for that little height of cut change to keep it nice and green between mowings. But I agree with you, sir. It does look really good. It does look really good. All right. So Lisa K says, uh, I have a rotary, so I can't mow under one uh, three-eighths 
and three eighths. No, no worries, Lisa. I mean, here's here's the thing. Even mowing at one and three eighths. I mean, if you're the big thing is just mowing frequency. So even if you're going with a rotary, if you are cutting, you know, a few times a week, the lawn is still going to look good. It's still going to look good. You know, I mean, you don't have to have a real mower to have a nice looking lawn. Like, I mean, it's it's it, I, and I know that. I know it may seem that way when you hear you hear me talk and you hear other people talk. I mean, a real mower is yes the best tool for cutting a warm season grass. But you know the biggest thing, the biggest problem that I see with most lawns is not that the mower that's being used on them. It's that they're just not cut often enough. Now you know if you're, once you're cutting you know twice a week, uh, maybe even three times a week if you really get into it, um, and you say you know I really want it to look a lot better. I want to go a little lower. That's when a real mower becomes a thing. But even at, at one and three eighths, you know you're almost at um, you know almost one and a half inches. Even on Bermuda, if you are cutting regularly and you know several times per week at that height, it's still going to look good. Like when you run into problems with Bermuda is when you get these people that um, only want to cut the grass, cut their lawns like once every two weeks, um, that's when you're going to have problems with Bermuda. It's just never going to look good doing that. I mean, a general rule is if um, if you are cutting your grass when it looks like it needs to be mowed, you waited too long. That's 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 a pretty good guidance to go by, whether you're using a rotary or a real mower. Like if, you, if, if it looks, if you go out and look at your lawn, you're like, man, it looks like it really needs to be cut, probably waited too long. You know, so if you're, if you're really trying to get that, that, that crisp golf course lawn look and you're trying to keep it green between mowings, uh, just just m pick up your mowing frequency. That's the that's the biggest thing. Regardless of what kind of mower you're using, just cut cut your grass more, and that will make the biggest difference. All right. Uh, let's see what other questions we have here. Daryl says, Ron, I was watching your video on leveling your slope. Did you ever broom in the sand, sir? I I did. So yeah. So I um I did a combination of things. So um the on my slope video, I was showing how to use the leveling rig that the one I used from um I think it's R it's R and R products. I really like that rig because it's it's heavy. Um, so it, it just does a natural, a nice job just grading without really having to, you know, scrub the sand in is what I was trying to show in that video. Um, and then afterwards, once I, after the, the, the sand settled and, um, when I would water, I would go out there with a broom and just lightly brush it to, to, to work it in. But really, if you have one of those leveling rakes, you could just use that. You don't really necessarily have to use a broom if you've got a leveling rake because the broom actually, the, the leveling rake behaves in, in much the same way. And in some ways it's better, right? Because... With a broom, if you have a, se a section where you put like quite a bit of sand down, a broom is more prone to moving that sand, like, you know, kind of displacing it and maybe creating a high spot. Whereas the leveling rake, whenever you put it down, literally, it's like you're like you're literally planing the lawn each time when you go over it with that rake. So if, if it were me, I would primarily just use the uh, the leveling rake. Like, like, like on my lawn, even when I get like those grass clippings, the zebra stripes, I go out there with a leveling rake and it does a better job than the broom does because it literally just disperses it makes it nice and even. And the same thing is true when you're, um, when you're top, doing top dressing. So if you're considering it, I mean, they, they are expensive, but you'll buy it once, buy once, cry once. It's a great product and um, they do a good job. Like I, I do not regret having it at all. So hopefully uh, that helps, helps with your question. All right, so uh, Vera has a question here. She says, um, Vera, hi Ron, I just started watching your channel. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support. This is love your content. Thanks again. This is I'm in upstate New York, a cool season grass. I want to do a soil test, but only will be able to get the probe down into the soil about four inches. That, that should be enough, um, Vera. So I'm not sure which soil test you're using. Um, the one I like is this one, again, the one from my soil. If you don't have one as yet, you can pick it up here on the Golf Course Lawn Store. Also on there are these guys, which is a highly over-engineered, but really, really cool tool for getting uh, soil, uh, soil cores, right? So with this, this guy, I don't know how long that is. That's probably... That's probably what six inches, five, uh, seven inches of core core space. So with this, something like this, you're going to be able to put it in the soil and twist and really get it down um, into your into your uh, your soil into your turf, and you should be able to get a core a little bit deeper um, than four inches using one of these. I mean, it's a really nice tool. I say it's, it's highly over engineered for what it is, but it's it does its job really well and works really well. You can also get this here at the golf course lawn store. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, pull a bunch of cores using something like this and then send your results in and you should, should be all right. Um, yeah, I mean, four inches, four inches is actually, uh, is probably actually okay, uh, to be honest, um, Vera, but yeah, just using the right tool to get a bunch of different samples from different parts of the lawn is key. And this makes it a lot easier. Like you don't, you literally won't ruin your lawn. You won't like get out there with a shovel and dig up your lawn and make a big, like, you know, small hole in your lawn trying to get a soil sample versus this. It's, you don't even notice, you can't even see the area that you pull the core from using one of these. And again, you can, you can get it. Um, at the golf course lawn store. So great, great question. And good job on good job on getting a soil test done. I can't tell you, like it's like having that information is gonna be really useful to you, like making better decisions as far as what kind of products you're gonna apply to your lawn. So uh, good job on that. And if you need any help, I'm not sure which one you got or if you've gotten one as yet, 
Um, and if you eat, if you got if you got a, a my soul one or didn't get one, doesn't matter where you got one, where you got your soul test from. If you need help with interpreting it, um, just send me an email here, Ron at golfcourselon.com. Send me an email with your soul test results. Make sure you take a picture of the entire thing. Um, and I'll do my best to help you out um, to come up with a plan of action. So uh, yeah, no no worries there at all. So but yeah, good job on getting a soul test done. I lo love to hear people doing that in the spring. So you're gonna, you know, they're making uh, making better choices as far as the kind of products they're applying uh, to their lawn. All righty. All right, um, let's see. So uh, B. Gaines says, I received my bags of Ardenus, so Arden 15 uh, this week. Looking forward to putting it down right after a top dressing in four weeks. Awesome, yeah, man. Mm. Mm -hmm. and that'll be about the right time. You figure, well, let's see, what are we? Yeah, I mean, we'll call this the beginning of, beginning of April. So you're talking about like early, late April, early May. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're in Georgia or, you know, the Southeast where we're, the temps by that time are going to probably be stabilized, you're probably going to be good to go. Yeah, late, late April, early May is going to be fine. And you get it done while you're top dressing. Very cool, sir. I mean, definitely. Here's the thing. Take pictures of your lawn. Take pictures of your lawn before you top dress it and before you, the Arden 15 goes in and then take pictures, you know, as it develops. So like you should probably, you want to have a, a by, if you top dress the end of next month, um, the launch should be recovered by eh, June-ish, June, mid-June for sure. Um, and, and make sure you have pictures of before and, the before and after because you can't really go back and see what it looked like before, right? So make sure you take pictures of the whole process so you can see how it does. Um, and then um, Vera asked, do I need to get the probe down at least six inches? No, Vera, not really. I mean, um, four to six inches is good. I mean, if, if you're down like an inch, that I'd say that's probably not enough. But, you know, you know anything below three, four inches is, is probably going to be just fine. If, you, if you're getting four inches... Um, with, a, with whatever your, your method is, that's probably going to be fine. But if you want an easy way to do it, again, one of these bad boys um, is the way to go. And again, there, there's, a, there's a package on the golf course lawn store that has the soil test kit and the probe. And that way you can save yourself a little bit of money um, if you're just you're just starting out. So hopefully that helps. All right. So you know the questions we got here. Uh, Jeffrey or G Free. I think it's Jeffrey. It's a cool way of selling it. Jeffrey 301, very cumulative. I like the, very informative. I like the QA. I appreciate you watching, sir. That that's the whole the whole purpose, right? I mean, I figure that I'm really not that interesting, but you know, people, you know, nothing is more interesting to people than the problems that they are facing. So I figure why not, you know, put together a live stream and help people out as much as I can. You know, I don't always have all the answers, but I definitely um, you know, I made enough mistakes to be able to to be at least point you in the right direction a lot of times, right? So I'm glad you're watching, sir. Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, I appreciate the support. All right, let's see what other questions we got going on here. So Saul45 is, is stepping it up, man. He says, next week in my project is three yards of river sand mix and two yards of potting soil. I'm leveling my lawn and adding some nutrients. I put down Carbon Pro-G last weekend, so I'm hoping for the best. All right, well, it sounds like a good plan, uh, Saul. Um, are, are, it's interesting. Are you, you said you're getting uh, three yards of river sand and two yards of potting soil. Are you mixing it yourself like on site or are they coming already mixed? Um, hopefully coming already mixed because that's that's going to be a workout like mixing up uh, mixing all that up on you know together there but I mean either way it'd, it'd be a fun project sounds very cool sir sounds like you're going to have a really good uh, a good uh, good good project you're sure your lawn's going to look a lot better for it all right so let's see what else we have here um, Super TA says wrong with 138k subs you should know what, okay so with 13,800 subs I should know what state you're from well I should know who you where you're from because you just super TA right I should know I should know where super TA is from because because of who you are because I'm in, I'm a Jersey guy with some low cut uh, blue bank KBG the outlet is going to be a game changer changer I agree sure I mean um, with some low cut um, Kentucky bluegrass it's going to look really good it's going to look really good as is, is it 138 I already crossed okay well cool well, I guess you're keeping up with me better than I am sweet that's good uh, better than going down right so. All right, uh, let's see what other questions do we uh, have here. Sean Sand says, hey, Ron, let me know when you want to bring by the stand-up writing aerator. I know you're shooting for mid-April. I'll leave my number in your email. Yeah, dude, send me an email. Um, I think you already have it. It's been on the stream a bunch of times right here. Ron at golfcourselawn.com. If you don't mind, man. And now here's the thing, though. If you do my lawn, Sean, um, if we take you up on this, you also got to do Alex's lawn, too. You know, because I mean, his lawn is not that big. And, you know. Yeah, if, if my lawn gets it, Alex's lawn got to get it too. We got to make sure, you know, we're kind of, we're linked that way. We got to make sure that the lawns are the same thing, you know, because I don't want, because I don't get hate in the comments. I'll be like, well, your lawn looks a lot better because you had the the special stand up, the aerator that Sean brought over and hit and Alex didn't get that. So that's why his lawn doesn't look as good. So I want to make sure it's the same thing on both lawns. So, uh, so cool. Yeah, man, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'll, I'll look in, in my email for that. And I, I really appreciate the offer, sir. I really, uh, that's, that's really cool. All right, uh, other questions we have here. Trin Dave says, he says, I'm plan planning RN15. What height of cut should I use for the first growing season? I cut it at the same height as I've always maintained it, Trin Dave. I didn't really um, cut much higher <clears throat> when I did RN15. 
you know, it's not like I um I started cutting it like two inches or you know something crazy like that when I put when I went with RN15. Literally, I maintained the same height of cut. So last season, for much of last season, it was three quarters of an inch. Um, and that's just what I did. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really let it get long. I mean, my lawn, my, like that R15 that's in my lawn has never been over an inch at all at any point. It's actually, yeah, it's never been over an inch because it's been three quarters of an inch, like all of last year. And it's never, never been over an inch ever. So, um, so yeah, and it's, and it's, it's done, done fairly well. So as far as the height of cut you can maintain for the first season, it depends, right? So, um, like I, I, again, I would match it. I would try and match it to what you're doing on the rest of the lawn. Um, if you're real mowing, you can, like I always say, like an, an inch, a three quarters of an inch is a good, safe height. That's a good height to, to go for where real mowing is not going to ruin your lawn, uh, Trin Dave. So I'd say three quarters of an inch is a good height to cut. If you're using a real mower, if you're not using a real mower, a rotary, uh, inch and a half is, uh, is, is just fine too. So, uh, so yeah, whatever you're cutting your current grass at, cut the yard in 15 at the same height because it, it can tolerate being cut really low and no, with no, no issues. I mean, mine's being cut at just under half an inch and it still looks great. So you're not going to hurt it. All right, let's see what the question we got here. Jared Richardson, question about lawn leveling. He says, what is the best time to level your lawn? Excellent question, Gerard. So you could level, um, you can if you really want to like next month. I mean, I know like there's there's some places around here that are gonna be doing leveling work um, in late April. Um, typically when I've done mine, it's been in um, May and June, the months of May and June, largely because the grass just grows back faster, just recovers faster. So if you do it a little bit early and there's not enough heat and the grass isn't growing aggressively, you're not gonna hurt anything. It's just gonna take longer for it to, to come back. So you're gonna be looking at like a, a beach for a lot longer than you would had you waited um, a little bit longer, you know? But that could be a cool experiment. Maybe this year I'll do it earlier. Maybe, you know, I keep telling you guys like mid-May, maybe we'll do it like the first week of May. You know, late April will be the first week of May. We'll see. It, it, it depends on what the soil temps are and the, the are around that time. Because I really want to make sure that it's where they're warm enough that I'm going to get good germination with the Arden 15. But honestly, by first week of May, probably be all right. Um, but to answer your question, uh, uh, Ger Gerard or, or Jared, um, whenever the grass is actively growing, there's people that, that are, so people out there like, like you, uh, what is his name? I think Dave or one of those guys are saying they're leveling their lawn this weekend. So, I mean, is it going to hurt anything? Probably not. It's just going to take a lot longer to grow in than it had you waited later in the season. So, um, so yeah, um, for someone just the first time doing it, I would say May, June, that's a good, that's a good, um, time period to, to go with it because, um, it's, it's hot enough that the grass is going to recover quickly. Um, and, but it's also early enough in the season that you're still going to get some of those spring rains, spring showers. So you're not gonna have to run irrigation quite as much. Um, so it's just, it's a good, nice, happy balance. Uh, I think the May, June timeframe is what I would go with. Okay. Great question. Uh, let's see. So Kevin D Jones is great. Uh, good question about, uh, TGR says, hi Ron, what was your recommendation to keep t from bronzing? Yeah. So what I would do is Mix a little bit of liquid fertilizer with it, a little bit of nitrogen um, um, along with your T-neck. So what I was using, what I, what I did last year is I used um, a, a light application of Brandt Supreme Green. So not even anywhere near rate. So Brandt Supreme Green went down at like, uh, had a rate of like three to six ounces per thousand. Um, and I went like, at, I put like two ounces per thousand when I was doing PGR just to, just to kind of take the edge off of that, that yellowing that you get with... Um, with T-Nex. So this year, what I'll be doing is the same thing with this. I'll probably be using, I'll be using the Turfplex. And with this, I'll be applying it at, so the rate for this, the low rate on the bottle is six ounces per thousand. I'll probably be putting it, mixing it at like three ounces per thousand whenever I do T-Nex, unless the T-Nex application also corresponds to my spoon feeding, which I probably will just make it do that. So that I don't have to like go out there twice. Um, in that case, it'll just go down with like my carbon products, like the Miramichi Green Release Zero and Nutra, Nutra uh, Kelp and everything else. So um, adding a little bit of a uh, little bit of nitrogen with a little bit of iron, like those two, that combination um, seems to help. And there's a video on that that I did last year. I don't have it handy, Kevin, but if you look, um, if you look, uh, if you do like Ron Henry on YouTube, Ron Henry T Nex, one of the videos that come up will 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 literally be on that topic on. Um, pre on preventing some of the yellowing that you get with t -necks. So, uh, so yeah. And the thing you're going to find is really, it, it tends to be the worst I find the first time you do it. So my first application of the season is when I tend to get the yellowing the most. And then really the subsequent ones, it doesn't happen as much. Because the lawn, with my case, my lawn has never really come out of regulation once I start with t until like September. Like literally I'll start in like April, for, I'm sorry, May 1st. And it'll get PGR the first of every month up until September being the last time that it gets it, right? Um, and it it doesn't, you know, as long as you add a little bit of a uh, little bit of, you know, again, you could use the Turflex if you want or whatever your liquid fertilizer choice is. Um, you could you could use one of those, and um, that will help 
that will help take the edge off of the, the bronzing. But it's really temporary. Really, people make a bigger deal out of it than it really, they really should because the first time you mow it, it's gonna go away too. So it's not, it's really not that big of a deal. It's, re it's really like a, a three day problem if we're really, you know, we're really talk thinking about it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it too much. Um, but yeah, try that. Try adding some Turfplex along with um, your PGI app, uh, light, and uh, see how that works out for you. It should help. All right here, let's see, uh, let's see. Um, John D says, surprisingly, the yard stays super green watering once every three days in the 120 degree summer heat and once every five days for rye in the winter. That's very cool, John. You must, you must have, I mean, your, your grass must really be driving uh, deep roots for that, to, for that to be the case. That's really, really cool that you're, um, you know, that, that you're, it's doing pretty well. Again, I guess it depends also how long, how heavy you're watering, right? You didn't say how heavy. You said once every three days um, in 120 degrees, which is still super hot. Um, but you can say how much, how long you're running for, but still, I mean, it's still, it's impressive that you're still getting your lawn to stay green, um, in those types of conditions, you know? So good job. Very, 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 very good job. All right. Let's see here. Um, Brandon Burrell has a question. He says, what products would you recommend to spoon feed common Bermuda to help fill in areas, liquid or granular? Thank you. Okay. So, um, the, the best way to help your Bermuda, like let's, here's the thing, Brandon, assuming that your soil is in good shape, right? Let's say there's no, no, there's nothing crazy going on with it and there's no shade issues. There's no problems with shade. Um, you know, the big thing that's going to help your Bermuda to, to fill in is picking up your mowing frequency. So if you start cutting it more, like you start stimulating growth, um, especially at lower heights, instead of the, with the grass growing up, it's going to say, okay, this, this crazy person keeps cutting me off all the time. I still need to catch sunlight. So I'm going to start growing like laterally, you know, across the ground and it's going to thicken up that way. As far as um, products that I would recommend, like I, I'm a big fan of Lebanon turf uh, fertilizer. I'm not sure if it's Lebanon or Lebanon. I, some people are trying to tell me there's two ways of pronouncing it. Um, so the, the fertilizer that I like is the one that I saw in the golf course lawn store. It's called Humic Max. So um, if you could look at, look at my channel, I've been using Lebanon turf fertilizers for years and it's only here now recently that it's, it's finally happened. The stars have aligned that, you know, they're now available for the DIY community. So if you go to... Um, the golf course lawn store right here, golf course lawn store. Actually, I can do this for you. I can show you. And then you scroll down. Um, this is the fertilizer I'm talking about. The Country Club uh, 1608. This is the fertilizer that I use for spoon feeding. It's 35% um, uh, uh, slow release, but so most of it is going to be released over the course of a month. So this is the fertilizer that I that I use monthly, and I apply this at three pounds per thousand. So relatively light. It's only like half a pound of nitrogen. And to supplement that, um, for the liquid product, what I use is this, is Turfplex, which is a 20, 20, uh, 22, 0, 22.3. Um, and this guy, I apply, again, light rate, I apply this at um, 0.10, so a tenth of a pound of nitrogen per thousand. So what that really means is that you're gonna apply this at um, six ounces per thousand, the lowest rate for um, this product. And between those two products, it's a really good program for, um, for maintaining nice, consistent color without pushing too much growth. So the long, the, so the recipe is this: you get the you get the, the humic max. You're going to apply that once per month at three pounds per thousand square feet. There's no reason to go heavier than that. Don't go heavier. Like three pounds per thousand is all you need. It's plenty of nitrogen. And then you um, every two weeks you're going to spray Turfplex um, at the lowest rate as well. So six ounces per thousand, which um, equates to like 0 0.10, a tenth of a pound of nitrogen. Um, um, so you're gonna do that, that, that you're gonna do one application of the Turfplex, like literally the same time you do the, um, the granular. And then two weeks later, the middle of the month, you're gonna do a second application of only the liquid, only the liquid fertilizer at the same rate. And that's gonna give you a nice, that's gonna give you plenty of nitrogen. The lawn's gonna grow in really nice. You're gonna maintain a nice, decent, nice color and nice growth without pushing a lot of surge growth, you know? That's, that's the formula that I used last year in the lawn. I was using a different liquid fertilizer, but that is what I've used to, um, to, to maintain really nice, consistent colors. If you want to see my lawn, go look at some videos from last year over the summer. And if you like how that looked, um, that is how I did it. So, you know, you want the secrets? That's that's it. You know, granular once per month at a low rate and then supplement with liquid once, uh, twice a month and then just mow, mow, mow and mow some more. So once you're doing that, the only, the only thing that's left at that point, uh, Brandon, is to mow. Like mowing, I can't stress enough, like, you know, we're giving it, we're giving it all the nitrogen, we're giving it all the nutrients it needs. It's got plenty of the, of the go juice. All you need now is just to mow it a lot. And that's going to, that's going to be the, the final part of the recipe to get that Bermuda to thicken up and, and grow in really nicely. And you're going to get a really good result with it. So uh, hopefully, hopefully that helps. Great question. All right, so Jurassic E or Go Free says, uh, hey Ron, thanks for the advice on the soil test results. You're very welcome, sir. I remember, yeah, I remember your email. 
Um, I will hit up site one on Monday to stock up. Very cool. And when you go there, tell them that, you know, that one, tell them, hey, Ron sent me here. Again, not that I get anything for it, but just, you know, let us know that, hey, the DIY community is sending a lot to love their way. And uh, they should, you know, they should take us more seriously. That we that we are we are important too. I know we're not we may not be professionals. We may not be you know the professional contractors, but we love our lawns. We like good products on our lawns, and that they should you know that we're important too. So definitely do that. I'm glad I'm glad that the that the, the help was useful, sir. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Princess Cut Lawn Care. What's up going on, George? He says, up, Ron? Just wanted to stop by and say hi. Busy filming right now. See you soon. I salute you, sir. I, I know the grind. I know the grind, man. I, I know you got that new camera and the footage is looking good, man. You're doing, you're doing a good job with grading it and stuff. So uh, get to it. Don't, don't, uh, don't. Uh, I appreciate you taking some time away from Final Cut or filming or doing whatever you're doing right now to, uh, to stop and say, hey, so I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And if I can help with anything, let me know. Uh, very cool. So let's see. What else do we have here? And then John D says, yeah, I use two pounds of granular nitrogen a month to fill in common, but prepare to mow. Yeah, mow, mow, and more. more. That, that's the thing, guys. Like if I could bottle mowing, if I could bottle up mowing and, and, and sell that, I'd be a very, very wealthy man. Because literally the thing, that, that's the thing that you, that you have to do a lot of to get a good looking lawn. It just, it, and I try to like convey that in the video this morning that I, I released to you guys that it's, it really like mowing matters a lot. Like you think, let's think, think about it, right? The question that um, that Brandon just asked, right, about spoon feeding. So really, he's gonna be out applying a granular to his lawn once per month. He's gonna be out spraying his lawn with a liquid fertilizer twice per month. So that's two events where you're applying some kind of supplements to the soil to help improve the quality of your grass, right? Mowing is something really, at a minimum, you need to be doing twice a week if you're really serious about getting your grass to look good. So like mowing is really the secret sauce once you've got all this done. Like if you guys want to know, like why my lawn looks the way it does is that even when it was dormant or when it was, when, it, when, when like one little blade of grass turned green, I was like, oh, it's green, time to get the mower out. And I was out, you know, I literally started mowing it even though it was still, you know, relatively, most of it was still relatively dormant. So mowing is, is I can't stress enough how big a deal that is to getting really, really good looking grass. Like that's, that is like the most, like once you got good soil, good sunlight, uh, it's time to just lay those stripes, man. Stripe action, get out there and mow, mow, and mow some more. When you think you mowed enough, mow one more time. And then in your grass, your lawn will thank you for it. So uh, awesome. All right, let's see. Lisa K says, I have, I need my bare spots to fill in also. That might be needed for a golf course, for a course on the golf course. Uh, sure, yeah, so yes, that's something I'm, I'm I am gonna, um, there's gonna be a, a module on that, Lisa. Uh, the thing is, it's going to be a relatively short lesson because it's really going to be just mow a lot. <laughs> you know, the big thing, especially if you're dealing with Bermuda, because Bermuda, like when I, when I write questions for people about Bermuda and they say, you know, I have Bermuda and I want to put down like C to try and get it to fill in thin areas. Really, man, Bermuda is like, as far as a grass type that is super aggressive, like Bermuda and St. Augustine, those are two that are pretty, pretty aggressive. Bermuda, I'd probably say is probably a little bit more aggressive than St. Aug, at least when you mow it at the right heights. Um, the big thing is as long as the, um, as long as you're you're mowing regularly enough and the soil is decent, it's going to grow. It's going to fill in. Um, the other cases I've seen is if you if you've got like some really compacted soil, like you've like you know your soil is kind of hard because in Georgia we got this clay soil that can be kind of hard. If you can get out there and do a good aerate, like that's kind of break up that compaction, that can also help a lot. That can help speed up the lawn filling in. Um, but really, then even with doing all that stuff, it comes down to mowing. Mowing is going to be the thing that's going to stimulate that lateral growth. So in other words, instead, instead of the lawn growing up it's gonna to have to start growing across the ground and that's what's gonna get you to, to, to fill in, if that makes sense, Lisa. Um, but yeah, great uh, great point, great comment. All right, let's see here. Uh, Wind Chariot says, the only the only green lawns in my neighborhood is my Bermuda and my neighbor's uh, uh, turf type tall fescue. I always have trouble saying that word. I don't know why it is. Um, uh, across the street with healthy soil, Carmen Pro G, there you go. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Papa Moslo says, Ron has the, best, has the best lawn. I appreciate it, sir. I, I'm glad you think so. I'm sure there's other people to disagree, but I mean, I like my lawn. I think it looks nice. Um, you know, I, you know, it's not really conversation. I just, just want to, I, I like, I like the process of, of doing it all. That's the big thing for me. So very, very cool. Uh, let's see what other questions we have here. So Kevin has a question about turf type tall fescue. He says, I overseeded with um, turf type tall fescue last August, just sprouted by late September, freeze up. So if I apply prodiamine, um, at 55 degrees this spring, am I stunning that possible new fescue? Um, yeah, I, 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 I might not do that. I might not do that, Kevin. Um, with Bermuda, you could probably get away with it, but um, 
Bermuda is kind of a crazy grass. It's, imp it's practically impossible to really do any permanent damage to it. I mean, if you decide you're going to use prodiamine, uh, go at a really light rate. Like don't, um, I think the rate for, I, th I forget the rate off the top of my head. I think it's like 0.55 is like max rate for cool season. So you're going to want to go look, look, figure out what, like what a lot of the cool season guys use as a low rate for prodiamine. And you might consider that, but if it were me, I would probably not even do it. I would probably, at best, I'd wait till fall to and just do like a fall pre-emergent and just deal with, um, do just deal with weeds. Like I just just cut your grass a lot, and, and hopefully that's going to be enough to keep weeds down. Um, I if it were me with a, with a cool season lawn, I probably wouldn't um, put pre-emergent on it um, since it just it's only just now starting to sprout. It's, it's not even a year yet. Uh, if it were me, you know. So your your call if you're going to do it, go go with a light rate. Um, but I would probably just wait till the fall to do it if it, if you know you want my personal opinion. All right, uh, this is interesting. So two shots of Vaca says I'm real mowing currently watching this. Uh, that's a first. I've never heard that one before, but uh, I appreciate it, sir. You know, real mowing while you're watching the live stream. I'm not sure how you pulling that off. I guess you have uh, uh, I don't know whatever. You probably got like, straight to the uh, ta tape to the bar or something. But uh, cool. I'm I'm glad that you're uh, you're watching it, man. It's pretty cool. Funny. That's nice. Uh, yeah, Papa Moe's list is a uh, nice AZ lawn is, is nice too. Yeah, his lawn is really sweet too. His lawn is, is really good. He's, he's like one of the best thumbnails ever. I think his is the one where he's got like the hat on and he's like laying out on the lawn. It's real, it's one of the coolest, uh, uh, thumbnails on, uh, for like a YouTuber. I like, I really like his, he has a really cool looking lawn. You're right. All right. Uh, let's see questions here. It says, uh, do you know of any success stories of pulling a Bermuda runners rhizomes to fill in bare spots? pull a healthy rhizome and just plug it in a bare spot. Yeah, that, that definitely can work, uh, Daniel. Um, if you can, I wouldn't just pull like like individual ones. I would pull like plugs. So get like a, um, how can I describe it? Like those those plugging tools or like the circular plugging tools, almost like what they what they use on golf courses to cut the holes in greens, like, a plug, like an actual tool for get, extracting plugs. I would do something like that and use that and transport it to the areas um, where you're trying to fill in bare spots. But again, um, you're going to want to, you want to pick up the mowing really once, once you do that, um, and you start cutting it, the Bermuda is going to grow and aggressively fill in, assuming you're getting enough sunlight and the soil is decent. So assuming that, you know, you've done your soil test and you're, you're putting enough fertilizer down and you're doing the right things to, to improve the soil. Um, you know, mowing should be, should be all you need along with, you know, the idea you have about putting some runners in is, is a good idea as well. So that should work. That should work out well. I think, you know, who's doing that. I think if you look at, um, What's his name? The guy in Australia, Lawn Tips. I forget. I don't know his name, but he's the Australian guy. He's like the Australian lawn care YouTuber. There's not that many of them. Um, and his 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 um his I don't know his his avatar his um his handle is like a red. I think it's red. And it says Lawn Tips on. I think that's I think that's him. He recently did that where he took some plugs and uh, with Bermuda. I, I believe it was Bermuda. He calls it Cooch, but he calls it Bermuda. Um, and he did that to transplant, to fill in some bare spots in his lawn. And it was working really well when I was watching one of his videos. So yeah, there's, it definitely can work. Um, if you want to see how that, how that can work out, go check out his video. I've not personally done that, but I know of someone that's done it and it, and they've gotten a really good result, but just make sure you mow as you do it. All right. All right. So what we got, we got going on here. Travis Winston says, I second that golf course lawn academy is very informative. I appreciate it, sir. I'm glad that you are finding some value. The course is going to get even better. Once I, um, you know, put um, finish up some of the other modules that I've got coming, like the one on top dressing, that's going to be a fun one. Looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that even with what's in the course, you're getting a lot of value in it. And the nice thing is you're never going to pay a dime more as, um, as I add more to it. So uh, good job. Very cool. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. And if, I, if there's anything I can do to improve it, uh, definitely let me know. Send me an email. You got my email. Uh, send me feedback and I'll do whatever I can to improve uh, the course. All right. Um, Let's see. Eric Garcia says, um, Auburn, Georgia here, getting estimates on irrigation, then I'll, then on to leveling. Scary, but exciting. Cool. Yeah, Eric. Um, you're in Auburn. Where's Auburn? Auburn. Where's Auburn, Georgia? I, I mean, I've heard of Auburn. I think, isn't that, um, isn't near Marietta? Maybe, maybe I'm not, maybe not. Maybe it's some, 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 something place else. Um, but if you, if you want, check the guys that did Alex's lawn. Um, their name is Rainwater, Rainwater Irrigation. So go to like, uh, I don't know, probably go to YouTube, Ron Henry Irrigation, like search for that. And the video that should come up should be one of the videos in the Fix My Ugly Lawn series where Alex had that done. I know Mike, those guys that did it, did a really good job. Um, Alex's lawn looks great and it was re very reasonably priced. So, I mean, I know you're getting estimates, but definitely give those guys um, a call and they can, they'll can they probably help you out. Um, I mean, they they did really good work and the, from my understanding from Alex, the pricing wasn't... Um, wasn't terribly, wasn't terribly bad. Like some, some irrigation, you can get some, some quotes are like, you know, seven grand for irrigation for like a, you know, 7,000 square foot lawn, depending on, you know, what you're dealing with as far as number of zones and all this kind of stuff. Um, and their pricing was, was quite a bit, quite a bit more competitive than that. So, uh, give them, give them a shot, but it's a good thing. I, I would definitely 
uh, get irrigation done prior to leveling your lawn. You don't. It's gonna it's gonna pain your heart to go through through all the trouble of ir- of leveling your lawn, and then you have to mess it up by trenching it. Uh, you know, so I, I would, um, I would definitely, you're doing it in the, in the right order for sure. So, and you, and as you're watching that series, one thing I was telling you guys as well, um, if you're interested in seeing like the blueprint of how to transform a lawn, like the, the Fix My Ugly Lawn series, that, um, that series that we did last year on Alex's, uh, lawn, it's like a 15 part series. It's free. You know, there's no, you know, if you don't want to sign up for the Academy, like go watch that. Um, and it shows you everything that we did to, to transform like a, a an average lawn to like a really, really cool lawn, really amazing lawn in this course, in this, over the course of three and a half months, thereabouts, right? So uh, check that out. It's a, it was a fun project. I'm really glad with how it worked out. And we didn't pull any punches. Literally every week we filmed what was happening. So you saw everything that was happening on the lawn. There's no, there's no way to fake it. Uh, so let's see. What other questions do we, uh, do we have here? Um, uh, so John is some, doing some, some math on, uh, on, uh, f- on fertilizer from Lowe's and 29.0. Let's see. All right. Um, Lisa Cage is saying, yep, I love the Golf Horse Academy. I even love the community help there. That's, that's one of the best parts about it. I mean, the course material is really good. Like I'm trying to make that as, as valuable as possible, but the community we're building, like that private, you, that private uh, Facebook group where we can help each other out and share pictures and talk about things. And I do a lot of the behind the scenes stuff where I'm all, it's only, that only goes in there that you guys get to see. Um, yeah, there's a lot of value in that. Again, the course is really good, but also the community that, that we're building, I think is also uh, great as well. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. I like where things are going. And uh, thank you so much, Lisa, for signing up. I really appreciate it. All right. Let's see what other questions we have here. Uh, uh, S. Bender, Cheryl saying, uh, thanks a lot to learn. I have lowered my head of cut. Fingers crossed. All you guys are going lower, man. It's it's creating monsters. <laughs> Louis Castile says, uh, here's a question about granular fertilizer. He says, when is, is it safe to put down granular fertilizer in Georgia? Great question. Uh, Lewis, um, even now you can start. Um, so here's the thing that it's, it's the type of fertilizer you want to start out with, like the product that, um, it's a good product to start with. I mean, again, my, my answer to you, the most correct answer is this, get a soil test done and then apply the fertilizer that based on what the deficiencies are in your soil test data, that's going to be the most correct answer. Like go to, like go to golf Western store, get the, my soil test kit, test your soil, Based on what's on what's on what's deficient in your soil, um, you know, apply that to your lawn. If you don't want to do that, and you're saying, "Hey, I just want to just you know throw it down to call Alan, just quote Alan, throw it down and hope for the best." Um, that product that I don't sell it on my store, but Yard Mastery has it. It's the um, oh god, it's a stress blend. It's a it's a seven zero zero twenty. I don't know. I, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's like it's an orange bag. Like of the Yard Mastery fertilizers, I know it's the orange bag. So if you want something like that, go try that out because that's got like. Um, it's got a lot of potassium in it, which is a, which is a nice a nice way to wake up the lawn in the spring. Apply it at the specified rate. Do not go heavier. Like the three pounds per thousand that Alan tends to use on a lot of his fertilizers is a great rate. Um, go with that. Um, alternatively, if you want something that's more balanced, like if you do actually do a soil test and you want something that's a more balanced product, you can go with something that looks like this. This is the Golf Course Lawn Store. This is also a Yard Mastery product. This is their triple 12. So this is a balanced product. So equal amounts of, of nitrogen, uh, phosphorus and potassium. And it's also got 3% um, iron in it. So you're going to get a little bit of green up. And the nice thing about this fertilizer, the reason why I carry it, why I really like this one is that it contains a complete um, micronutrient stack. So in addition to having NPK, um, Lewis, it has like uh, all the micronutrients as well. So it's, it's a very nice all in one product, which is why I am a, I'm a big fan of it and why I also carry it on the store. But um, if you are really serious, you really want to make sure you're doing things the most correct way, get a soil test done and um, and let's apply what buy apply products based on that. You know, but if you want something that's gonna be safe, even like that starter fertilizer, the one I just showed you on the golf course lawn store, the um the triple twelve at the recommended rate, three pounds per thousand is gonna be just fine. Now now is a good time to do it. Once your lawn is um greening up, you're starting to see any kind of green in your lawn. Uh, that's when you can go with, um, you can start putting in a, a granular if you'd like. Again, these are, these are all slow release fertilizers. So they're really not going to start working until soil temps get into the fifties, which we're about, we're there now in Georgia. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helps answer your question. But then once you put the fertilizer down, just mow, mow a lot. Um, and that's going to, uh, that's that, that's going to do a lot to help, um, help your grass really green up. So, um, for really good. Yeah. And then, and Lisa, she did something similar. So she didn't put down the triple 12, but she put down a triple 13 and she's in Lithonia and she's already put it down. So, so there you go. People in Georgia are already, are already doing it. All right. Um, I appreciate that helmet. Thank you so much. He says, let's not hit, forget to hit that like button. Definitely. Let's do that guys. Let me see. There's 106 people in the live stream right now and we're at 86. So guys, just here's the thing. Just move the mouse over really gently while I'm trying to not cough on the live stream here. I'll take a sip of lemonade and just touch the like button. If you're just joining the, the live stream and you're enjoying it, 
uh, do so. It's, it's, I really appreciate it. It's free for you guys to do. It's an easy way to support the channel. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Uh, Super TA is also saying, yeah, the washboard effect can also happen if you're, um, if you're, if you're cutting enough when real mowing should be taking off very little. That's true. So if you are, it's a good point. So if you're, if you're not trying to take a lawn from like you know, really high height of cut down to low, to low all in one and all in one sitting, um, the mower, the reel can bog and create, you know, can create that waterboarding, that laddering, that effect. So it always, it really comes down to, again, the, um, with a powered reel mower, I've only seen that happen when the mower is dull. And it typically happens when I'm scalping, kind of like what Super TA is saying. I'm taking off a lot of material all at once. Um, and that's, that what's then, you know, it's someone else chiming in with an answer as far as what can cause that. But the big thing is, as long as it's sharp, as long as your mower is sharp, you should be able to get away with it. It should, it should do well. All right. Uh, let's see what other, uh, questions we have here. Um, so, uh, so J JSDS Max, um, says, Hey Ron, I have a crane fly infestation in my lawn can cause is um, Hey Ron, I have a crane fly infestation in my lawn can cause issues with your lawn or your flowery branch. I wonder if, I think that, um, I want to say that a Celeprin will treat that. I, I think so. Let me look here really quick. A Celeprin G label. Get in here, see if I can do this really, really, really quickly. Um, yeah, it sure can. So, um, J JDSD Max, if I'm, so let me see if I can bring this over here and do this uh, live. So, so um, a Celeprin, like if you look at the video that I did Wednesday on a Celeprin, one of the things, one of the uh, the products or one of the pests that it treats is the European crane fly. So it is it is labeled uh, it is labeled for that. So uh, so yeah, I mean that's that's one option. So it's if you if you're looking to um, to knock that out or, or try and prevent those, suppress those, um, you can go with a Celeprin. It is not an inexpensive product, but it's a very very good one. Um, and if you're looking to get that, you can pick it up right here. I'll link it here and I'll put it in the chat for you. Let me see. It is at JSDS Max. And there you go. So that so that one is labeled for that. There probably are other products, but that's the one that I, when I was doing research for that video, I remember seeing that when I was reading through the label. So um, there's probably other products, but that's one that I know, um, you know, it's made by Syngenta. It's really, it's going to be good stuff. It's not going to be cheap, but it's going to be good. So uh, that's what I would probably go with if it were me. All right, and uh, yeah, you're not far branch. You're not too far away, man. Very, very cool. All right, so let's see what other questions we have here. Um, let's see. Ryan ba Byer said, uh, "Hey, Ron, I leveled my my lawn. Uh, I sand leveled my yard last summer. Any idea why my yard is completely greened up where I went heavy with the sand? Other areas are completely dormant. Probably has to do with heat, uh, Ryan. So, so sand holds on to heat." Um, better than like just topsoil does. So, you know, if you, if the areas that you put a lot of heavy sand in, I'm not surprised that those areas of your lawn are, um, are, are greening up a little sooner. So that's, that's probably, if I had to guess, that's probably what it is. It's the, it's the ability that, that, that sand will hold on to heat better than, than topsoil is probably what you're seeing. Um, that, that, uh, that green result, that green flush in the areas where you did that. Um, so what that tells us is that this year you got to put sand over the entire lawn. So it all greens up all together next time, right? That's, that's gotta be the, uh, that's gotta be the plan. All right. All right. So, uh, Josh, a beep here with a super chat. I appreciate it. Super chat received. It's happy Friday, bud. Great show as always. Uh, who you got tomorrow night, Francis or Stevie? You know, I don't know, dude. I don't, as far as I'm, I haven't even watched the cards on UFC to see if it's going to be a really good one. The, the last one I was really excited about was Israel and I, I was kind of bummed that he lost. It was a good fight, but eh. It was kind of a, kind of disappointing. UFC has been it's been good, but like some of the cards now like have not have not lived up to the to the hype a lot of times. But uh, we'll see, we'll see what how it, how it works out. All right, thank you, thanks again, sir. I really appreciate the generosity as always. I really appreciate that. All right, let's see what other questions uh, we have here. Reg says, "Hey Ron, missed you all winter. A new season is upon us. Yes, sir, it's cool." And you see, it is here. You know, it's funny. Like a lot of people that were that were chiming in on, like in the YouTube comments uh, when I would put a video down. Like a lot of them kind of disappeared. Like once it's funny with YouTube. You guys are we, we sh shocked about this, but people care about lawn care. Like our um, our time of our, our like go time is like now between now and like like late. August, September, like when September hits, like traffic starts to really fall off as far as people caring about their lawns. It's like, yeah, it's summertime. I'm gonna get my lawn looking really nice. Oh, so, you know, it's September. Forget the lawn until next spring. So, you know, and, and the interest in that kind of content tends to go away. And, but I'm seeing like the, some of the names that I saw last spring coming back. So Ari, I'm glad that you're doing well, that you are, uh, you're back here for another great season. Hopefully the content doesn't disappoint. And if you have any ideas, definitely let me know. I'll do my best to, uh, to help out as always. So I appreciate, appreciate the support. 
All right, so Moro uh, is saying, talking about Jerry Pate, he says, um, hey Ron, Joey from Jerry Pate suggested that we could drill a pattern of screws on the drum of the greens mower for traction up slopes. Any thoughts on that? I've never, I've not heard that. I'll have to reach out to Joey and ask him like what that would, um, what that would be about. Um, so drill a pattern of screws on the drum. Uh, I don't know if I would. I, I mean, I'll have to ask him. I mean, Joey's, Joey's a really smart guy. I mean, they, Toros are what they work on for a living. So, so it's probably, it's probably good advice based on something that he's done before in the past. Um, I've just never heard that. So I'll have to, that's a good question, uh, Moro. I'll have to um, reach out to him. Oh, you know what? Oh, I think I, I know what you're talking about. He's, I think what he's talking about is not, I'm thinking about like drilling or attaching it with the screw spike sticking out. What he's probably talking about is drilling, like, like splitting, like running a bunch of screws into where the screw head is sticking up. So it's like almost like knobby tires. I think that's what he's talking about. Um, that, that's interesting. I've never heard of that. I, I, uh, I'll have to reach out to him and ask him like, you know, what he, what he'd recommend or like what screws he'd recommend for it. Um, but it, it makes sense. It, uh, it makes sense. I mean, I, um, I don't have too much trouble with my Greensmaster, believe it or not. When the slope, when the grass is a little bit wet, so when the when the set, when the soil is a little bit damp, it gets better traction than when it's completely dry. When it's dry, it slides around a little bit more. But when it's a little bit damp, like today when I cut on the front lawn, it was a dream. It was gorgeous. When it, it you know it bit in really nicely and just mowed it up the lawn with no problem whatsoever. So um, I'll just reach out to Joey and ask him um, what he's suggesting. I think I understand it, but I'll I'll have to ask him. Um, what his recommendation his recommendation is, which screws and all this kind of stuff. It's kind of a cool idea. That's a, I hadn't thought about that. All right, thanks for, uh, for sharing that, sir. All right, let's see. Um, uh, Elliot Anders says, hey, Ron, good info on the Dolomitic Lime. I plan to hit up site one near bright and early tomorrow and pick some up. Awesome, sir. I'm glad to uh, to hear that. Definitely let them know that um, I sent you and that you know it's because of someone on YouTube that you heard about uh, site one and that that's why you're there picking up your Dolomitic Lime from them. So very, very cool. Very nice, sir. I'm glad that it was uh, uh, very useful. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, and then says, uh, the Mitchell says the, the area you live looks very familiar. I used to live on James Creek in Forsyth, had a house at the top of the hill looking over for miles. Sure. It was a nice view. Uh, at the Mitchell, very, very cool. So let's see here. Uh, so Lisa is chiming in. She says, I plan to cut three times a week. She's committing to three times a week of mowing with a self-propelled rotary. That's a good job. Lisa. So you're going to get a good result. I have a manual Scott's real mower, but never use it. That's the thing, man. The, now here's the thing, Lisa, I will say this, all right? If you can cut three times a week with the rotary, right, and you can you can commit to that, and it's going well, you're not you're not hating life because you're always out there mowing, and your budget permits for it, and your budget permits, eventually moving into a real mower is going to be a game changer. Like you're gonna you're gonna love the way your lawn looks mowing it three times a week with a rotary, but when you step into a real mower, even like a like a true cut, you can get those pre-owned for again they're still kind of expensive, still like six hundred fifty dollars to a thousand depending on you know um, the condition. But it's going to be a game changer as far as how your lawn looks. But it, I, I would say let's do three times a week with the rotary. Make sure we can do that. Commit to that, and if all goes well, then you can see. Because it is, it, I will tell you, like the real the, the Scotts real mower is a lot of work. It is not as much fun as a self propelled mower. And believe it or not, I used to cut my entire lawn with a Scotts um, push mower. It's kind of insane to say that, but I I used to do. There's video of me doing it. So uh, if you guys want to want to want to fact check me, I actually used to do that. So um, but I, I get that it would not be fun once you've had a self propelled mower. Uh, so yeah, but, um, you know, just keep, keep doing it. You're going to, I think you'll be, I think you'll be, um, pleasantly surprised at the results you'll get from mowing three times a week, even with just a rotary on your lawn. So, uh, good stuff. All right. So the next question we have here is Casey Baker. He says, I scout my lawn at one inch. Is it a total no, no to also cut all season at one inch as well? Or should I, um, I think you're trying to say bump, bump it up to the next notch on the mower. No, it's not, it's no, it's no, no, no. Um, Casey. So the big thing is at, at, at a one inch, uh, one inch, I can't speak. At a one inch height of cut, um, if you're mowing uh, twice a week, you should be able to get away with that. You may have to go to three times a week, but if you're mowing twice a week at one inch um, with your um, with your rotary, I'm thinking you should be fine with that. So the, the big thing when it comes to height of cut, choosing your height of cut is the lower you go, the more you have to mow. Let's just put it on a t-shirt. The lower you go, the more you have to mow, right? Um, the more frequently you have to mow. So at one inch, you're looking at it at twice a week, minimum twice a week to keep it looking nice. Um, but you know, what you did is if you scalped it to one inch, if you want to maintain that one inch, there's no problem with doing that whatsoever. But just, you just got to keep it with your mowing to keep the lawn nice and green between mowings, uh, Casey. But no, you're not, you're not hurting anything at all. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got here. T-Winning says, I just purchased my first T-Nex application. When should I apply it? Um, or he's purchased T-Nex. When should you do his first application? Um, I can tell you when I'm going to do mine. Uh, my, my, the first time I apply PGR is in May. So uh, the beginning of May is when PG, I start PGR on my lawn and I do that throughout the entire season at the beginning of every month. Um, uh, so yeah, so that's that's what I'm going to be doing in Georgia. And I'm not sure where you are, T-Winnings, but um, 
that's a system that's worked well for me. So if your climate is kind of like mine, um, and in May your, your lawn is green up and it's starting to grow aggressively, that that could work well for you. You could wait a little bit later. There's some people that, don't, that wait till like June to start doing it, um, but it's not going to really hurt anything. Going in May, like the thing is, what you want is the lawn to be fully green and growing well. And then I'm start, starting to introduce PGR. Will um, it'll make the lawn it'll help the lawn become even more dense, and it will slightly reduce your your mowing requirements. So very very cool. All right. Let's see what other questions we have here. Um, so Kiran Smith has a question. He says, hey, Ron, it's Q. Uh, good to see you, sir. I put down pre-emergent um, two, uh, two weeks ago and spot treated one week ago. I'm still, I am uh, still seeing new POA. What do I do? Start uh, adding positives or, or stay focused on the weeds and add um, positives? I'm not sure what you mean by positives. I, here's the thing, um, Kiran, you, you're putting down plenty you put down pre-emergent two weeks ago. Um, pre-emergent is not going to do anything for the POA you're seeing now. The POA you're seeing now started germinating like months ago. Like, you know, POA is a cool season weed. So um, the pre-emergent you're applying now is not going to do a whole lot for POA. Um, and I would just honestly pull it because as temperatures get warmer now, get hotter now, like the POA is going to start hating life, start hating life soon. If you really want to add, um, do something to spray it, you can, you can go with image. Um, I have a video on that. Like you go teach, if you go like a Ron Henry uh, POA, just like a Ron Henry Poanya in YouTube, it'll pull up a video on um, using image to treat POA. Um, that's something you can do. So if you really want to spray something on it to, to, to knock it back, you could use um, image. But honestly, we're, we're getting into the point now where once you start getting heat, the POA is going gonna, is gonna to be stressed and the Bermuda should dart, start doing better. But if it were me, especially if it's not a lot of it, I would just pull it. Just, you know, I just get there and just, just pull it and get rid of it. I wouldn't, I mean, I, I, but then again, that's me. I mean, I, I've, I would encourage you to try and limit um, how much herbicides you put on your lawn. Like pre-emergent is good um, and you can get a great looking lawn just using pre-emergent and mowing a lot. And maybe a little spot spraying here and there, but you shouldn't be having to rely on that um, all the time, uh, uh, Querons. I would, I, would, um, I would just pull them, honestly. And if it's, if it's bad enough that you actually need to spray, um, image is what I would use. So hope uh, hope that helps. Um, let's see. Dimitri says, I must say that Tiff Tough is better than Arden 15. Fighting words, sir. Fighting words. Who, how dare you? Uh, no, I, I mean, Tiff Tough is a good looking Bermuda. I mean, all Bermuda looks pretty. Um, I don't know. I mean, I like the look of Arden 15, but I mean, I could I could see if you like Tiff Tough. I, you know, I'm not going to argue with you. It's still Bermuda, right? It's still Bermuda. I can't, can, uh, I can't, I can't argue with that too much. That's more of a matter of opinion than which is better, right? Um, let's see what questions we have here. Um, Tamara Kimiko says, I want to create a flower bread. Um, not my specialty, but I'll try and help. He says, uh, what should I use in order to keep grass and weeds out? Oh, so I don't, I don't, here's the thing. I don't really, um, I don't have a flower bed, Tamara, but what I can tell you what I did is, and it's, it's worked fairly well, is you're going to want some kind of a physical barrier. So, um, especially if Bermuda, because Bermuda is, will grow, it will spread above ground and also underground. So uh, I'll have to, next time I, sh I shoot a video, I actually show it. But I, what I did is um, between the mulch bed, because I don't really have a flower bed, it's like a mulch bed now, and the grass, there are these, um, they're, I think they're like six inch, six inch by six inch pavers. And they are like probably that deep, right? They're like that thick. So they're probably four or five inches um, deep. Um, so a, a trench was cut and then those were all set in there. And what that does is it creates a barrier that makes it more difficult for the Bermuda to eat, to, for, to, 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 for the rhizomes to, to spread under the ground and get into your bed. So you're going to want to use some kind of a physical barrier. If you don't have one already, that's going to be your best bet. And it needs, I'm assuming you have Bermuda. I'm only answering questions if I have, it's a Bermuda grass, right? Um, and the barrier needs to go down below the surface of the ground. It can't be like just laying on top of the ground because Bermuda will just spread right under it and grow in your, in your, uh, your flower beds. You're going to want to, um, have something that goes down a few inches, I'd say four to five inches, maybe even deeper if you can do that, like a good physical barrier, that's going to help you a lot. And then what you can do is um, anywhere where it starts to encroach on that barrier because the, the grass is still going to try and grow over it, that's a place where you can do like very, very light spot spraying of like Roundup. That's that's the only place, that's the only time you'll ever hear Ron Henry tell you guys to use Roundup on growing grass. Like if you have a hardscape, that's a, that's a, that's a point of demarcation between your flower bed and your lawn, like when it gets on the hardscape, you can put a little bit of Roundup on that just to just to kill those or knock them back, or you can you can cut it, but it's going to keep growing. I mean, Bermuda's going to always try and get over that. But um, ho hopefully that helps, Tamara. Um, a, a physical barrier is what you're going to want to use to be able to to help with that. So um, hopefully uh, hopefully that helps. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. Um, Brian Vahan says, "Hey Ron, love your channel. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it so much. Appreciate you watching. Appreciate the support." He says, "You may have covered it already, but what would you say is the best real mower for a newbie?" Mowing in an area about 12,000 square feet, thanks. Okay. Um, well, 12,000 square feet is about what my lawn is. So it depends. So it depends on um, 
Uh, depends on your budget, what you're trying to achieve. Like I, I am a huge fan of true cuts. Like I really like them. I think they're a really good mower. They do. They produce a really good cut, um, especially when you put a good a good roller on them. They do really well. Um, if you want something that's like a multi-tool type mower, a Swordman is worth considering too, because with that you're gonna you're gonna be able to cut. You know, get a really good quality cut. In my opinion, the Swordman actually cuts a little bit better than the true cut does. Um, um, but you, and you also get the versatility of the interchangeable cartridge system, right? But the negative is it costs more, so it's more expensive. A true cut you can get into for like a for years you got like twelve thousand square feet, so a twenty seven inch with a roller on it, you're like twenty five hundred bucks thereabouts, brand new. Um, I mean, if, and if you're looking for one, call Real Rollers. They have really really good pricing on true cuts. Um, they'll and because they make the rollers, they might be able to you know, hook you up with like the, the the mower and the roller. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I have no insider knowledge on that, but I, I figure that if you're buying a roller and you're buying the mower from them, they're probably going to do something to you know sweeten the deal. Um, but yeah, a, a true cut would be a great start if you're just trying to go to just just you know gangbusters to start out. And if you, and if you want the, the the best quality of cut you possibly can get, then get a greens mower like a like a, a Toro Greensmaster or. Um, like the John Deere's, the JD's, some people like those. I like the, I really like the Greens Master. I, I've never used a John Deere to be able to say how they do. I'm sure they cut well. The one benefit I'd say for a Greens Master, if you're going Greens mower, is the axles on it can be removed. So if you have any kind of hardscapes that you want to be able to get up to, so if you've got like rocks or some kind of fencing or borders you want to get a little closer to, because you can remove the axles on the Greens Master, that is a compelling reason to kind of consider that over like a John Deere if you're going the Greens mower route. But for a newbie, um, Again, I'm going to say true cut. I would say get a pre if you can get a pre-owned true cut, um, and uh, get if you can get one with a roller on it and see if it's for you. See if you like if you like real mowing because before you go out and you go drop twenty five hundred dollars in a mower, make sure you're actually going to like doing it. Um, and you can pick up a pre-owned true cut true cut with it's in decent shape for you know a thousand twelve hundred dollars thereabouts low miles and you know and that wasn't abused it's in good shape. Um, and and that's gonna, that's going to serve you really well on a twelve thousand square foot lawn. So that would be my answer if it were me. I would say true cut to start. If you're definitely sure real mowing is for you, then that's when questions like a brand new true cut or a swordman or or greens master come into play. They're different tools. As far as the absolute best quality of cut, nothing beats a greens mower. Like literally, like the true cut does really, really well. I thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread as far as like mowing that could never be any better. I made two passes with a greens mower and it's like, yep, I'm, that's it. That's, 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 that's it's definitely better. So as, if you want the absolute best um, quality of cut, a greens mower is the way to go, but there's more theater involved with it. Like, you know, you gotta use transport wheels to move it out. And they're, um, they're just, it's, 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 you're taking a device that's designed to be used on golf courses and putting it on a residential lawn. So if you've got like a slope and it's like, um, depending on the high slope that you have and how, you know, that, you know, a greens mower is gonna be a little harder to use on a slope than a true cut will be because it's got like the, it's got like the tractor tires the true cut has that's gonna work better. So. It's you're 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 just compromising from that standpoint. But but again, if your only criteria, if the only thing you care about is I want the absolute best cut that I can possibly get, uh, greens mower. But if you want something that's that's gonna again look incredible um, and a little bit easier to live with, I would say a true cut. That's what I would say. So long long winded answer. But you got me talking about reels mowers, man. I mean that's that's my that's my that's my thing. So um, hopefully that helps. I know it's kind of long winded. And if it if uh, if you want to throw around some ideas or if you I, know, I think we've been corresponding by email, Brian. So if you if you want, if you get like a, some some mowers you're looking at, you want me to kind of chime and say, yeah, I think that's a good deal, that's a good price or not. Um, be, feel free to shoot me an email. My email is here, Ron at GolfForceLawn.com. Just shoot me an email with the, with like the one you're looking at, and I'll say, yeah, it looks like a pretty good deal, or I would look for something else, or try and talk them down to this, you know. So I'll help you out with trying to get um, a good uh, a good setup. Okay. Thank you for the question. Great question, sir. And uh, your lawn's gonna love real mowing. It's gonna be it's gonna be a great one of the best things you can do for your lawn. All right, Tim with a super chat. I got to thank you so much for that, sir. Super chat received. He's just tossing out my support for your info and time doing videos and live chats. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you so much. I really, I really enjoy it. You know, you guys are getting something out of this and I'm getting something out of it too. I, I, I learned like what uh, challenges you guys are facing. So it gives me some good ideas for content as well. So, you know, it's, it definitely helps both of us out. But I, I appreciate the, uh, the super chat. Thanks so much for uh, the support. All right, so M has a question here. He says, um, my backyard is half Bermuda, half St. Augustine. I want the Bermuda to. I want the Bermuda in. What would be the best way to kill the St. Augustine and grow in the Bermuda? Um, so, to my under, to my knowledge, there's not a selective herbicide that will kill St. Augustine, and not go kill Bermuda. However, Bermuda will tolerate being cut much lower than St. Augustine will. So, if you will start cutting Bermuda as like a lot lower, like an inch, you know, an inch or inch and a half, like the St. Augustine is going to really be hating life if you cut it that low, and the Bermuda is going to be like, yes, more, please. Um, and you're going to be doing two things. One, you're going to be stressing the St. Augustine by doing cutting it at that height. 
And you're also gonna be encouraging the Bermuda to, to grow more laterally by cutting it shorter. So by cutting the Bermuda shorter, it's gonna be a longer process, but then, then you're, you're creating a scenario where the Bermuda is going to be able to, to outcompete the St. Augustine over time and become the dominant grass in the lawn. Um, and so hopefully, hopefully that, uh, that helps. All right, great question. All right, Chris Balducci says, hey Ron, is there a, a rule of thumb as far as how much sand to get when top dressing? I have about 5,000 square feet. Yeah, yeah, Chris, so a good rule of thumb in general is one yard of sand per thousand square feet. So you got 5,000 square feet, you're gonna to wanna to get five yards of material. That's gonna give you enough um, top dressing mix to make sure that you have enough to cover uh, the lawn, you're not gonna run out. Um, and it's also, you know, that, that that's just a good number, you know, and it's gonna allow you to put it down at a, at a rate that's not gonna to be too thick. Um, and again, most importantly, you're just not gonna run out. Cause there's nothing worse than top dressing a lawn and running out of sand to finish the job. Trust me, I know, I've done it. So uh, you know, a one yard per thousand is is uh, is a good is a good number to go with. So hopefully, hopefully that helps. Um, Raider Nation says, "What is a great, the best way to find out what kind of Bermuda you have?" Yeah, that's that's a tough one. Um, um, Raider Nation, um, a builder sod laid down in the front yard, and I'm not sure what kind it is. Depending on when your yard your house was built, it's probably Tiff Tough or Tiffway 419 um, Raider Nation. At least around here, that's what they use a lot. Um, for the, that's like the builder special is going to be a Tiffway 419. Um, but it's, it, it, but the thing is, it doesn't really matter. I mean, as, I mean, if it's, if it's, uh, if you treat it well, like if you cut it properly, you make sure the soil's in good shape, you fertilize it properly and you cut it like regularly at the right height, you know, any Bermuda can look really, really nice. So it doesn't, I wouldn't get so hung up on the type of Bermuda of, or, or identifying it. If you really, really want to know, um, you might be able to ask the builder, like whoever they contract, whoever they contracted, like what sod they put in, they might be able to tell you. Um, yeah, I don't even know if you're, if you can take, like, take some off and take it to, like, your local site one or, like, a local extension office and say, hey, what which Bermuda is this? They might be able to tell you, but it's, it, it doesn't really matter that much. If it's, if it's all the same, um, you know, it, it's still, it, it's, in other words, it's not like if you have Arden 15, you must treat the grass this way. And if it's, like, common Bermuda or Tiffany 419, you must treat it this way. They're all, it's, it's, the, the recipe is the same. Um, if it's Bermuda, right? So I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't worry about it. It's probably Tiffway 419 based on the fact you said it's like, it's builder side. Cause that's what around here anyway, I'm not sure if you're in Georgia, but around here, that's what everybody's putting in. So, um, so hopefully that helps. And Tiffway 419 can look very, very, very pretty if it is mowed well. Look at Alex's lawn. Alex's lawn is Tiffway 419. His lawn has not been overseeded. It's like literally all Tiffway 419. If you want to see what that can look like, go look at the ugly lawn series, like after, Oh, after the top dressing video, actually before the top dressing video, you can look at like some of the video after top, yeah, after the top dressing video and the lawn, lawn recovers, you can see what Tiffway 419 can look like with a lot of heat and that's real mode. It looks, it looks gorgeous. So, uh, so yeah, um, I wouldn't sweat it too much. Your lawn can look really nice the, despite which type of Bermuda you have. All right. Let's see what other questions we have here. Okay. So yeah, so John D saying, yeah, one inch of water in the winter, one and a half inches in the summer. I water very slow with rotary sprinklers. One and a half inches takes six hours. That's, that's good. So, so low, so deep, deep watering. Um, cool. Very cool, man. That sounds like that works well. Let's see what other questions we have. Um, da, 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 da. okay. So Dr. Nose Kicks says, um, I bought a house about three months ago and I have a new Bermuda lawn. Okay. Congratulations on the house. It's starting to come out of dormancy and I found two dead spots around two feet by two feet. Mmm, wondering what I can do to fix it. Okay, so a couple of things that are sending off like flags here. You said it's a new house um, and the dead spots are two feet by two feet. Are they like, are they like fairly square? Like uh, they look like a pattern? Because I will tell you that I know someone that just you know, has a, a new construction. Their home was built in October and they discovered like a piece of debris that was left behind from the construction. So, um, if the areas you're talking about, these two feet, two feet spots are um, like, the way to test for that, the easy way, easy test is get like a long screwdriver, like a long, it uh, doesn't matter, Phillips or flathead, doesn't matter. A long screwdriver and run it down into the soil and it shouldn't stop. Like you should be able to take, you should be able to push it down, you know, eight inches, 10 inches with a lot of force. If it goes down, it stops. Um, then there's something under there. It could be a rock. It could be um, a piece of plywood, some other, some other material they left behind that could be causing your problem. Now, um, I'm assuming, but what you're telling me that uh, these two dead spots are obviously in a spot where they're getting plenty of sunlight. So if the two dead spots are like right up against the house and there's like a lot of shade there, um, that could cause it. But if they, I, I'm assuming that if they are out in the open, so there's not an issue with sun um, and they're all obviously getting the same you know, level of fertilization, they're all getting the same soil, I would check to make sure there's no debris under under the ground that's, that's causing that problem. Because it's, it's more common than you think um, with new construction. And again, the way to test for that, get a long screwdriver, run it down and see if it stops 
and see if there's like a rock or a piece of plywood or something they just left behind that that could be causing your uh, your problem, Dr. Nose Kicks. Yeah, let me know how it works out. That's a, that's, that's a good one. Um, and I know someone that just experienced something of what you're just, you're talking about. All right. All right. Uh, Jurassic quote, Nose Free says, I'll definitely let them know and that you're putting in work to building the community. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate that. Letting site one know. I really appreciate that, sir. Thanks so much. All right. Um, Windchariot says, uh, because of my Ron, because of my Ron knowledge, yeah, right, whatever, um, the site one guy thought I was in the lawn care business. He was impressed that DIY wire was somewhat informed. See, there you go. That's the, that's the point, man. That's what we want to get to. We want to get to the point when we walk into site one and, you know, you know, we, you know, we, we know what we're asking for. We know when you go and you say, hey, so I need like, you know, I need this many pounds of dolomitic lime. They'd be like, dolomitic lime? How do you know you need dolomitic? And you're like, well, my calcium and magnesium is low, sir. My, my, uh, my, my pH is low. And I'm trying to bring that up. So, you know, it shows that you're, shows that you're right in, that you've actually done your research. And then, you know, it's, it's going to, it's going to, I think it's going to encourage site one to start doing more for the DIY community. Because the thing is, they, they carry like between them and central turf and irrigation, they carry a lot of really good products. Like the stuff that they carry is like the good stuff, right? And it's just hard to get your hands on. So it's, um, you know, you never know. I mean, again, it's probably probably not the best thing for me. Like if they actually started taking DIY seriously, they'd probably like, if they started an online store or something, it's going to make the golf course lawn store a lot less like necessary. But, um, you know, it'll make it easier for you guys to get stuff for your lawn. So, you know, at, at the end, you guys get better lawns in the process. So whatever. Uh, but thanks. Thanks for, thanks that the site, I'm glad the site one guy thought you guys, uh, you know, that he was impressed with your, with your raw knowledge. All right. Let's see what else we have here. Um, Brad H says, Hey Ron, I ordered 35 pounds of Oasis Bermuda. I've not heard of Oasis. That's interesting. I have to research that one of Oasis Bermuda. And I just want to thicken up. Also, I need to level. And then your question ran out. I'm not sure. Um, what else? Um, so if you need to, if you, I don't know what Oasis Bermuda is, um, Brad, I've not heard of that one. Um, but if you want to thicken up, uh, assuming you're getting enough sunlight, the way to get your Bermuda to thicken up is to mow it a lot. So again, once we, once we are assume that everything else is correct, like the soil is decent, so you've done your soil test result, you've done your soil test, you've got the results, you're applying products to the, to the soil, to your lawn to make sure that you're giving the soil what it needs. So in other words, we're creating the, the conditions that are good for, for Bermuda. Um, and you're getting enough sunlight, really the thing that's going to help Bermuda to grow and fill in bare spots is to mow it, mow it shorter. So if you can get that Bermuda down to, you know, an inch and a half or lower, um, even with a rotor, you should be able to do that. Um, that is going to encourage it to start growing laterally, you know, growing across the lawn. And that's going to allow it to thicken up um, more so than if you are cutting it high. So the, the, the lawns that I see that um, that are Bermuda that looked, I always like to say that look like, like dead carpet or like, like dirty carpet, um, are the ones that are mowed at like, you know, three inches, you know, when they, when, when Bermuda is mowed high, it looks, it doesn't look very good because it doesn't, it doesn't have to, right. It grows up, it gets kind of leggy and this kind of like thin looking because there's so much material. There's so much leaf to catch sunlight. It's like, why, why would I waste time trying to grow across the ground? I can just catch all the sunlight this way. So this is easy mode. So if you want to, to do what it's designed to do, cut it shorter, and then it's going to fill, it'll help fill in. That's going to encourage it to fill in. All right, great question. Um, and I'm have to, oh, have to look into Oasis Bermuda. I've never heard of that one before. It's, it's uh, another uh, cultivar I got to learn about. All right, let's see. Let's see what questions we got here. So Robert Schneider says, um, for fixing a horrid lawn, I wouldn't mean, call it horrid, let's say ugly. I'm not going to say, you know, horrid sounds like there's no there's no recovery process possible, um, Robert. We can, we can fix it. We're going to call it ugly. We're going to say one that needs some love. For fixing a lawn that needs some love, which is the best to do? Putting down pre-emergent or taking a risk on spring overseeding? And dealing with the weeds after the seeds sprout. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I let's, let's assume I'm assuming that your lawn is Bermuda or it's a warm season grass. I don't know what it is because you didn't you didn't say. Um, but if you the, the way to fix at least a warm season lawn um, is not with overseeding. Like again, I know I do it. I'm doing it because mainly I want to finish the job of getting Arden 15 throughout my lawn. But the way to get Bermuda or Zoysia or any warm season grass or Saint Augustine to to, to thicken up and grow in really well. Um, is to cut it. So if, um, by, hor by horrid or ugly, let's say that your lawn was kind of like how Alex's lawn was, where you had like a bunch of weeds in the lawn um, and uh, you know, you're trying to fix that. So what I would do is once the lawn greens up, so not right now because the lawn's probably coming out of dormancy. We don't want to put like post-emergence uh, post on now to stress it. I'd say like, let's wait till late April. Um, you can hit the lawn with like a um, like weed stop or one of those like those, those hose end um, uh, selective herbicides to knock the weeds back. And once we do that, the next process is to start mowing a lot. So, so the idea is that we're going to stress the stress the grass or stress the plants that we don't want to keep, and then we're going to do things that's going to encourage the, the plants that we want to keep, our grass, 
to do better. So by putting the herbicides on, the the, the weeds are going to be hurting, they're going to be hating life. And then by starting to cut, um, again, I'm, I'm answering this question as if, as if you have Bermuda, all right? Um, you're going to start cutting that lower and cutting it frequency uh, frequently, so at least twice per week. That's going to do a lot to help the lawn to thicken up. And then and that, that just in of itself, just doing nothing else, just doing those two things, um, you know, getting the weeds knocked back and starting to mow your lawn more frequently, that's going to really help it. Um, putting down pre-emergent, um, if you've not done that, uh, let's, let's take seeding off the table. I would not do seeding. I would put down pre-emergent if you've not done that already. And I mean, if you're in Georgia, like now you want to like, now is the time you want to do it. If you need pre-emergent, um, you can get it on the golf course lawn store. I've got um, Prodiamine in the small containers. I don't have it here. Yeah, I do. I do, I do have one here. I've got Prodiamine. If your lawn is under 6,000 square feet in these little small containers, it'll cost you 20 bucks to, to put to, to do the application. Um, and I've got in the bigger jugs, if your lawn's bigger, so go to the golf course lawn store that's there. And in addition to that, there are videos that I have on YouTube that'll tell you how to mix it and how to apply it. So, or if, if you want super easy mode, just get the granular. So if you don't want to bother with mixing stuff, um, let's see if I can show you here, um, Robert, I'm not sure if you had your pre-emergent, you, if you already have your, your pre-emergent uh, chosen, but if you want easy mode, um, just get this, get the, this, this pre-emergent here. This is a granular 007, it's got like a little bit of potassium in it, so it's gonna help, you know, help the lawn look green up a little bit more. Um, this is a great product. It has pre-emergent in it, and that's what I would apply if you want to go super easy, not having to mess with the backpack sprayer and mixing and all this kind of stuff. Um, and then just mow. But if you want to know how, um, if you want to see the blueprint, you want to see like how to transform a lawn in a short, in a relatively short period of time, um, take a look at that series. So I'm going to post this in the chat now. If you go to um, uh, Ron Henry and you just type on YouTube and just type golf course lawn, or actually I think I put a link here to make it easier. Here, here we go. So the Fix My Ugly Lawn series, I'm gonna put that in here right now for you. So at Robert Schneider, yep, and then there, that link, so Ron Henry, ron-henry.com forward slash GCL, golf course lawn, that's gonna take you to a series that's gonna that's going to show you how to um, do exactly what you're trying to do. It's gonna show you like what I, what we did on Alex's lawn to transform, I'm not gonna call it horde because your lawn's not horde. I'm sure it's probably got some challenges, needs a little help, but we can improve it um, with just, and, and, and believe it or not, in a shorter period of time than you think, once you um, once you know the process. So, so check that out. If you have any questions, also email me. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions, you want to send me pictures. Um, you can do that. Just shoot me up, hit me up here at ron at golfcourselawn.com and I'll do my best to help you out. Um, but watch that series that I just linked in the chat. Uh, that's going to show you what's possible, how quickly you can turn things around um, with the right process, mostly by, by picking up your mowing frequency. That's going to do a lot to improve your lawn. So hopefully... Uh, Hopefully that helps. And I would do pre -merge. I would take, let's take seeding off the table um, for this season, if you don't mind. And let's just focus on weed control and mowing. And, um, you know, that's what I would do. That, that would be my recommendation. I would, if you not put pre emergent down, I would get the one, the one I just showed you there, go in the golf course lawn store and order the granular. Or if you feel, you know, you want to get the liquid, you want to do that. That's fine. There, it's on there too. Get that, apply your pre emergent and then let's just start mowing like a crazy person. And that's going to help your lawn quite a bit. And if you need any help, um, let me know. Um, and uh, you know, after watching that series, it's gonna show you about soil testing, it's gonna show you about doing amendments, and it's all free, you can check that out. And uh, I will help you out if you have any other questions, sir. All right, uh, let's see what other questions we have here. Great one, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. Some of the serious about changing your lawn, if you're just willing to put the work in, you're gonna, you're gonna get a really good result. And you're gonna be surprised how quickly you can turn it around if, you, uh, if you're consistent with it. All right. Uh, let's see what other questions we have here. Yeah, JG says, Daniel Ferris is the name. Ben Sims from Lawn Tips. That's the guy from Australia I was thinking about. All right. Uh, Will Dog is saying, um, my first time in live chat with Ron. Welcome, sir. Thank you for, for taking some time. Enjoy your channel. Thank you. I appreciate you watching. Uh, great info for immaculate lawn lovers. What, where can fa one find some consumer quality um, quantity of Teenex for a season? That's a good question. So um, I know there are some companies that are working. Uh, I know there's, there's a... Um, Something's being done to try and make TNX available in smaller quantities. Uh, you know, you can get, what you can do is if you get on um, the Facebook group, get on Facebook and then go to like the, it's Bermuda, Bermuda Grass Lawn, or Bermuda Lawn Dominators, I think is what it's good. Do, do like, get on, get on like Facebook and just search for like um, Bermuda Grass Lawn or Bermuda, um, Bermuda Dominators and then a group is going to come up. Um, and in that group, you'll often find people that have like a gallon of TNX. Um, and they will be willing to like part with some of it. They'll like, they'll pour some of it out and they'll ship it and sell it to you. So you could, you can do that because you're right. I mean, uh, I mean, Teenex, a gallon of Teenex is, is going to treat, uh, you know, a, a ton of lawns. I mean, it's like a 10 year supply. Like, I mean, if you're applying it on Bermuda at the specified rate, you're putting down an ounce you're putting down, actually, no, I should say this, you're putting down 0.25 ounces per thousand square feet. So you're putting down an ounce for 4,000 square feet. So for most people, 
you figure it's 128 ounces in a gallon, you're, that's a ton of tea next. You're never gonna go through all of it. So yeah, get on, on Facebook and um, uh, go look for Bermuda Grass, Bermuda Lawn Dominators, I think is the name of the Facebook group. And they're in, just ask in there, there's gonna be someone there that'll probably be willing to help you out until you know, there's someone that's available to, to or a manufacturer starts making TNX available in smaller quantities. So uh, hopefully that helps, sir. Okay, let's see what else we got going on here. All right, Dalvin Larry says, uh, hey Ron, thanks for all your help um, in the Academy, Content Academy. Thank you, sir, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for signing up and for watching that you're getting value out of it. I, I, I appreciate that. You said your, your California real mower uh, arrived today. Can't wait to test it tomorrow. That's awesome, man. I uh, gotta, gotta clap it up for that. Gotta clap it up for a new real mower. Gotta do that. Congratulations on, first of all, thank you for joining the Academy. Thanks for the support. And um, and congratulations on the new real mower. You're gonna love the way your lawn looks with it. You know, all real mowers are good mowers. So uh, awesome. Let's see what else we got here. Sunny Bermuda's in the house. What's going on, Sunny? I see you starting to put out that content, sir. I like it. He says, uh, hey, Ron, just threw down some Carbon Pro G for the first time. Just wanted to say hi. Well, hello, sir. I appreciate it. And uh, you're gonna like the result. Here's the, here's the problem, Sonny. Once you start with that Carbon Pro G, you're not gonna be able to stop. I, you know, I gotta, I gotta warn you, once you see the results, you're going to, uh, you're gonna enjoy it. I mean, it's, it's like the, I love the product because it improves the soil and there's no NPK. So literally you can go ham-fisted on it if you want to. Like, I mean, really, for most people anyway, I mean, it, it, the limitation is really just your budget. You know, most people are never going to apply it to the point you get to the point of diminishing returns. So, um, so good, good stuff, man. I'm glad that you, you tried it out. Awesome, let's see here. Uh, Ross Smith says, the question is, what's, uh, let's see his question, he says, uh, what's the difference between your philosophy and product between Lawn Care Nut and his biostimulants? Um, it's just different philosophies. I mean, you remember, Alan is, um, I think that what I do, it appeals to more of a, uh, more of a niche audience, a smaller audience than Alan does. Like Alan, like both, I think both, you could get great results with either of our processes, either of our programs. Either one will, will, will do great results. The one thing that's going to be constant in both of our, our programs is we're going to tell you to so mow your grass more. Um, uh, and it just depends on what you like. I mean, I know Alan does a lot of a lot with the um, the next or the Green County um, um, biostimulants. A lot of people like those. They have really good results with them. I've just I just enjoy the the products from Miramichi Green. I've I've used those. I've had really really good results uh, with those products. I like I like the company. I know the people behind the company. Like I've, I I some of them have started to become friends. Um, and I, I like the products and I like the results I get with them. So that's why I use them. And some of the technology they have is some things that no one else really has. Like the 10% micronized carbon that's in um, release zero, which is basically, it's almost like, you know, like you're just like spraying like liquid biochar on your lawn. Like no one else has it in that quantity. So Miramichi Green is really the only ones that have that. So if, if micronized biochar, micronized carbon is something that you're interested in, um, really the only place you can get it is from Miramichi Green. But having said that, you can get, I mean, you know, people use other products and they get really good results with it. Um, so, you know, I'm not, I don't want to get into a war of like, you know, this product's better than that product, but it's, I mean, I, I have a, a system and a suite of products that works well for me. And that's why I, uh, I stick with it. My, my philosophy is probably a little bit different than to Alex from the standpoint of, from Alan's from, a standpoint of like mowing height, like Alan's not gonna tell people to go out and buy real mowers because mainly he cuts St. Augustine, right? His main thing is like St. Aug and he knows he's been in this industry so long. He's been doing it lo a lot longer than I have. And he knows that for most people, not everyone, but for most people, um, the challenge of getting out to just even mow twice a week is um, a lot. And then when you factor in a real mower, which is, a, is, a, is another level of commitment, there's more expense with it. The maintenance of them is a little bit higher. Unless you're really committed to doing that, really committed to mowing, it's not something that's for everybody. So, I, so I, his, his messaging, I think, is really good and it, it appeals to a broader audience. Um, and his thing is not to try and get people to get create golf course lawns because like it's it's something that most people just really don't want to do. They don't have the time to do it nor the desire to do it. You know, And my audience are people that, that are... I guess insane and want to do that kind of thing. And you know, it's, it's so we, I think we, I think we're a great compliment um, to each other. I wouldn't say like it's an either or they, I think our, our approaches both um, are, are complimentary if you want my opinion. So hopefully, hopefully that helps um, Ross. All right. What else do we have here? Oh uh, yeah. Richard Cardinal's flag in. Yeah. It's the, it's, that's it. The flagship uh, 7020. That's the orange bag. That's the, um, the fruit that he has. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Jason Scroff says, do you test your soil CEC or organic matter? Uh, no, no, I don't. Uh, um, Jacob, what I do is I just, I just add organic uh, matter to my soil for our rel relatively regularly using, uh, carbon pro G or using essential G. Um, you know, the thing with, um, the my soil test kit is that it tests for nutrient uptake. It tests for the actual availability, like the, the ion exchange resin that they use in the my soil test it simulates a synthetic root. It simulates like what, um, instead of like what some soil tests will do where they will take, you'll take a soil sample, 
you'll send that in, they'll dry it out, they'll grind it and they'll measure what's in it, um, which is one way of doing it and it definitely works well for some people. What my soul does is it tests what, what is actually available for absorption by the grass. So I like it made a lot of sense to me when I was researching it and that's why I've stuck with it and I've gotten really, really good results um, by trusting their data. And also the, the nice trend tool they have in the um, in the product, in their, their the interface where you can um, you see your results, also is really nice for looking at trend data over time. So that's why I, uh, I like it. And because I just, I, I add organic material to my soil in the form of compost and biochar, you know, regularly. There's not, like me, if I, remember, if I knew what my CEC was, um, I, my, it, it wouldn't change really like the like the program that I'm doing for my life. I'm getting really, really good results doing what I'm doing. So, um, so hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps um, uh, answer your question. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. Yep, yep, Will Dog um, says, yeah, a celloprin has crane flies on the label. So yeah, I, I already linked it in the chat there, but a celloprin would be a good, a good option for taking care of crane flies. And at the same time, you take care of crane flies and you won't kill pollinators in the process. You're not gonna kill like the earthworms, you're not gonna kill the, the insects, the bugs that we actually do wanna keep around that some, that other um, insecticides, you know, can, uh, can have a negative result again. So I am, I mean, I do like a celloprin. It's not, not the most cheap, it's not the cheapest product, but it is, it is good. Like anything else in life, you get what you pay for, right? So um, that's a great option. Uh, thanks for chiming in there, Will Dog. What other questions do we have here? Uh, da, 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 da. Um, uh, Rico Montgomery says, um, he has a question about uh, adjusting the handlebars on a true cut. He says, thanks for everything. You're very welcome, sir. He says, how do I, how to adjust the handlebar on your true cut? I've never adjusted mine, Rico, so I'm not sure. I have to look at it and see. Um, I imagine there's probably gonna be like some screw, a bolt so you can loosen and you can adjust. I, I've never, I've never adjusted mine ever since I got it. So I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I don't even know if, I don't even know if they are adjustable. They probably are, but I've never, I've never done that on my mower to be able to tell you exactly how to do it. You know, I tell you who would know how that is real rollers. So um, go to realrollers.com um, and their contact information is gonna be on there. Go check them out. Go ask, and when you call, you know, you'll, you'll get either Lee or, Eric or Andrew, one of those guys, and they are the experts on true cuts on Swordman's. They will be able, they, they will be able to answer that question as far as how to how to adjust uh, the handlebars on your true cut. They'll be able to help you out. They may even have a video on it already because they have a YouTube channel they just started and they've been putting that kind of content out there. Um, and uh, you know, because I think one thing I, I did see Andrew did a video. Actually, yeah, check the Real Rollers um, YouTube channel, Rico, because. They did a video on how to assemble the true cut, and in there is probably a section on adjusting the handlebars on how to mount that. So you can probably get your answer right now. Go to the Real Rollers um, YouTube page and check it out there, and look for go to like Real Rollers and then True Cut. There's a video on that, and um, you can probably find your answer on how to adjust the, the handlebars uh, in that video. All right, let's see what other questions we got here. We're kind of winding down. You guys are talking me out, man. I thought I wasn't gonna be able to hang, man. I was feeling, I was feeling sick. Like literally, I'm getting over a cold. I'm, you guys can probably hear it in my voice. And I'm saying, oh, I can maybe go for like an hour and a half, but you guys got the questions, man. You got me all amped up. I'm still going. All right, uh, let's see what other questions we have. Uh, Timothy uh, says, I put down pre-emergent, um, but still see a couple of isolated weeds. Looking at your lawn, it appears you have zero weeds. Do you actually hand pull weeds? I do, I do, Timothy. So here's the thing what you're looking at. One thing you gotta realize too, right? To be fair. Um, uh, I did not, I have not applied any pre-emergent into my lawn this spring. So I probably will have some weeds in summer months with once he, summer heat arrives. But when you're looking at my lawn, realize that you are looking at a lawn, um, that is in, that's in a, that's in year six of being babied and pampered, right? Um, but this, the thing is looking at Alex's lawn, you're looking at a lawn that's really only been at it for a year. So really within the course of three months, Timothy, if you commit to mowing a lot, like if you check out that series that I linked in the description, in the in the uh, in the chat, like the um, I'll put it in here so you can you can sit it you can see it too. Um, what is your name? Your name is Timothy at uh, Timothy Smith. You're still there, and boom, yep. And if you check out this series, like that series shows how you can transform a lawn that probably looks like how most of your guys' lawns look um, to an amazing lawn in like three and a half months. Over the course of a growing season, you can make a, a night and day difference. Um, the reason why I, I don't have a lot of weeds in my lawn is because I just, I mow a lot. I mean, I, I yes, I, I, I do test my soil. I use what I consider to be the best products on my lawn um, at the correct rates. But then on top of all that, I just mow the lawn a lot. I mow it, I mow a lot. That's why my lawn looks the way it does. Because if you mow Bermuda at half an inch, where Bermuda's like, yeah, all day, every day, baby, let's go. Um, most weeds hate that. Most weeds will not tolerate being cut that low. And especially 
when, when the summer heat arrives and you're cutting Bermuda short and it starts to thicken up, it's like, okay, it's go time. It starts to really like blend in and really get that really tight canopy. Like the, we just have a really hard time competing um, in an environment like that. So I'm cre I, basically by mowing a lot, I'm creating an environment that is great for Bermuda, but it's terrible for most weeds other than like spurge or um, nutsedge, which you just, those weeds, just, they just don't care. No matter what you do to them, they just, they'll always keep coming back for some reason. Um, but just, but just, just realize that it's a processor. And, and I, I, um, I can pull my lawn, even when I'm out there mowing, I still, uh, if I see a small weed, I'll stop the mower and grab it and pull it out real quick and wait till I get in the pasture and then throw the weed off. So I, I still hand pull weeds. I don't put a lot of herbicides on my lawn. Um, but the thing, the big reason why you see so little, so few weeds in my lawn is the mowing. Like it's the, it's the height of cut and it's the regular, regular mowing, um, is what you see is that's, that's the big, the big thing. And you, you keep watching the content because this year there's not, there's no pre, there's no spring pre-emergence. So We'll see how much just cultural practices, just how much just mowing will do for weed suppression this season. You're going to get to see it live. So I'm going to be filming content. You'll be able to see how the lawn does because there was no spring pre-emergent that went down on my lawn this year. So, uh, so cool. Hopefully that helps. But just, yeah, picking up your mowing and then pulling weeds is a great way to... Uh, to keep weeds out of your lawn. If, you're, if you get something really crazy, you may have to go with a, a post-emergent to kind of, you know, to like I say, to kind of get ahead of it. Um, and in that series I just linked to, to linked for you, you'll see that I do um, show um, us applying a product called Spectricide on Alex's lawn to kind of get ahead to knock the weeds back. So now when he mows, the Bermuda is kind of like, you know, getting a, a ahead of the weeds, but it's not something you want to have to rely on for weeds in lawn. You want the practices of that you're doing as far as the regular mowing to um, to create an environment where the, your lawns, your grass is going to do well, and the weeds are not going to do well based on the height of cut that you're choosing. Great question. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. We have has anyone heard of uh, Tom Peebles? Anyone heard of a seven or eight blade reel for GM one thousand versus the eleven blade reel? Yeah, so I mine is an eight blade on my 1600, and I think an eight blade is available for the, for the 1000 too. I don't have a 1000 to know for sure, but I'm pretty sure you can get a one, an eight blade on a 1000 and um, an 11 blade. So the 11 blade is really more about if, you are, if you're cutting lower and you're, and actually Lee from Real Rollers educated me on this, the choice between, um, he said between the reel uh, of 11 blade or an eight blade is not really the height of cut, it's more the mowing frequency. So it, everyone always says, yeah, you should be cutting, if you're using an 11 blade reel, that's for height of cuts like well below half an inch, like greens mower heights. But that's because greens mowers, when you're mowing it, when you're maintaining turf at those heights, you're cutting every day. But if you were to cut a lawn, let's say half an inch and you're mowing every day with an 11 blade, it would probably work out fine. What you, what you just can't do with an 11 blade is go, is allow the lawn to get really, long between mowings because you're going to start, you're going to, um, it's going to bog down. You're going to start seeing some, some cut issues by doing that. So Tom, for most home lawns, eight blade is the sweet spot. Like most homeowners, like an eight blade is what you want, um, in a, uh, a GM in a 1000 or 1600. So if you get one with an eight blade, um, that's what I'd roll with. If you get one with an 11 blade, just rock, rock with it, you know, roll with it until it needs replacing and then replace it with an eight blade reel. So, uh, so hopefully that helps. And then uh, LG, I just saw your comment. He says, yeah, um, L eight blade is better remaining tiny heights of uh, one point, half an inch or higher. So there you go. LG chiming in and saving me. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you so much. All righty. What other questions do we have here? Um, uh, let's see. Um, so two shots of vodka said, I've included this email for a soil test on pH 7.9. Ooh, it's a, so pretty alkaline. Um, what plan do you think for bringing that down? We'll, we'll get together on it. Um, ammonium sulfate, like something, uh, uh, like some, uh, some kind of sulfate, um, um, two shots of vodka is something we, we can be able to do to help lower that, um, to help bring those down. But yeah, once I look at your soil test results after I get off the live stream tonight, I will come up with a plan for you and we'll figure something out. I'll write you back and let you know what we should, uh, should go with. All right. Uh, I'm about to cough. Let me take a sip here. Mm -hmm. Sean Eckert says, do you prefer straight or curved straps when it comes to, to trimmers? I like straight. I've always, mine has always been straight. So that's what I've always used. I think Alex has a curved on his and his works well. I think either one can work well. I think the real difference is that if you're trying to create, like whenever, if you're trying to just, just do edging, like, um, like hardscapes to grass, it doesn't really matter between curved or edge or straight. It's whenever you're using the, the, the stick trimmer to try and create like a, um, like straight, you're trying to create like a line for a flower bed or you're trying to use it to, like, to kind of cut. That's where a stick trimmer, like the straight one, will do better. But for like most people, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's see what else we got here. Contours, like I said, I love your live stream. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. 
Um, George's chime in. He says, Ron, nice AZ lawn and the shortcut lawn, the best lawns on YouTube. Thank you, sir. I, I'd say, I, as far as like shortcut lawns, right? I mean, if you get into St. Saint, Saint Aug, there are a lot of really good like taller cut lawns too. But as far as warm season, uh, probably. I mean, it just depends. Um, just depends on what you're looking at. But I mean, you know, I'm not going to step on that one. I don't want to get in, I don't want to get into a war on that. Let's see what other questions we have here. Um, let's see. Uh, Lenny says, I have an area of lawn just like yours. It tends to be for mini ponds causing weeds, fungus, anything I can do. Yeah, so I, the, the mini ponds that my lawn has, Lenny, don't last long. Literally all the torrential rain that I had, um, like last night, by the morning they were gone. So the, my lawn drains pretty well. So what I would say is if you are having mini ponds, like the thing, the thing we need to work on um, are to, is to fix drainage. So figure, figure out a way to, 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 to not let water sit in the lawn for so long. So if you can like recontour the lawn to where you get some drainage um, to get the water to get, get off the lawn so you don't have it sitting there for long periods of time, like days, that would be helpful. Uh, top dressing also helps. Like um, top dressing was a game changer for my lawn as far as like the ability of the lawn to just soak up water. Um, like that made a really big difference in my lawn. So those are things you can concern because all the things you're describing here, like fungus and um, you know weeds and all those kinds of things, like all those things are symptoms of like if you have a lot of water sitting and pooling, like you're gonna have a really hard time. Like like kalinga, like a nut sedge is gonna love that. You're gonna have problems with fungus. You're gonna have all kinds of nasty issues because the water is just sitting there because you're creating basically a swamp type scenario. So what we're gonna want to do is figure out a way to drain or to work on drainage um, for that section of the lawn. The water water doesn't sit there forever. Um, as well as um, if you can like do some core aeration, maybe if your soil is compacted, that can help with drainage. But then top dressing is something you can do that is that for me was a game changer. So something to consider as well for your lawn. Um, not the easiest, not the most inexpensive way to go, but it definitely a way to, to help that problem. Assuming that the lawn can actually drain, um, top dressing is going to be a big help. Uh, let's see uh, what are the questions we have here. Kind of running out of time here. And then T Beck says, "I have two. If you have two point three acres, what would you use?" Ugh. I probably wouldn't remold real mode 2.3 acres. Um, if you do, if you are invest in like a triplex, like one of those, like the like the Connor Ward mower, like one of the big you know high end mowers that are like you know you can buy them like 15 grand used. They're super expensive. You, you need some you need some serious hardware if you're going to real mow 2.3 acres. Um, I'd probably just get like a really really big zero turn and just just decide that that's what I'm going to use because that's that's a lot of property. I would not real mowing that is going to be that's a lot, man. I wouldn't I wouldn't take that one on. Um. Uh, let's see here. What other questions do we have? Richard Hartwell says, I hope you don't mind me plugging that. I'm not sure what you plug, but no, I don't really mind. Whatever. No problem, sir. Uh, let's see what other questions we have here. We're running out of time, guys. It's um, it's 10 o'clock. We've been going three hours here. Let's see what other questions uh, that I can answer here quickly um, before we run out. LG with a super chat. Just seeing this. Sorry, sir. I wasn't ignoring you. Appreciate it. Super chat received. He said, launch season probably fix off for us next weekend. Finally looking forward to using my stimulus check on Bayou Stimulus at the Golf Course Lawn Store. Carmen Kool-Aid. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you for spending your stimmy with uh, with me. I appreciate it. Appreciate the support. And what he's talking about is the Golf Course Lawn Store where you can get your Miramichi Green products. You can get your Humic Max fertilizer. Like literally the stuff that I use on my lawn, that's what I offer on the store. So thank you so much, LG. I appreciate that you're spending a small amount of your stimulus check uh, on the golf course lawn store. I, uh, I really appreciate that. Um, let's see what other questions we have here. Tim says he has an issue where he sprays spectracide and chloride and is stunning as St. Aug and more so than the Bermuda. Yeah, that's a big, big thing, man. Once like the, the time to really spray to go hard on herbicides are two times, either when the grass is fully dormant or when it's fully greened up. If you do it when it's when it's coming out of dormancy, like right now is not a time when I would really go super heavy on post-emergence because you're going to stunt the growth of um, of the grass. That's, that's, that's the thing people don't realize, right? Even though you look at a, a herbicide and they say, yeah, it's safe for Bermuda or safe for St. Augustine, all that means is it's not going to kill it. It doesn't mean that it's not going to stress it or, or, you know, like knock back its ability to to grow well. So um, I'm not surprised that if you're applying that stuff now, you're getting negative results, uh, Tim. So, but it, I mean, it'll be fine. I mean, once, once it, once it, all, all you're really doing is, is um, delaying green up by a little bit. It's not even done any permanent damage, but you know, that's, that's a big, a uh, big reason why you don't want to do that. Uh, that kind of stuff when the lawn is coming out of uh, transitioning out of dormancy, if you can avoid it. Oh, uh, let's see. Cedric says, Hey, Matt Scientist, will you be working with Alex this season or has he graduated to independency? Well, we're always working together. Like Alex and I still do stuff together. We just haven't been filming it. Um, and I, I need to do that. That's a good point. I will, I will do a lawn update uh, with sometime, probably the beginning of April where Alex and I will get together. We'll go through, we'll do a, a lawn walkthrough and we'll show you guys what we're doing with the lawn and what the plans are. It's going to be the kind of the same things we did last season other than like all the weed control because he doesn't have that many weeds now. 
Um, other than the POA, we got, we're getting the POA under control, but outside of what you saw last season, we're going to be doing this season. And, uh, but yeah, it'd be cool to have Alex make another appearance in the live stream. I'm sure he'll be down with that. Yeah, we were still good buddies. I saw him today. He was out mowing today. If you saw the video I released today, he was in it. So, uh, so yeah, very much still, he's very much still a thing. Uh, let's see. Frank V says, um, any recommendations for a spray for a sprayable fertilizer that doesn't, that doesn't have iron in it and doesn't stay in the sidewalk? Huh? Uh, but, 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 uh, that's a good question. I'm trying to think if, if any of the BioPro ones that I have do. I know the one that I use, the Turfplex has iron in it, and I don't know if the other one that I carry has iron in it too. Let me look here. Um, let's see, view all products. Let me look here really quick here and, and see. You, you may have to just go, I don't know any off, off the top of my head, um, um, Frank V. I think this, green, this Greensplex also, the Greens Plus also has iron in it as well. Um, no, it doesn't. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, so this is, a, this is an option for you too. So this guy here, uh, let, me, um, let me link that for you, uh, Frankie V. So let me go here in, on the, in the chat. So um, you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store and look for Greens Plus 14 for 10. I just did a quick glance at the label and I don't see um, iron listed as one of the, one of the ingredients. So I'll, I'll link that there. Go to the Golf Course Lawn Store and I'll um, send this to you. So Frank, at Frank. V and that product there. That's one that you can spray that doesn't have iron in it and it should not uh, stain your sidewalk. Even the one that I have, the Turfplex, uh, doesn't stain the sidewalk and I got it on it. So, um, but that one definitely shouldn't because it has no iron in it. All right. Um, Do Prop Patel says, where's the best place to find a used reel mower? I would say, uh, depends, a couple places. If you really, if you are willing to go get, get one that you may have to do some work to, like the Weeks auction is an option, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, um, Offer up. Those are also places. So offer up Facebook Marketplace, um, and those are places where you can find a used reel mower. That's that's. Those are both options. Jupal Patel. That's what I would um, what I would go with. Um, and let's see here. Um, yeah, so we're talking about Carbon Pro G, and I think we are running out of questions. Moreland Capital Group. He says, Hey, I have a shaded area in my back lawn where moss is growing there. Can I grow grass there? It's going to be challenging, Moreland. Um, uh, again, the, the, you talk about Bermuda, Bermuda can take a lot of abuse. If you over fertilize it, it'll bounce back. If you put, you know, glyphosate on it, it'll probably bounce back. The, the kryptonite of Bermuda is shade. The one thing you cannot have for Bermuda to do well is shade. So I don't know how much shade, um, you're dealing with in the backyard. It sounds like a lot. You see, you also have moss going on there. So you, it might also be an issue with the moss might be a shade issue. Um, it probably is a shade issue because you said it's shade. Um, could be a soil pH issue, but it probably is just the shade. Um, and it, the problem is that Bermuda is just not going to do well in shaded areas. Um, and if there's nothing you can do about it, like if you can't cut the trees back, uh, you may have to consider either just putting down like mulch there or going to like um, a fescue maybe. That will do a little, a little bit better in shade, depending on how much shade we're talking about. But then you're going to be watering a whole lot if you go to that. So it's uh, kind of a catch-22 there, unfortunately. Sorry, I don't have a better a better answer for you. All right, guys. I think we are about talked out. I'm trying to see if there's any questions, anything major that I'm missing. Oh, Jason A says he just received his order of Turfplex. After applying it, does it need to be watered in? No, it does not. So what the one thing I will say, Jason, is when you put down Turfplex, and what Jason's talking about with you guys that are um, for Turfplex is this product that's on the Golf Course Lawn Store. This is the fertilizer, the liquid fert that I'm using. Um, make sure you apply it at a rate of, at the lower rate, six ounces per thousand, and make sure you're applying it with one gallon of water per thousand. So if you're doing that where you're diluting it enough where it's one gallon um, going down over a thousand square feet um, and you're going at the low rate, you're not, you're not going to have any issues um, with it, but you don't need to water it in. It's not, it's designed for your uptake is what I'm trying to say. But by, by doing that, you're, you're going to um, reduce any chances of getting any kind of burning or anything like that. So um, I, I've tested it at that rate um, and it works, works, it works beautifully. So, uh, so yeah, you don't need to water it in. All right. Uh, let's see what other questions we got here. Um, Will Dog says, my cellar print came in yesterday. I was, I was acquainted with the label. Um, hoping to avoid growth problem from last year. Thanks again for letting us know about the product. You're very welcome, sir. I'm glad. I'm glad that Sagenta, like you know, one, it was that they that they're reaching out to the DIY community, and you know, um, you know, like one sponsoring the, the content was awesome, and it's making it, you know, bringing the awareness of like uh, products that really were are really reserved for typically like professional turf that for for DIY because it's a really really good product. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that you got it, and, you're, and I'm sure you're going to get great results with it. I have really good results with Caravan G and some of their other their other products. So the Advan Fire Ant Beta, I've used that stuff, and it's worked really good too. So I'm sure you're going to have great results with the Acelloprin. I put I just put it down on my lawn as well too. So uh, so good stuff. I'm glad that uh, the video was was useful. 
All right. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. So I got to answer this because it's the first time in my live chat. He says, Mucho Macho 71. Hey, Ron, first time in your live chat. Thank you, sir. He says, question, just laid Bermuda sod yesterday here in Charlotte and we had huge th thunderstorms. Now it's sopping wet. Concerns, considerations, and more coming. Nothing to worry about. I wouldn't worry about it, sir. Um, Bermuda's going to be just fine. It's going to root just fine. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. It's going to, it's going to do okay. Um, you know, it's not ideal to get huge amounts of water on it, but, um, you know, it's, it's probably, it's going to do just fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. If you can stay off of it, I would do that. Like if you can stay off the Bermuda, the new saw when it's soaking wet and it's like mushy, I would do that. That's the only thing I'd probably say. But as far as the grass being okay and it establishing, it's still going to be fine. It's Bermuda. I mean, it, there's, there's some place where Bermuda is banned because literally once it starts growing, you can't get rid of it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it, sir. It's going to be, you're going to be just fine. Um, Elder Ever says, have you heard of coastal curbicide, good or bad? I've, I have heard of coastal, I've not used it. I think, but coastal, I think that's the one where it's got, um, it's got a pre-emergent and a post-emergent in it. If it's the product I think you're talking about. I don't, I can't, I, I can't remember in the label off the top of my head, but I think there's three active ingredients in that. One of them is a pre-emergent and there's a couple of post-emergent. So it's kind of like an all-in-one product. I've not used it, it's probably fine. It's probably a great product. I've just never, I've just never, uh, I've never used it before, but it's, it's probably just fine. Um, so yeah, um, it's probably a, a good, good product. All right. And then, uh, they call me D thanks. This is great uh, content as always. Carbon Pro G going out first thing in the morning. Good job, sir. Uh, Nyan says, how low can I cut Xeon Zoysia around the same height as you can cut Bermuda? Um, depending, I would say for a person starting out, if you've got a real mower, go for three quarters of an inch. That's like a, a nice sane height at three quarters of an inch to an inch. That's going to do well. Um, much lower than that, it's gonna, you know, you're, you're getting into um, potential thatch issues and it's gonna get really, really dense and thick. And you're gonna have to like start doing things like dethatching it um, fairly regularly. But, but 0.75 um, to an inch is gonna be just fine for, uh, for Xeon Zoysia. No, no issues at all with that uh, nine. But again, you need a real mower to be able to do that. Um, and Timothy Smith with Super Chat. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it. Super Chat received. All right. Uh, let's see. What other questions do we have? Um, Phil J says, when I bought the house, builder sod, poorly built, installed the ryegrass sod with big gas and gaps and dips. Should I focus on getting the gaps filled and leveled or work on some work in some products? Um, here's the thing. I know ryegrass doesn't spread. I don't think ryegrass spreads like how Bermuda does uh, fill. So I'm not sure on that. You see, that's the, that's a perfect example. That's like an Alan Hain question. Alan would be able to tell you on that. Without, without also without pictures. Can you send me pictures of it so I can see? Like, shoot me a picture here if you don't mind. Um, Ron at golfcourselon.com. Send me the pictures there of like how big a gap. Are we talking like a foot or are we talking like, you know, an inch or two? If it's really small, it's going to grow in and it'll be fine. But if it's like, um, if it's a huge gap, which it shouldn't be, um, then we may have to do something different. But you said you just bought it and they just put it in. So it's probably just, it's probably still just growing in, sir. It's probably still getting, still getting established. So I, you know, I might not, I might not um, do a whole lot. I might just, just, just mow it. Like if it's established enough where you can mow it, I'd mow it. Um, I'd also get a soil test done. So as far as you ask about products, get a soil test done. You can get it um, here at the golf course lawn store uh, right there, the one from my soil. Um, because then when you apply products to your lawn, you're going to be applying products based on, um, you know, what your soul actually needs versus just throwing stuff down and hoping for the best. You know, that's, that is what I would do. Um, but yeah. All right. Uh, Jason T says, I just got my nice first 1600, first 1600. Were you going to get like another 1600? You're like, I got my first one. I'm gonna get my second one, but I want to make sure I know my first one first. Uh, he says, um, any tips I should know? Um, yeah. So with the 1600, one thing you're going to notice is that unlike other real mowers, like as far as backing it up, um, the easier when, because the drive system and the reel are linked, if you ever need to back the mower up, there's going to be a, a lever on the front that you can flip that will disengage the reel. If you need to back the mower up any kind of distance more than like an inch or two, I would flip that, disengage it, and it's going to be way easier to move backwards. That's probably the only thing I'd say. There's not, there's not a ton to it. As you use it a lot, you'll get, you'll get, you'll be able to use whip turns, like being able to make passes without having to, to disengage the traction drive each time. I've got a video Jason T on the Greensmaster. So check that out. I mean, go to like um, YouTube, go Ron Henry Greensmaster, and the video is going to come up showing a review I did of it. So check that out. And I, I cover like all the different features and like, you know, like little tips, things that you're looking for. Check that out. And that should help out. And if you have any questions after you watch that, you know, shoot me an email and I will, um, I will do my best to help you out, sir. But yeah, congratulations on, this, on the 1600. I forgot to clap it up. We got to clap it up for the 1600. It's a nice mower, man. Nice choice. I love mine. I love mine. Uh, let's see what other questions we have here. Um, uh, get the concrete whip before you do liquid iron washes off. Um, 
As in case are you Syngenta rep now? If so, can you stock Monument in the store in five gram packs? I am not a Syngenta rep, sir. They just they sponsored the video, so but I'm not like I'm not like carrying Syngenta products or anything like that, unfortunately. So um, I don't know. I mean, maybe might be something to consider, but no, it's just it's just they were just sponsoring that video. So um, sorry, not going to be able to probably not going to be able to get the 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 five um, pack gram packs. I mean, do my own should have those, right? If not, um, you know, reach out to them. They'll probably they can probably get them. Uh, I would think, but uh, we can see. Oh, let's see. What other questions here? We're running out of um, of time. Um, da, 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 da. Um, let's see. Um, what, what is the best post emergent for, for crabgrass slash Dallas grass? I think quinclorac is what people like to use a lot on Dallas grass, I believe. Um, the product that I like to use is an easy one to use, Drew Pond, is um, Spectracide. So we, so the Spectracide um, products from weeds from... Um, the weeds, I think the actual, I think the brand is Spectracide, but it's actually called Weed Stop. Um, that that works really, really well against crabgrass. Not gonna work well against Dallas grass, but practically nothing works well against Dallas grass. I mean, um, it, Dallas grass is really, really difficult to kill. You can use um, a product from Bear. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. It's called uh, Total Tribute. Tribute Total. Like that's something you can use against Dallas grass, but you're just really suppressing it. Like, you, like Dallas, the way to get rid of Dallas grass is you dig it out. Like you're not, it's really, it's it's really, really, really hard to kill Dallas grass. It's it's practically impossible to kill it. Um, so you know, you know, you can you can use like some tribute total, but that's such expensive. It's like three hundred and fifty dollars for a small container of it, and that's going to suppress it. But if you just want to get rid of it, just dig it out. It's probably going to be your best bet. Or you can get some um, Roundup spray, Roundup on a uh, on a sponge, and then wipe the leaves of the Dallas grass. Why, don't don't not spray the the Roundup directly like out of the thing, like out of the the container, or whatever. Spray it on like a rag or a sponge and then wipe it onto only the leaves of the Dallas grass. That will knock it back, but it's next year it's probably going to come back again. So the way to get rid of it is to, is to dig it out, unfortunately. Um, and then as far as um, uh, the crabgrass, that Weed Stop product, I think I've got a link for that um, here that I can get to you. So here are two options for it. Um, so I've got one with, with pre-emergent in it and then one without pre-emergent Drew Paul. So check this out. Um, and you've got it there. Those two will be options for you. All right. Um, and I think, guys, I think we're about, let's see what other questions we got here. Um, I think that's about it. Um, I think we are out of questions, guys. Well, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I truly, truly do appreciate it. Um, this is, this is our longest live stream yet, three hours, 15 minutes. Uh, and counting, but uh, but if you guys enjoy this, if you're on your way out, please uh, touch the like button ever so gently. If you've not subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate if you guys do so. It's an easy way to support the channel. I try to do my best great, great content for you guys, as well as if you are looking to, to for more for more formalized approach. If you're looking for something more structured than like the Fix My Ugly Lawn series, the golf at golfcoursalon.com. There's a the uh, is access to the Golf Course Lawn Academy. It's a, it's an, it costs ninety seven dollars to join it. It's a lifetime. You get access to all the content that's in there. Plus the, plus the private Facebook group, plus um, more access to me, frankly, um, by doing that. Um, and it's, 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 you're never gonna pay a penny more as I add more content to it. And for your, all your, your lawn needs, visit the Golf Course Lawn Store. That's where you can get all your Miramichi Green products, the Golf Course Lawn products, uh, the Lebanon Turf Fertilizers, and all that good stuff, along with your soil test kits. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. I was feeling actually pretty bad when I started this live stream because I'm, I'm, I'm getting over a cold. But just talking about lawn care with you guys has gotten me in a great mood, and I really appreciate you guys sticking around. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Get out and mow your lawn. Get out and do something fun on the lawn this weekend. Take care.